on, sit down, love. Have, a, have some breakfast. Shift paper, Jar. Just have a cup of tea, Ty. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm not hungry. Oh. Well, you know best, don't you? <laughs> You're not really leaving, are you, Lisa? Your mum's picking me up tonight. Look, phone her up. Tell her not to come. I want her to. Oh, Lisa. You don't mean that. What over one little thing? Someone gets beaten up. That's not a little thing. Oh, all right, but you're saying that it's all Arthur, his fault. It's all his doing, but you don't know that. I do, actually. Well, even courts give benefit of doubt. Even they say you're innocent till proved guilty. Yeah, well, I'm not a court, but I know he's guilty. It's Des Barnes that's innocent. He's got a beating for nothing. Des Barnes? You're talking about him as if he's more important than Arthur, Are you saying he's not important? Are you saying he doesn't matter? No. I think you are. Your Terry's the only person who's important to you, no matter who gets hurt or beaten. Just give him a chance. For my sake, for Tom's. I've given him all the chances I can. Oh, please, Lisa. Look, you say something, Jack. Such as what? Well, say a word for our Terry, for God's sake. I'm sorry you married him, Lisa. For your sake. And you can't stick up for him. Can't stick up for him, can you? Blame me. Blame Lisa. Blame yourself. But one day you're going to put the blame where it fits. On your own. Blame it, son. <laughs> Obviously writes a good letter. Oh, no, not Michael. It just makes me laugh sometimes. He doesn't mean to. He's the way you tell them. Huh? He says... Well, Carmen, I'm not sure that I like you being away all these months, and I'm feeling more and more as if you should come back to Ireland and we'll get married and buy a house. Mm. I have a fair bit saved up now, and I don't think I'll have any trouble with finding the money. <laughs> Is that a proposal? <laughs> That's typical, Michael. Just, we'll get married. Doesn't so much as think of asking me. And he wants you to pack in your course? Oh, yeah, I think so. He's been hinting at it for a while now. Oh, I hope he's telling him what to do with himself. Well, he can be very persuasive, can Michael. Uh, Carmel, hang on a minute, will you? Hey, you're not seriously going to consider this, are you? A old fella from Ireland, he just clicks his fingers, so you're just going to drop everything and run to it. What are you thinking about? Well, I'm not saying I will. I'm just saying, well, he's persuasive. And yes, I'd consider it. He's asked me to marry him, though. Well, what about your career? It'd be a great shame to give it up. <sighs> You'd be mad. But who else is going to marry me? Carmel! Oh. You sound like it's the whole point of existence. You're young, you've got your life ahead of you. God, listen to us getting so serious. It's only Michael after all. Well, it's only Michael after all, she says. <laughs> hey, give him another couple of years and you'll, be, you'll, you'll find yourself in some croft somewhere with a peat roof. Digging spuds with 18 kids running around <laughs> Michael's. Mark my, my words. He's not a bad, bad man. Well, he sounds like a throwback to me. Shall I tell you a secret? In some ways, he reminds me of you. Hmm? Oh, it must be a throwback. I mean, this is my good man you're talking about. <laughs> Sorry, oh, God. I couldn't resist it. <laughs> oh, well, I think what I'll do, I'll take a trip home and have a proper talk, see if I can get him to wait a while. Well, what if we won't? We'll have to see. Maybe I'll be digging spots. Hey, well, she's made a right mess of my paper, has not she? Is it worth it? You're right, who cares? Oh. You don't have to go, you know. I do, Jack. Luke, love, no matter what our Terry's done, and you know the way I feel about him, so I am not defending him. He's got nought to do with his mother. She's got a... Oh, I don't know, a blind spot about him. There's, there's no doubt. It's not Vera I'm leaving. I know. All I'm asking is you don't tire her with the same brush as our Terry, love. I don't. She's got a good heart. See, women get taken in by our Terry. And you're no exception, Lisa, love. Yeah, I am now. Ah, uh, yeah, well... Well, like I say... There's all me here for you. Do you remember when I first arrived? You, you said I should stick in Blackpool because it was a better place to bring up a child than Weatherfield. <laughs> well, aye, uh, and if I hold my hands up, it, it's true. It's, it's better for a kiddy to be by the sea, you see. But I'm being a bit selfish, you see. I like you being here. I like the lift you've given us, and I like your company. I love me, grandson, and I shall miss you. But I do... I do know how you feel. 
And when I said I'm, I'm sorry that you married Tower Terry, I meant for your sake. Well, for me and Vera, we couldn't have wished for anybody better. You're going to be late for work. I'm not going in this morning. Why the hell not? Because not, that's why. Oh, Vera, you must go in. Don't be silly. I'm not being silly. It's the morning of. So, what are you doing with yourself today, Phyllis? I don't know, I'm deciding. He'll buy the stock car racing or hang gliding. <laughs> Hello, love. Give us a lump of that cake while I chew it over. Kid. What are you doing here? I've been to the travel agents to check on boat times. There's some lectures to do it. Well, it's only an hour. Where you have to, love? Home for the weekend. Yeah, boyfriend's clipped his fingers. Oh, well, if you don't want him, I'll have him. But he'd be delighted to see you. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll give frat myself, especially for Patrick. Michael. Oh, it's all the same. Uh, listen, girl. Be careful, eh? I'm a careful person, Gay. Yeah, I know you are. It's just that you... Sorry. Tell me to mind my own business. I was going to say you're young. Yeah, but I didn't mean that. What I meant to say was, um... Well, when I was younger, I was going to marry someone who sounded just like Michael. If I'd read the signs better, I probably wouldn't have done it. He had the old, uh, man the hunter attitude. He was the breadwinner. I was the wife. He was always against me working. But it wasn't his fault. I mean, he'd been brought up to believe he was God. So it was a big step forward to get him to even admit that his socks needed change. <laughs> <laughs> You've a career ahead of you, Carmel. It sounds to me like Michael's gonna sit on that. But he is offering marriage. Yeah, and how are you going to feel in ten years' time, eh? Yeah, all right. I mean, I know Martin was exaggerating this morning, but you will be stuck with kids, just like he said. Knowing that you'd given up a, a good job, something to do with your life, just because he didn't like it. Do you love Michael? Oh, yes. Does he love you? I really hope so. Well, I think that... Any man who asks you to give up your job at this stage is a pretty bad bet. You and Martin both have careers, Gail, and you're married. What do you mean? Well, that's what I'm saying. A man shouldn't ask you to give up your life. I mean, maybe Martin and I could have your sort of marriage. Michael. Oh, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> so why is he asking you to give up your job? Uh, I'll talk to him this weekend. I'd love to have your sort of marriage, Gail. Oh, no. Marriage is never a bed of roses at the best of time, Carmel. You might as well give it the best chance you can. I think you're a very nice person, Gail. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only thinking of you. I know. <laughs> I don't understand all this about happy hours. Doesn't it mean they just get drunk earlier? Who wants a pub full of drunks? Hey, this is my idea to boost profits. Don't knock it. But what's the point? So people drink more? You're not slow, are you? But shouldn't people drink less? This is a pub, not a clinic. If we get young kids in here at five o'clock, like as not some will stop till closing, what sort of state are they going to be in then? Well, that's their lookout. Mm, well, I'm not clearing it up. Clearing what up? What we'll find in toilets when we've had young kids in here boozing all night. That's if we're lucky it'll be in toilets. Anyway, it's not kids we're after. Oh, then. Office types. Couple of quick gins on the way home and out. Oh, well, I thought yuppies were dead. Enter. How wrong can you be? Here comes the living proof. <laughs> You're late, Jack. Don't give me a hard time, but treat me nice. Touch of the domestics, is it? Happy hour. God, I could do with one of them. Well, you're in luck, then. Every weekday evening, and all you've got to do is smile and serve ale. And at closing time, mop up, ain't gents? <laughs> <clears throat> will you do me a favour? Yeah, of course I will. You don't have to ask, do you? I might do. I just want you to have Tom for a little while. Of course I will. It's my flesh and blood, in it. Yeah. I was just going to nip over and see ah. Des Barnes. Look, whatever you're thinking, you don't need to. I'm not thinking nothing. There's nothing between us. I'm just going to say goodbye. Mm. Well, if there's not between you, why do you need to? Because he's a friend. 
Don't you understand the difference? A friend. And he's been very kind to me. You're going to say goodbye to Aunt Sarah? No. Oh, hello, Carmel. Hi. Shouldn't you be in college? Oh, I've just been fixing up to go to Ireland this weekend. Oh, lovely. About time I saw my fella. Ah. But this is a load of trouble, isn't it? A whole barrel full of trouble. I know. We're just here to get some nappies. <laughs> Don't we have an exciting life? Well, you know, I have a sneaking feeling that's what my Michael wants from me. Stick at home with the kids. Oh, what? And give up nursing, you mean? I have a feeling so. Oh, that would be a shame, Carmel. Yeah, but the alternative would be to go out to work and have him resenting that. It's a bit of a dilemma. If you stay with him. Yeah. So what are you going to do? Well, I'll talk it over this weekend. I wouldn't like to go out nursing and have my husband at home resenting it, you know? I think that can destroy a marriage, don't you? Oh, well, I don't know. I mean, I see, I've seen it from the inside. I've seen what it's done to Martin and Gail. Anyway, I better get going. Let's go down the pub, up. Let's go down the pub. Hey, 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 what is all this, a party? Well, it's dinner. It's 20 past 12. Your dinner time's half past. Well, that'll start again ten minutes early. Don't get smart with me, Steve. It's not worth your while, OK? Look, he's only just come across, Mike. Yeah, and I've told him about that. Well? Well, what? Uh, and how'd you get on? Well, what with? With your driving test, that's what with. Did you pass? He's a golden boy, isn't he? Everything he touches. Oh, well done. That's what I like to hear. Well done, my son. Right, I've got a job for you. What? Two grocer T-shirts need to be picked up in Burnley. Save me a drive. What do you mean you want me to drive to Burnley? Who else? Where's well, my dinner? Tough. Go to Jim's cafe when you get back. Put a bit of business the wife's way. Well, what do we're going? Well, I think you find room in the Jag. There you are. You can pose all the way there. Oh, and uh, do us a favour, will you? Keep your eyes on the road now and then. Don't spend all your time gazing in the mirror, all right? In the Jag, <laughs> eh? Yeah, yeah, go on, son. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going. I can see what he is now. I'm going to go back to my mum and dad's. That's a shame. Well, it's right, though, Des. I know. I'll miss you. You've married someone pretty dodgy, Lisa. You really have. Yeah. So have you, uh, been back to work yet, then? Told him I fell down the stairs drunk. <laughs> That'd be good to have a couple of days off. You're not hiding in here, then? I don't want to give the kids nightmares, do I? Well, you don't look that bad. Does Vera know you're here? Yeah, yeah, I was up front about it. Oh, well, thanks, that'll do it. What do you mean? Oh, come on, Lisa, I got a good hiding last time you and Tom came round here. What do I get now? You're alone, kneecapped. Well, Terry won't do anything more. He's blown it, Des, he'll know that. Yeah, and suppose he decides that you've left him for me. I'll need an armed guard. Well, for a start, Vera won't tell him I came here. Yeah, well, she did last time. Yeah, and look where that got her. Terry had you beaten up and I'm going. She won't risk that again. I don't think Vera sees me being beaten up as a negative. People like that think it's just desserts. Vera's a good soul, you know. Oh, come on, Lisa. I see what goes on in the house over there. It's a primitive life form. You're talking evolution, you're talking about one step above fungus. That's not fair, Des. I mean, sometimes she speaks before she thinks, but she's not stupid. And she's definitely not malicious. Yeah, and it doesn't run the family either, does it? I'm really sorry. Listen, Lisa. OK, you can defend Vera. And I'm sure she's been good to you and Tom and all that, but she's working on a different level. When it comes to her son, she's not far off mad. It's instinct. And it's savage. She doesn't care who gets hurt, so long as her son doesn't. Yeah, I know. I know that's true. She frightens me, honest. Yeah, but she's sick, she told Terry. She won't say anything more. There's nothing more to tell. All she wants to do is, is keep her family together. And she loves little Tom so much, she's just desperate not to lose him. Yeah. Well, I'd be careful of that and all. What do you mean? A woman like Vera, desperate to keep her grandson, and you're going to take him away, what's she going to do? Well, she'd never do anything stupid. So where's she going to now, then? Well, I don't know. She's probably going to the shops. Yeah? She told you that, then? No. I 
better catch her up. Shops, where did you think I were taking him? Alright. Oh, <laughs> hey, look at you, showing off your grandchild. Hey, he's lovely, isn't he? I don't blame you. Where you taking him? Somewhere nice. <laughs> Shops. Oh. Do you know honestly he'll be trotting there on his own soon? I'm just off to see to my Desmond. Have you seen sight of him? Yeah. Oh, he reckons he fell out at Bath. But if you ask me, he's been scrapping the little devil. He won't be a young man today. As soon as they get on the street, they like wild animals. Anyway, tell me, I've got to be off. He's lovely, look after him. Bye, love. I'm sorry, Vera. Take him, I don't want him now. And don't expect me home. I'm going to work. <laughs> Gail was telling me about her, Brian, how he didn't like her working. Oh, yeah, I believe so. Strange, that, isn't it? I suppose it comes down to jealousy. That was a bit macho, wasn't it? You're not like that, are you, Martin? Well, macho? Oh, thanks very much. I thought, I mean, you're not the jealous type. <laughs> Too lazy to be jealous, aren't you? Uh, nonsense. I'm serious, eh? The more Gail works, the less I need to. Just wish you enough to keep me, you know? I don't mean that. <laughs> yeah. Let's have a taste of this. Oh, yeah. It's hot and it's full of garlic. Right. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. That's beautiful, man. Uh, a bit better than average, maybe, yes. Mm. I don't think Michael can cook. So what do you say in this Michael, then, eh? Well, he's a good man. Yeah, and? I don't know. Tell me, did you find it very difficult at first with Gail, with the memory of Brian hanging over you? Well, I was very aware of it, of course, yeah. Of course. Of course, it must have been terrible for you. Well, no, it wasn't that bad. I suppose it was. The dead have a way of intruding in things. Have you noticed? No, have they? Oh, there was none in this sauce. Mm. Mm. Right then, how are you doing, Sarah? I've finished. Oh, you have, haven't you? Want some of that smelly cheese? Mm. Sit down, Vera. You'll hurt me, you know. Look, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. It, it was just seeing you through the window when I didn't expect you to be going out. And that's what made you think that I'd run off with my own grandson. I panicked. Yeah, well, I've seen what you think of me. I think it's time you did go. Well, I think it's best, yeah, but not for that reason. Look, whatever I feel about Terry, it doesn't affect the way I think about you. Well, who cares, eh? We're all the same in your book, us Duckworths. We're not supposed to have any feelings. Your son's a violent man. How long before he turns on me, eh? Or on Tom? How can you say such a thing? Cos I know him now. Feel for Terry. A week or so ago, I'd have said I loved him, and some of those feelings are still there. I can't just write them off. But how can I trust him, eh? He's in prison for violence, and people still aren't safe. Decent people are. Oh. Look, you've judged and sentenced him. He hasn't even had a chance to stick up for himself. It's him that's judged and sentenced. Look at Des Barnes. Oh. And I'm fed up with being accused, Vera. I'm stuck with a three-month-old child and I won't have a husband. How do you think I feel? Well, don't leave him then. Oh, can't you understand? It's Tom that matters. I'm not putting him anywhere near your Terry. Not because I'm frightened he'll get it, but I, I don't want him to see that sort of thing. I don't want him to be part of it. I don't even want him to know about it. I'm going, and as far as I'm concerned, Terry's dead. Just a hairdresser. They're gonna have some beds, them toning tables, manicure the lot. And one woman running it, so hopes. No, Deirdre, I've also been told she's gonna have several male helpers, oh. all dressed in tiny little loincloths. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't. Hey, are you looking for a new job? Do you know something I don't? <laughs> I'm only messing, love. How are you? Well, I'd like to buy you both a drink. Oh, what? Well, we're celebrating. You're going to see me name in the paper. Oh, celebrity, eh? 
did you know I knew you were a dark horse? You know those advertisements where it says the above-named court has made a bankruptcy order against the above-named debtor, signed the official receiver, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, go on. Well, that'll be me, the above-named debtor, Doug Murray. Shake hands with the bankrupt. Oh, Doug, that's awful. No, it's not, Deirdre, no, it's not. It's a ton weight off me shoulders. It's the first good news I've had in years. What you have? Hiya, Jack. Hi, kid. Hello, Mrs. Um, Horton. Horton. Hello, Mr. Duckworth. Right. So you're off then? Yeah. yeah. Uh, can you can you manage? Oh, yeah, 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 we're all right. Go right. very inside, is she? Yeah. Will you excuse me for a minute? Then? You glad you're leaving? In some ways. They're a good couple, you know. More than could be said for their son. Don't, Mum. Does he know you're going? Well, not yet. I don't know if I can face him. I might have to write a letter. I should. The real trouble starts when he gets out. You'll be with us but then. Yeah. Is that everything? Uh, apart from Tom. I'll take him with me in the back. Right. Well, I suppose you better get him then. Yeah. He's here. He's here. Oh, little darling. Oh, I oh, do love him. Don't forget your grandma, will you, eh? Hey. Mm. Thanks, Mum. Thanks for everything. Oh, oh come on. Come on, darling. Hey. You know where we are, don't you? Yeah, I do. Goodbye, Mrs. Duckworth. She's got a family here and all, you know. Keep telling her that. I know she's very fond of you. Goodbye. <laughs> you forgot your coat. Oh, Jack, well, we've loaded up now. It'll fit in. No, I'll tell you what, why don't you keep it here? And then he's got a bed for when we come to visit. Aye, oh, all right, why not? Yeah. Bye, then. Goodbye, lovey. Look after me, little lad, won't you? Oh, yeah, of course I will. Goodbye, Mr. Duckworth. Uh, yes, hello, Lovie, and uh, have a safe journey. Again, Peter. Oh, we've survived before, haven't we? <laughs> What time do you call this, Vera? I woke up, I couldn't get back home. It is not the end of the world, you know. I come down here and sound so different. There's something sticking in this little rattle. Get a bit of breakfast going, that'll book you up, won't it? Hey, uh, what are you going to do with that? Well, yeah, shut. No, don't throw it away. All right, all right. Just put it I'll down. put it somewhere where you won't sit on it and start scraping. Why is it this family can never be like other families, oh, eh? Come on, stop feeling sorry for yourself. Well, I am feeling sorry for myself. No ever goes right for this family. Come on, get a brew going, eh, girl? Why is it? Everybody's always up in arms. Killing each other, falling out, arguing, walking out. Yeah, well, that's just like every other family, any other family I know, anyway. Everybody's always picking on our Terry. No wonder he's where he is. If you hadn't gone bothering our Terry with something he had no need to know, your grandson would still be here. No need to know when grown men behave like that. What were I supposed to do, eh? Use your head. You see, you're blaming me now, oh, aren't you? never mind. It's not worth blaming anybody. What goes wrong in this house? It's always me. You give Terry the wrong idea. You're blaming did. Oh, did ya? Even if it was the right idea, you shouldn't have gone telling him things like that because that's all he has to think about. Des Barnes was sniffing round like a dog. There was nothing going on. So you say... If they had been, I would have put him right, wouldn't I? Oh, would you? Yes, I would. And I marked his card, and that's all it would have took. But no, you had to go and tell our Terry, and then these murder and 
And then your grandson's gone. I know, but I, I, oh, oh, fee, I wanted... Oh, fee, oh. You're right. It always does, doesn't it? Always goes flaming wrong. Oh, never mind, girl. We weren't made to be happy. Are you going straight to the shop from school? Is your dad picking you up and bringing you home? I don't think so. You don't think so, is he, or isn't he? No. Well, why didn't you tell me? Does it matter? Yes, it does matter. I'd like to know. I'll get the bus. Yeah, but you don't get the bus, do you? You save it and walk. So? And take the shortcut across the wreck in the dark. Terrible things happen, Tracy. I'll pick you up. You're not worried about me. I will pick you up. You just want to get a good look at her, don't you? I know. You do, don't you? That's why you're going to come and pick me up. <laughs> I'd like to have any sutures you put in. Well, you know, the daft, aren't they? I mean, what are you supposed to do? Put them crisscross, don't they? Here, give them here to me. Oh, Come yeah. on. I always get them so they work their way through. You know, one end sticks out like that, the other's disappearing all the time. It's because nobody's shown you properly how. It's simple. Oh, Nicky, so where's that thing from school you want it signing? Bring it down. I like these kind of shoes. The proper old-fashioned kind. I like them. Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, well, I found out Porter and Carmel, if you're going to be on your feet all day, you need a good, strong, proper pair of shoes and you want them tied on your feet. <laughs> I don't like these things they have now. Casual. That's the kind of people that wear them. Too casual by half. Too free and easy altogether. Oh, not my casuals. No, you haven't. I have. All your shoes are either brown or black, which is what shoes ought to be. Well, you got me trainers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, nobody's perfect. Not even you. Yeah, suppose I am. <laughs> oh, perfect. No old fashions. Well, I am and I'm not. Uh, have you got 50p for him? Yeah. What's this for now? Christmas fair. They have to have a class kitty now. Get your gloves. There you go. What's all this about being old fashioned anyway? I thought it was Michael that was the old fashioned. Well, that's what all the trouble was about. Don't talk about Michael, please. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's, it's just. I've gone past him in so many ways, you know. It's how it is and it'll have to be said. I'm not looking forward to it. It wouldn't hurt him for the world. Yeah, well, you've no alternative, really, have you? It's true, isn't it? Yeah. It's all got to be said and out with everything. Yeah, well, if you made your mind up. I know, and I have. Here you are. Sir. Do you know this big baby can't lace up a pair of shoes for himself? <laughs> no, it's no big thing. I've just said I'll pick her up. Well, it's going out of your way. She's my daughter, so it's not. I just couldn't get out of this PTA no, thing. I'm saying don't worry. And uh, I know you give her a bus fare, but she doesn't get the bus, you know. She saves it and walks. Does she? How do you know? <laughs> because I used to do it, so I'm wise to it. She takes the shortcut across the wreck in the dark, and I'd rather she didn't. Yeah, well, I'm sorry I can't, but glad you can, as long as you don't mind. No. Tracy thinks I'm just coming to pick her up so that I can take a look at your lady friend. Uh, which, of course, you're not. Of course not. What's it got to do with me? <laughs> yeah, well, thanks for the tip about the bus fare. OK. Anyway. Bye. Bye, Ken. Bye. What's she like, anyway, the girlfriend? I don't know. I'll tell you tomorrow. Oh, thank you. <laughs> right. So which is the business and which is the sideline, the garage or the T-shirts? Oh, girl, don't ask. Monday, he's on the phone to this fella by the minute about carpets. I said, oh, I see we're in the carpet business now, are we? He says, no, not anymore. I've just flogged it. All this is in the car while we're driving along. I said, isn't that illegal? He says, look, don't bother me because I'm on the phone. I said, that is what I mean. Oh, I see. He's driving. Yes. I mean, he's never even seen these carpets. It's some pal of his. He said, oh, they are the most marvellous quality. I've got them all up the stairs in my home. You haven't got any stairs. You live in a flat. Oh. <laughs> yes, but he says it's not fibbing because nobody believes it. Is that right? Yeah, it's, it's like making conversation, like saying, nice weather for dogs. Oh, it's shameless. Anyway, I'll put my foot down. You have? Mm -hmm. I have. We're out for a meal. And he says to the waiter, do you think you could find me a table that's a bit more private, you know, a bit more secluded? And I think, you know, he's still got it. Oh. So I respond. <laughs> well, you do. <laughs> then out it pops, the flipping phone. I mean, he only wants somewhere quiet, doesn't he? Because he's calling people. Do you know, I was livid. They get a portable phone. There's no such thing as tea for two anymore. Anyway, I've laid the law down. I'll swap you one portable phone for one lodger. Oh, she's not causing problems, is she? No, I fair do. She pulls away and she washes up like a demon. And she looks after the kids so we can go out, but... Oh, there's always a but. But she's going home for the weekend. And won't it be lovely just to stay in? Play to yourself. My home, my husband and my kids. All to myself. You won't be able to go out anymore. I know. Won't it be wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> Is that it, love? 
Yeah. Well, I'd like to ask a favour as well. Could I leave some of these with you to hand out to your customers? Oh, ooh, that's you over the road, is it? Yeah, I'm just moving in. When do you think you'll be starting? I'm hoping next week. Well, I should think it'll be all right, but I'm only the skivvy. Alf? What's up? No prices? No, the uh, lady wants to know if she can leave these. Oh, I wondered who was moving in over there. Me, I'm afraid. Oh, you said it'd be a hairdresser. So, if you could hand out those by the till, and anyone who comes in with one could say free hot oil treatment. Well, oh, heck, I might keep the lot myself. I could do with some free oil treatment myself. <laughs> might loosen me up a bit. <laughs> so, you're Denise, are you? Denise Osborne. You must be Alf. Alf. Alf Roberts, yeah. Nice to meet you. Have you ever considered warts? I beg your pardon? The Weatherfield Association of Retailers and Traders. I mean, we help the little chap, you know. We've also got a very good social life. Well, perhaps I'd be interested. Oh, you'll have to come along then, yeah. yeah. Meantime, I'll pass these out for you. I mean, they are freebies, but they bring trade in. <laughs> very kind of you. I do appreciate it. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. I'll see you again anyway. You certainly will, yeah. I'm here all hours. Hope I see you too. I'm sure. For now, then. Cheerio. Bye, love. Yeah. yeah. I don't know who was giving you the hot oil there. What do you mean? Have you ever considered warts? And there's a very good social side. I was just being polite to make the lady feel welcome. Go on, you fancied her. Is it impossible to make polite conversation without all this? <laughs> it's only me. I'm off now. Oh. I'm going home to Ireland, so I'll tell you. Oh, right. Well, have a nice trip. Well, I came round to say goodbye to David. Oh, I see. Come in. Oh, I know. I'm soppy, aren't I? And to uh, to bring him this, because he forgot it and he likes to have it. Oh, does he? Yeah. Would you like a cup of coffee or anything? Oh, don't go into any trouble for me. Oh, no, it's all right. Kettle's boiled. Oh, but that'd be nice. Do you have sugar? Yeah. No, thanks. Oh, yeah. So, um, how long are you going for, then? Oh, the weekend, just. I'll be back on Monday. Oh, I thought you were going for ages, you know, where you've been going round saying your goodbyes. Oh, I wish I wasn't going at all. I wish. Well, it'll be nice to see your family. Mm, seeing the boyfriend. Oh. Mm, it's going to be very hard. I don't know how you do it. Oh, so you are definitely going to then, are you? Yeah, definitely. I mean, things can't always stay the same, can they? Thanks. Well, I suppose not. Well, he thinks they can. Michael, I mean. But he's wrong. And Martin says the same. What does Martin say? That there's no good pretending. Well, of course there's not. Well, you think so, too? Well, everybody thinks that, Carmel. Everybody in this world. Mm, I suppose. Does that make it any easier? No. Nope. I'm dreading the thought of it. Well, everybody has to do it at some time. Not me till now. I was never halfway serious about anyone before Martin. Michael, you mean? Oh, Michael, yeah. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> oh. D did you ever finish with a boy? Oh, I bet you finished with dozens. <laughs> do you think I was a loose woman? Oh, no, no, <laughs> no. I, no, I meant... I bet you had a grand time flirting. Well, I had a lot of boyfriends, you know, but, well, only one I was really soppy over. Yeah, soppy? When I think, I used to keep little things that I'd steal out of his pocket and <laughs> have them with me, put them under my pillow. <laughs> what sort of things? Oh, I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> Stupid things, anything. It was a packet of mints one time. <laughs> oh, come on, I was awful young. And I bet he thought, I had a packet of mints, and there was I, in the dark, eating them, because they were his mints that he'd bought. God, I was crazy. Sounds like a real hopeless crush, if you ask me. I know, it's more than that. It was. Was? Well, you're finishing with him, aren't you, Michael? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, that's all over and done with, and he's got to be told, and that's all. Ah, uh, all right. Oh, oh, oh yeah. well, I'm off anyway. No, you don't go on my behalf. Oh, no, no, I'd be missing me bus. <laughs> And I'll be missing you and all. Yes, I will. But I'll see you on Monday. Yeah. See ya. See yeah. you. Bye. Bye. You know. I hope it goes, you know, all right. Well, I'll be glad to be back here, I can tell oh. you. Bye. Bye. See ya. Have a safe journey. Thanks. Come across here just as late to that today, did you? Well, yeah, more or less. <laughs> she's bound me, that one. Well, I don't know about that, but I'll tell you this, Kev. She's got a crush on Martin, that's for sure. No, come she on. She has. I don't know whether Martin knows about it. I bet Gail certainly doesn't. How do you know that? Well, she's only going back to Ireland to finish with a boyfriend. I hope that's not why. No, you're being daft. I'm telling you, Kevin. Get us all, would you? No, 
know, no problem at all. You're enjoying yourself, Arthur. I'm in a pub. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good, isn't it? Yeah, oh, hang on, I've gone a bit faint. Oh, that's better. Well, well, what have you got for me? Well, basically, I'm in, I'm in the market for about a thousand... Happen I should knock this up here on the head, eh? Why? How's that? Well, it's not done much for you two, has yeah. it? I mean, look at you. Yeah. You look like last week's yeah, rice pudding, the pair yeah. of you. Yeah. Don't pay to be cheery around this place. Get your ribs broke for just passing the time of day. Sure excuse. Me? I looked at the stars, Bet. That was my crime, looking at the stars. You may have sorrows, Cock, but if you can drown them at half price, then my living has not been in vain. Happy hour. Remember, five. Till half past six. That's an hour and a half. That's just one of the many happy things about it, Flower. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Anytime. I mean, it works anyway. Is that all you did, then? Past the time of day? Yep. Well, you have to admit, she's quite fanciable, isn't she? She might be. Oh, come on. Don't tell me you didn't notice. Noticed she was too good for him. That's what I noticed. Cos he is where he ought to be. Yeah. Does restore your faith in British justice a bit, doesn't it? Why is it that all these tidy women fall for no good fellas? Oh, so you do think she's tidy, then? I told you. I didn't do anything about it. Well, why not? I mean... It works the other way round as well, though, doesn't it? Does it? Well, yeah, I mean, look. Here's us two, right? Real OK blokes, right? And what do we get? Yeah, well, Dodgy women. See ya. Be lucky. Bye. Fancy another? Aye. Right, then, item number one. Weatherfield Rugby Club. Same again, Sponsored bet. fun run. Help the paraplegics. What a mouthful. Really lends itself to snappy graphics. Never mind. Listen, uh, can you get something done by Monday? And I said, as it was a charity, I'd chuck in the design for nothing. Well, I didn't. Well, you're going to get a free drink out of it, aren't you? Oh, yeah, half price. Big deal. They should, though, you know. They should think of a new name. Yeah, well, now, listen, what do you know about pop music, eh? Not much. You're the one that keeps telling me that's where all the money is. Pop is fizzy stuff for kids. I was thinking you should get to know the local bands and that. Oh, you do know all about it, then, eh? I know that some really big names make more money flogging T-shirts than they do playing gigs. And the T-shirts are mostly very boring. Well, you're a talented designer, we all know that, but there are hundreds of them leaving art school every day. It's not enough. Oh, Tom, thanks Mind you, me. if you can get these people to me and I can get rid of their merchandise, that makes you different from any other the designer, oh, doesn't it? God. Now, I want you to get out there, I'll pay you accordingly, and... Oh, hang on a minute. Uh, oh. Hello? Hello? Paul Wynn? Yeah? Um, two gentlemen, please. Right. Yes. And, oh, Mavis, what are you having? Anything you like? Well, thank you. I've just ordered a medium shave. Oh. And I'll just have a pint. Right. right. It is still the uh, happy hour, isn't it? Uh, sorry, Alf, it's just... Yeah, one for yourself, um, of course. That depends on whether your watch is right or mine. So with modern watches, you can't get them mended. Thank you very much. Certainly, love. Hot oil, eh? Now, if you'd have said boiling oil, you'd be talking. I'd gladly hey, send you some customers. Come and meet a few. Oh, that's better. That's how a local yeah. lunatic yeah. talks to himself. We clubbed up for the toy yeah. phone. Well, Makes it not so obvious, but we didn't bother much. with the batteries. Yeah. Now, you've got to meet these. There's enough customer at this bar to keep you in luxury. Alfie, Audrey. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello Hi. there. Listen, I'm just banging the drum. Would you like a drink? Can I introduce Denise? Oh, me and Alf are old friends, aren't we? Oh, aye. Oh, aye. Uh, I'll have a cider. Oh, cider? Cider. cider? Coming up. Cider. Two. Uh, it's going very faint. Are these dead? Hang on, hang on. I, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I think he's gone in a tunnel. Upstairs. Oh, who are you talking to? I don't know. I think it's the wrong number. <laughs> Hello. Well, Audrey used to be a hairdresser, you know. Weren't you, Audrey? Yeah. I mean, that were years ago, and I never kept it up. But, I mean, techniques are changing all the time, Of course, the Marcel Wave was in then, you know. Oh! oh. 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 Hey, Trouble when I get oh. you old, lad. Marcel was in the 30s. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely before my time. Anyway. Yeah, but look, no offence. I mean, Cheers. the talk about styles, don't they? Have you seen, Deirdre? If somebody had come out from under the dryer like that 20 years ago, they'd have had you up in colour. Oh. Oh. Well, I hate to agree with you, but... I mean, there used to be 
you saying? Didn't I can't go out with my hair like this. Yes. Well, that seems to have died out of the English language. Or them hairdos that make you look like a kitten that's just been pulled out at cut. Or a nest belonging to a demented stork. <laughs> They're harder to do, you know. Are they? <laughs> yeah, my old boss, he used to grieve for the bouffant. He said you could charge anything, and the only skill was aiming the spray. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think the bouffant could be quite artistic. Still, I suppose, when you're starting that, you've got to attract customer, haven't you? I mean, most people are loyal to the hairdressers, aren't they? Well, I always go to Franco at Curtis and Klein. You've only been once. I, I go all the time. I only told you the once because she had palpitations. <laughs> They're so dear. Well, I'm not. But if you want me to charge you them prices, I will. Very oh. gladly. And I'm only over the road. We're definitely closed. It's all right. It'll be my mum. Hi. You ready? Won't be a minute. Maggie, I've cleared up. Is it OK if I go? Yes, yes, I'm sure. Come on. Uh, it's very good of you to give her this job. I hope she's doing OK. Yeah, she's fine. She seems to take a real interest. Oh, good. Is that surprising? Ah, uh, no, no, uh, it's just, um, I'm glad. <laughs> well, I think she's a really nice girl, and she seems keen. Good. Fine. Uh, anyway, I'll see you. Bye. Well, I think he's really good-looking. Oh. Oh. Kevin. Oh, Martin, <laughs> is he? Oh, yeah, he's got a sort of look of Harrison Ford. <laughs> what? Yes, Harrison Ford crossed <laughs> with um, Roy Atkinson. Oh, yeah, that's because you're deaf. I mean it, I'm being serious. She's stuck on him, you know. She's very young, isn't she? You know, young in her ways. They get crushes, don't they? Well, what if she has got a crush on him? You know, what are you going to do about it? I don't suppose anything. You don't suppose that... Suppose what? Well, that Martin's, you know. No, I mean, I've never seen any sign of it. What? You mean Martin and her? You think he fancies him? Well, yeah, I mean, he's dead sort of friendly, isn't he? Perhaps he thinks he does. What is it? Being sat in the house all day on your own makes your imagination suddenly take off. That's a horrible thing to say. What is? Cos I'm stuck in the house all day, you think I'm going funny, don't you, looking after them children, is that it? No, it's not. Well, that's what you're saying. No, all I'm saying is you're building it up out of now. Oh, you're a typical man. You don't notice anything about anybody. Well, I do, and it's not cos I'm stuck in the house all day. Yeah, well, whatever you notice or whatever you don't notice, keep it to yourself. Don't go taking it across the road. I've not read you a story for ages, have I? Yeah. Eh? This will be a treat for me, need a new yeah. story. Yeah. I'm sure she'd sooner have Carmel. Well, would you now? Would you sooner have Carmel? No, oh, you'd sooner have me, wouldn't you? I'd do a proper story, don't I? Yeah. Eh? Does Carmel not do you a proper story? She makes it all up. No, she makes it all up, does she? What, I have a head? Oh, well, I can't do that. I've not got the head for it, have I? I'm sorry. Eh? I like the proper story. And so you should, because you're a good girl. I'm saying nothing. Isn't it nice having the place to us, so... You what? And when I get this lot <coughs> to bed, it'll be even nicer. Is that a promise? Yeah, tell you how it is. <coughs> do you want this story or what? So, come on then. What do you think of her? I bet you hate her. <sighs> Don't be silly. Well, what do you think of her then? Do I have to think anything? Of course you do. Are they, um, are they serious, do you think, are they? See, you are. I am what? Dead interested. <sighs> sometimes you're really grown up, and sometimes I think you're still playing hopscotch with your skirt tucked in your knickers. You are. All right, I'm interested to know, is your dad really keen on her, do you think? Well, I don't know. Maybe. Are you jealous? No, I'm not jealous. Well, why are you so interested, then? <sighs> Never mind. It's no use talking to you. You don't care who he's going with, you won't have him back, and you don't want to know. Only when he is going with someone, you're dead jealous. 
I suppose you'll try and split them up and everything now, won't you? And then you say I'm childish. Tracy, I just want to know, are they serious? Yeah, well, I hope they are. And then you can be even more jealous. All you think about is yourself. I'm not thinking about me, I'm thinking about him. Yeah, well, I don't see how you make that out. Well, you don't know. She had an affair with Mike Baldwin 11 years ago, do you? No. So? It was 11 years ago. She's been married to someone else since then. So what? So how old's the son? Oh, wish I'd never told you now. But listen, if one word of this passes your lips, I will slaughter you. Do you understand? Mm. Do you understand? Yes. I'm damn sure he doesn't know. It's not me I'm thinking about, Tracy. Come on, let's get this table cleared. How do you know? I said let's keep these dishes cleared away. Morning, Percy. Starting early this morning, aren't we? What's all this in here, of? Oh, it's just to let people know about a few lines, you know, run up to Christmas, plum puddings, that sort of thing. Well, why not say Christmas instead of Xmas? You make it sound like some skin disease. Give over, Percy. It's always been shortened to Xmas. Oh, well, I don't hold with it. I've always prayed to Jesus Christ, not to Jesus X. Well, in the minority there these days. Anyway, people aren't going to quibble about one letter. And what's this fair with a Y? That is oldie English for food. And I thought a traditionalist like you would have approved of that. Oh, it's all, uh, all I picked taste. It's all part of the commercialisation of Christmas. That's what it is. Oh, I see you got out of bed with a Christmas spirit this morning, anyway. <laughs> well, Christmas is about goodwill to all men, not about profit. Oh, I see. So you won't be doing Father Christmas down at Better Buys this year, then? What's that got to do with it? Well, according to you, it's just a gimmick to get folk in to spend. Father Christmas is different. It brings a bit of magic into kiddies' lives, the only magic some of them will ever get. Ah, so you will be doing it? You know, I hadn't thought of it. I think I'll get round there and make some inquiries. I'll be opening in a couple of minutes. Thanks for mentioning it. Oi, oi, Percy, you've not bought anything? No, don't worry about that, counselling. No, I'll, uh, I'll do my shopping while I'm there. Kill two birds with one stone. Cheerio. <sighs> right, next stop, Sally's living room. Ding, ding, beep, 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 beep. Right, slow down a bit. Oh, we've got to go everywhere by tram today, Sal. Oh, I see. Right, come on, anyone getting off? Yes, David Platt's getting off, aren't you? Yes, he is a good boy. Thank you. You're chirpy this morning. Has Gail been shoving something into your cornflakes or what? Well, oh, no, I've had a good weekend, actually, Sal. Hey, difference it makes having a place to yourself. I cannot yeah. tell you. I thought Carmel could do no wrong. Ah, oh, well, she's a nice kid and that. She's helped us out no end, including financially. But, uh, well, nothing like being lord and master in your own home, is there? So when does this little honeymoon have to end, then? Oh, well, she's back at tea time. Still, only a few more weeks now, we should have found a place of her own, wouldn't she? Then we'll have all the time in the world, won't we? Right, well, I better go. Now then, big fella, you just remember, Sally's not as big a tram as I am, so don't go asking for too many rides. OK, all right? See you, soldier. And I'll see you, Sal. Bye now. Bye. A couple of packets of them glucose lozenge things, please. Hey, you want to go easy on these, you know? Suck too many of these, they go to your brain. Oh, well, I'll have to live dangerously. It'd be like now to be living dead for if I don't get a fix soon. Yeah, too many late nights, that's your problem. Yeah, not doing what you think, though. I was up till three doing Baldwin's T-shirts. Mind you, I don't suppose going out all weekend helped. Oh, you young people, honestly. You do yourself some damage. In years to come, I'll tell you. I read a book once, actually, about uh, time management. Told you how to put your life in order on a weekly basis. You see, what you have to do, you look at your priorities, then you make a sort of a table, then you make a list of all the things you've got to do in order to... Are you before... coming? Sorry, I've got, got to be got working to go. two minutes. Yeah, yeah, well, don't forget what I told you. If you want to uh, look at that book... No, sometime. it's all right. Don't bother to have a time manager on my own here. Come on! See you. I wanted to be work early this morning. All right, keep your hair on. Well, we're five minutes late setting off now. Five minutes for you two sweets. Why are women always late, eh? Men are never late. Time. Fine breakdown. Or was there a queue at the suppliers? Well, I had to get some screws for these mirrors. Oh, I 
thought you were leaving them on the floor. They've been growing on me down there. Look, I've got other jobs on as well, you know. Well, try and get them up today, please. They'll be up. <sighs> Street seems quite busy. You have many inquiries? Quite a few, yeah. Ah, you've picked a good spot here. Yeah. There's a couple of dishes half a mile away I've worked out. Ah, you'll be well away. What's <coughs> that level? Let's have a look. Yeah. Yeah, here, let me hold it while you get a pencil. Uh, you're all right, I can do this standing on me. I did 12 in an hour the other month. I've, I've had enough bad luck just lately, thanks. I don't want any more. I'm just going to go into town to get something for Rosie. Do you want anything for David while well, I'm there? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Do you want anything for you, David? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's going to be there you go. Ooh, ta. It's going to be your birthday on Christmas Day, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be two years old. Get you lots and lots and lots of prints, eh? <laughs> Do you know I don't know what they're putting in the water at your house? I wish they'd give me some of it. <laughs> oh, well, that's what two days of passion does for you. Oh, oh, so that's what Martin meant by a great weekend. Oh, well, you know, some people go to Paris or somewhere for the weekend to spice their love lives up. These two get a lodger in so they can be naughty behind their back. Well, worked, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Sounds like cheaper than going to Paris, you know. So is that going to be a permanent thing? Then? Oh, I don't think so, Sally. I mean, well, it's not me I'm worried about, it's Martin. I don't think you can stand the pain. No, no, man, no. I don't mind admitting it. <sighs> this, this, this competition from Crazy Cause, it could eat into our profit margin if we're not careful, you know. What we need is a big Christmas attraction to stave it off. Currently, they might be shrinking violets in the thrusting world of commerce, they're not. Yeah, well, I thought what I we mean, might even, do. Even Grocer Roberts has got his special offer sorted out. Have you been in there this morning? Uh, no, but oh, you see, Oh, great me. big posters up on the wall, bright, it's like... I mean, if he can get himself sorted out, why can't we, eh? Have you not got any ideas? Well, yes, I have, as a matter of fact. Oh, well, good, then. Why don't you switch it out? Mother Christmas. <laughs> Mother Christmas? It's very popular on the continent. Epifana, she's called in Italy. Epi... We're trying to pull folk in, not drive them away. You can't go sticking foreign words like that all over the store. They'll be hiring a special court to take them away, won't they? You know, xenophobic, you're having to think it's is. Well, we won't use the name, then. Oh, I'm with you now. Give me a little red miniskirt, long black boots. Special curricular training from us to see her through her faces. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was thinking of higher things, actually. The spirit of Europe, 1992, the open market. No, I don't like it. Thank you. <clears throat> Hey, hello, Doctor. Back up. Oh, you'll be pleased now that son of yours turned up trumps again. Oh. Why? What's you been up to now? Oh, Angie's latest T-shirt for the rugby club. He ran him off this morning. He's turned out to be a real trooper. We did something right then. 18 years of Barney and not entirely wasted. No, no way. In fact, if he carries on like this, I'll have to let him use a red jag again. Well, I'm glad somebody's got faith in him, because I'll tell you this, Michael, I wouldn't let him use my jag if I had one, that's for sure. Ah, you're his father, you see. You know more about him than I do. I haven't got that hand again. <laughs> so how are things down at the salon? Shaping up. Opening next week, all being well. I said salon. Do they still call him that? Mm. Salons, hairdressers, stylists. It depends what image you want. Now, what image do you want? Oh, as long as people know they get a good haircut for their money, I'm not too fussed about the name. Yeah, well, you know, you've got a very classy presence here. Yeah, you don't want to sell yourself short round here. I mean, it should be Denise, shouldn't it? That's right. I remember that. And it's Alf, isn't it? That's it. Corner shop. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if there's anything you want, let me know. Uh, I'll bear it in mind. Thanks for the tip. Alf. Ah, see you, Lou. See you. Oi, oi. Pint seals up. You what? Come on, I just heard you sorting out your pre-war chat-up lines. Ed, don't come near this with me, Al. You have a very smutty mind, you know that, Duckworth. I have, yes, yes. Yeah. Pint, order it, you'll be no wiser. Ah, there you are. Been looking for you all morning. Oh, why's that? Somebody removed my neighbourhood watch sticker. <laughs> Well, I came into better buys early, especially as well. Oh, well, that's a what tonight. We're in close session all this morning, finalising our Christmas campaign. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. I know things didn't go too well last year, but I'm prepared to let bygones be bygones if you are. Bygones? What are you talking about? Bygones? Part of the Christmas, you are having one, I take it. Ah, uh, that, yes. Well, oh, well, I'm ready when you are. I mean, I've not got anything on this week. I could start this afternoon, if you like. Um, well, uh, well, well uh, the thing is, Mr Sugden, uh, we've decided that this year we're, uh, we're not going to have a Father Christmas. No Father Christmas? No. Well, what are you having? 
Mother Christmas. Mother Christmas is no such thing. Oh, yes, there is, Mr. Sugden. In Europe. You've never heard of Epiphana. Epi who? What's Europe got to do with Weatherfield? Oh, 1992, open market. We have to shed our insular preconceptions if Europe is to evolve. So I'm not wanted. Well, I'm sure there are other stores less at precinct than better buys. Want the anachronistic mill version? Uh, crazy cuts. Oh, that's right, yes. Yes, I believe crazy cuts are looking for a Santa this very moment. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I'll go around there then. Mm -hmm. Offer them my services. Yes, I'm sure Miss Taylor will be delighted to see you. Thanks for the information. Right. I'll get off now before I miss the boat. Yeah. Cheerio. Yeah, bye. Oh, and good luck, Mr. Sugden. Thank you. Bye. Well, <laughs> <laughs> huh? I should take the pop out of the Christmas crackers when they take it, Mum. <laughs> so you let me be funny idea then. Well, we haven't come up with anything else, have we? Mm. Better give it a whirl. Can't do anything else now we've told them. We'll never hear the end of it otherwise, will we? So it's a case of uh, good thinking. Excellent, that, Norman. <laughs> All you have to do now is find it <laughs> by Friday. What? Of course. Mm -hmm. Well, look at this. Christmas has come early this year, hasn't it? Oh, great! Look what I've got! Mm. In one colour! That's smashing! <laughs> I tried them against a boy your size in the shop. I hope they fit. They seemed OK. Yeah, Bobby Dazzler's <laughs> then. <laughs> Aren't they? Let's have a look. Can you manage that? Mm, yes. Here, here, here like this. The days, yeah. <laughs> there. Now, this <laughs> is a very special so nurse's cool watch from one. Ireland. Mm. See? <laughs> and you pin it on here, like this. And then you hold it like that to examine a patient. That's right. Oh. And what do you say? Thank you. <laughs> it's very kind of you, Carmen. That's a pleasure. I'd have got the two of you something, only I didn't have enough time. Oh, don't worry yourself, Carmen. We're spoiled enough as it is. Did you go on a ship? I did, yeah. Great big one it was, too. It's ever so exciting when you go across the sea. And uh, how did the rest of the weekend go? <sighs> I'll tell you about that later, Gail. Best not Carmen. to spoil their fun at the moment, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, let me see. It's six o'clock. Time for tea. Are they all right? They're beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Do you want me to bring those plants in from outside? No, I'll do that later, thanks, Tracy. You go and get yourself ready. You've done quite enough for one afternoon. Hello. Hello. Hi. You're not getting under your feet, I hope. Dad? On the contrary, I don't know how I've managed without her. You acquired my instinct for hard work, obviously. <laughs> You're nearly ready now. I'll just go and get my card. So, Mark, when are we going to see you in a part-time job, then? When you start giving me so much homework? Mark! It's true. I never have any time to do anything else. A few lessons in diplomacy next term might not go amiss. Mm, well, you'll thank me when the exams come along. Why? Can you give me some extra marks? If the work's good, I will, but not unless. And no favouritism in my class. <sighs> Even if some do show a bit more charm <laughs> than others. <laughs> thank you. Mm -hmm. So much for Gail and Martin's marriage being on the rocks. Why? What's happened? I saw him today. Yeah? He seemed absolutely fine to me. They were laughing and joking. Spent half the weekend in bed from what I can make out. Wonder how they managed that. Well, how calm one can think there's a problem, we'll never know. Yeah, you take the notice of what she says. Ooh. She's probably heard them rowing once or twice and jumped to a conclusion. You know what it's like if you've never lived with anyone? You automatically think being married is you lovey dovey all the time, don't you? Well, it makes you wonder if she hasn't got a crush on him. Oh, here we go. The great female imagination at work again, eh? Well, if she says one more thing about him being unhappy, Kevin, I'm going to tackle her about it. Half the weekend in bed, eh? Wonder what his secret is. It's the hmm. novelty of having Carmel out from under the feet, I wouldn't wonder. Mm. And she's looking for somewhere else to live, you say? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> well, we could palm her off at weekends. Give us so much to smile about on Mondays, wouldn't it? <laughs> so, did you see Michael? I did, yes, girl. I saw a lot of them this weekend. And? Well, we'd, we'd a long talk on Saturday morning about what we both wanted. And then again on, um, in the evening. Uh, and the more we talked, the more it seemed we just weren't seeing eye to eye. I lay awake all night thinking about it until I finally made up my mind. So I went round on Sunday morning and I put it to him. I said, if you can't wait two years until I finish my training, then I don't think it's worth it. And he said he couldn't. So I broke it off. It wasn't easy. 
We were in the park, in the old man shelter where we used to play. He looked so hurt. God, we've known each other so long. You've got your future to think about. I know. It doesn't make it any easier. The girl's right, though, Carmel. I know, I know. And I, and I want to thank you, Martin, for the advice you gave me. It made things a lot clearer in my mind. Well, I hope it didn't break you off because of my advice. I mean, if it helped you come to a decision, fine. Uh, it did, and, and I'm sure it's the right one. Well, a, a career is far more important to you at this stage in your life than romance, Carmel. There are plenty more lads like Michael in the world. <laughs> That's true, Gail. That's very true. How's the romance going? Can't complain. Uh, I thought I saw that far away look in your eye. <laughs> it's not that bad, is it? <laughs> How do you get on with the little boy? Is he called Mark? Yeah, yeah. Well, better than I did, I must say. I think he's learning to trust me. Oh, good. Did the father die or did they get divorced? I think you did tell me, but I can't remember which way around it is. No, he died. About this time last year, that happened. He must miss him. Yeah, they were very close. I take my hat off to Mark and Maggie, actually, the way they coped. It seems remarkably well adjusted, considering. His father must be in a good influence on him. A rare commodity these days. Yeah. Oh, congratulations, yeah. sweetheart. Another corker under your belt. Oh, glad you liked it. What you can have? I'll have a pint, please. Coming up. Mind you, we've got to do something about this drink problem, you know. Drink problem. Yeah, well, in your position, knocking back pints, I mean, it's just not good enough, is it? So who? It's all right when you're a student, do what you like, nobody cares, but, I mean, people in the design business expect a bit more sophistication. They can bog off. Yeah, they can, but we need them for our work. Think about it. Fucking <laughs> pig. You drink what you want, you look like you need it. I nearly killed myself last night finishing that job. Not that I'd give him the pleasure of knowing. And then I fell asleep in a meeting this afternoon. Oh. I am not the most popular person at work at the moment. Can't work it out, Percy. Work what out? Well, I know it's supposed to be happy hour and all that, but it uh, doesn't normally stop you looking like a bun at a funeral. Oh, I'm feeling quite pleased. Reg Aldrich did me quite a favour today. What kind of favour? I'd rather tell him first, if you don't mind. Oh, sounds a rum do, that. Reg Aldrich handing out favours. Got to be a catch in it somewhere, you know? That's typical of the modern age. Somebody showed you some genuine goodwill for a change and there's got to be a catch. And there isn't one. Don't be so cynical. Of course there isn't. So where's the catch? So how much longer are we talking about? Oh, yeah. Should be finished by the weekend with any luck. I hope so. I don't want to miss the Christmas rush. Look, I'm going as fast as I can. The trouble with these places. It cost you money every day they're not open. Well, if you're not happy, get another builder, somebody who charge you the going rate. Oh, so it's the money you're worried about, is it? I said I don't want pay until I'm finished. It sounds like it. Look, I said I'd do it at cost, and I will. I just get on with it, all this aggravation. Go on, take it. There's everything you're owed there. See you tomorrow then, yeah? You do want me to finish this? Do what you want, Neil. You usually do. Did you see me dad? Yes. So did you find out? I came as close as I'll ever do without asking him straight. And does he know? I don't think he has a clue. I feel so sorry for him. Why? He seemed so happy with Maggie when he picked me up. So why feel sorry? He's going to be even more hurt not being told. How can he be hurt if he doesn't know? He'll be hurt if he is told. Well, he's going to find out eventually. He's got a right to know now. We've no business keeping oh, it from him. Now I really am beginning to regret telling you. He's not right, though, is it? Admit it. Tracy, what did I say to you this morning? <sighs> Look, if you tell your dad about this, you open up one enormous can of worms and more people are going to get hurt in the fallout than you can imagine we keep this to ourselves right <laughs> this fella you should have seen him you could smell the money on him and these light fittings he wanted doing you can't it was solid gold it was uh, 
I'm riveting when I get going, me. I'm sorry it's not you. Just had a hard day, that's all. Yeah, me and all. And they nearly smashed the layer this morning. That would have been seven years of fun to look forward to. You don't believe in all that, do you? What? Oh, yeah. I always buy other a gypsy if you don't want any bad luck. Why? Husband might be round the corner ready to bop you up. Oh, that's a joke. I think I prefer you serious. <laughs> I am serious. About you. You're a terrible liar, Mitchell. Yeah. Woke you up, though, didn't it? So it is a lie. Why do you want it to be? I'm sorry I don't go in for these games. What are you going for now? Men who are straight, not poses. How do I write on that? I'm not sure. Let's just say the jury's still out on that one, shall we? Same again, Percy? Yes, please. Right. Well, old Percy. Hey, could you do me a sub? Just a pension day. I may have been buying a few presents and I've run short. Hey, could be one for you if you'd play your cards right. <laughs> All right, go on then. Half a lag and love. Right. I hope it's a decent uh, present. Weekend away for two at Rill. Oh, good. I can take one of my bowling pals then. I've got some good greens at Rill. <laughs> Comedian, eh? <laughs> That's why I love him. Ah, Mr. Oldworth, can I get you a drink? Oh, that's why I can't have you, Mr. Yeah. Sutton. I'll have a pint, please. Yeah. Uh, does this mean we've got the job, then? It does, and this is my way of saying thank you. Ah, well, congratulations, and I hope you'll be very happy there. Yes, I start Wednesday. Uh, I must say, uh, I don't think very much about this Mother Christmas. Uh, it's a silly idea, this, mm. you know, foreign notion. It won't catch on here. Mm. Well, I beg to differ. In fact, I've already delegated the, uh, the matter to Mr Watts. And as of Friday, the continent will be coming to Weatherfield, courtesy of Better Bats. Yes, a few years' time from now, we'll be wondering how we ever live without it. Congratulations. Cheers. Cheers. Are you being part of Christmas again? More of it. Could you find a small place for me in your little grotto? I've asked all the women at work, including the cleaners. I even rang one of those uh, agencies, you know, recruitment agencies. No one wants to know. Well, it does sound a bit stupid. Mother Christmas? I've never heard of it. Well, you would have thought the likes of Vera would kill for a job like that. Sat down all day just chatting to kids instead of humping stuff around in the Christmas rush. I'm sorry I ever mentioned the idea now. Let me get this right. You're looking for someone who's game for a laugh, but dependable. Good with kids and in need of a bob or two. I know it sounds like a tall order when you put it like that. I don't know. I think uh, I might know someone who'll fit the bill. Hmm? And you'll have no problem with the ho-ho-ho's. In fact, <laughs> I think she'd be a natural. You know, a man could get quite used to this. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, Goes a little evenings in, kids in bed. Mm. What about all the studying you're supposed to be doing? Oh, I think I'll come out for now. Mm. 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 Oh. Carmel? Didn't your friends turn up? Yeah, but I didn't really feel up to us. Not after this weekend. It can't have been that bad. It's to be nice seeing your folk. It's all right, I suppose. But, you know, to be honest, it felt a bit strange being back there again. It didn't really feel like home anymore in a funny kind of way. I'm so happy being here with you now. This feels more like home to me than Ireland. Is um, Curly happy with his observatory, then? Seems to be. He's up there often enough. Yeah. Has he discovered any new stars yet? I saw a couple of rockets on bonfire night, I was telling him. <laughs> I was telling him bad jokes. <laughs> I sink to the level of the company I'm with. There's no flies on you, is there? You seem to be. But you know what I mean. I'm not a fool, and I don't suffer fools gladly. Well, look, you've invited me in. Does that mean that I'm not one, or is, is the jury still out on that one as well? Oh, I think the jury's made up its mind in that department. Yeah? What's the verdict? Ta-da! I'm serious. The verdict is not guilty. Free to go. All right. That's the way you want to play it. It's not, actually. What are you doing? I'll kill you, lot Funny faces, like I always do for our Liam and for Delma when Nikki, I'm Nikki, have you seen this week's I told you distinctly not to touch it. Why do I always get the blame when things go missing? Why don't you look at the magazine right when it should be? It never is, though, is it? Oh. <laughs> it's a flat share, I noticed. 
Sounds ever so nice. Uh, two girls looking for third, non-smoker. Nice quiet room overlooking mm. garden. Sure, I'd given it some thought, and a place of my own would be better after all. Hey, look what Carmel's drawn you. A silly face for a silly face. <laughs> She's you on it. pretty stupid without them, wouldn't you? Hey, you'd have bold eyes. Well, must be worth a look at least, eh? I, I'll make a note of this. Thanks, Skinny. Never mind with your kids' stuff. This is a special lucky leprechaun for this afternoon. <laughs> What's this afternoon? School football match, I told you. You must have told Carmel, love. You didn't tell me. I did. It's good. Well, um, I'll just leave it here, eh? Just in case. Thanks. Angela, it's for you. Do you usually come visiting this early? Yeah, only when it's somebody worth visiting. Hey. Need any help? I uh, don't. No, she doesn't. <laughs> I can handle my own conversations, thank you, Curly. As long as it's words of one syllable, like naff off. You don't exactly treat you with kid gloves, do you, considering he's your landlord? Me and Curly understand each other. What about me and you? Do we understand each other? I'd say we'd got the makings. Just want to be sure. I shouldn't have thought you'd be in much doubt after last night. Only women who get scared, Hans. How about me knockbacks too? What do you want, a score out of ten? Oh, don't be flip, love. I'm not talking about sex. I'm talking about feelings. Are we still on? Or was I only after you for one thing? Of course we're still on, silly. Come round tonight and I'll cook you my world-famous spag bowl. How much more reassurance do you need? There's toast in here going stone cold. Yes, Dad. Come early. About half six. Just to get this straight, there is nothing in my tenancy agreement that stops me having gentlemen call us, is there? What tenancy agreement? We haven't got one. Precisely. Oh, hello. Thanks yeah, very yeah. much. Not today. Thanks. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I bet they weren't all gruesome little monsters like ours, though, were they? Your Leon and... What's her name? Fidelman. Fidelman, eh? I get away with you. You know you love the kids as much as I do. I love them. Hang on, hang on. What's up, man? You have a mark on your nose. Mm. Come on. You don't know I've done that? Yeah? Yeah. Thank you. You'll do, young Platt. Right. What time, but it's still freezing out there. Don't worry, nothing will drop off. I rung your bell upstairs, but I thought you might regard it as an invasion of your privacy. You're more intuitive than I gave you credit for. Do right, you want me finishing it up? Like I said last night, you do what you want. I've got mine to leave you to it, lady. Fine, you shouldn't be too difficult to replace. So I've noticed. Look, if you're still happy to do the job, it's fine by me. Just don't do me no favours, all right? Are we going to stand here arguing the toss all morning, or are you going to get on with it, you lazy sod? Lost none of your feminine charms, I see. What's it like in this place you've got upstairs? Adequate. But don't count on being invited to the flat warm and sunshine. <laughs> no, I know better than that. Curl, you know when you were caught in Kimberley the second time around? Is this going to be nasty? As if I would. You're my best pal, Curly. Do anything for you. Like the way I used to go out on an evening so you and Kimberly could uh, have some privacy. When? Tonight. Little did I know, when I was having my new windows fitted, that it'd mean I'd be evicted from my hearth and home. Don't exaggerate, Nomi. It's only one night for a couple of hours. Yeah, thin end of the wedge. Now, if that's him with his toothbrush, the answer's no. And don't you ever, ever call me Normie. <laughs> Reg, since my transport is temporarily non functioning, Norman, could I beg a lift in yours? Yes. You'd be surprised to learn that although I am equipped to deal with most of the complexities of modern life, Miss Freeman, solving the mysteries of the combustion engine sadly is not a month. 
Bango's another illusion. Yes. And speaking of illusions, Norman, you do realise, of course, that uh, Crazy Cut Santa is being installed today, whilst we have hardly had a potential glimmer of an epiphany in our better by sights. An epi what? Epiphany. It's Italian. You have Mother Christmases over there, and I'm seeing a couple of possibles this afternoon. Mm. Oh, well, Mother Christmas? He's serious. Certainly. I thought such a lady was in the spirit of, uh, well, sexual equality and European brotherhood, or uh, sisterhood, as the case might be. <laughs> and the fact that you'd offer a half what you'd pay an experienced Daddy Christmas hasn't even crossed your innocent little mind, has it? Of course I feel sorry for the girl, especially since she's split up with a boyfriend. I think that was tougher than she's letting on. All the same, you wish you were out from under your feet? No, do like the girl. I mean, she does make herself useful about the house. Yes, but you can't lounge around of an evening in nothing but your silk cabinicas. Hmm? Oh, well, I hadn't thought about that as a major drawback. But now you come to mention it, no, I can't. That's if I had any. Why, do you? No, no, not recently. I mean, I could waltz through in that with a pair of rubber gloves and he wouldn't unglue his ear from his portable phone for long enough to notice these days. <laughs> Ah, oh, now, if you want any tips on the art of seduction, here comes the lady with all the books. I keep telling you, woman, I've not got the time. I've got to report for duty in an hour. You'd do better with an ass hot cup of tea in you. Now, that's two teas, two tea cakes, and life suits done well. <laughs> Look, what are you trying to do? I've not long since I've had my breakfast. What are you doing? I'm trying to plump you up. Them kiddies don't want to cuddle up to a skinny Santa. <laughs> Neither do I, for that matter. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? <laughs> I'm giving you a test run, Mum. It's his first day as Daddy Christmas. Oh. I'm not a novice, you know, and I thank you not to use that disgusting expression. Cuddle? Daddy Christmas. Oh, Percy, she's only taking an interest. Well, I wish you wouldn't. Can you find something else to do with your time? I would. And there's not a big demand for pensioned off with the women. <laughs> Go on, then, I'll have a toasted cake, but go easy on the butter. Now, surely that's not all you're having on a cold winter's day, a big strapping fella like you. Oh, well, I don't have a loving little lady to cook me a nice hot lunch. Oh, neither does Al. <laughs> the difference clear. My husband doesn't need feeding up, he needs feeding down. Have you got a whole wheat spaghetti? Uh, yes. Uh, I thought Curly preferred white. Oh, I can prefer purple with yellow polka dots on, but as it's not for him, I don't need to take his preferences into account. Oh. I'll have a bottle of that red, please. Oh, right. No. Here. You know, you should do more of this, Deirdre. No, I don't like red wine. It gives me a headache. I mean, making romantic little dinners. I mean, an attractive woman like her, it's not right that she's sitting at home most nights all on her own, is it? It's not, love. <sighs> I'm not a very good advert for myself this morning, am I? I look a right scruff. Oh, I don't know. I think looking slightly dishevelled can be very sexy in a woman. It's not that just got out of bed, look, darling. It's more the out next week, and I've not even finished the flaming undercoat oh. scenario. Doug Murray, I gather you're the Denise. The one and only. OK, if I just pay for this Come order, on, I've got to get back. Hey, the Denise. I take it you are unisex. By heck, they don't waste time asking personal questions around here, do they? Now, well, this new salon of yours, will you be doing men as well as women? Sonny, I'll shampoo and set a camel with three umps if it's got the cash to pay. Oh. Lively lady. Oh. Come on, Tinkers. Come on, time. Have they been good? Mm. They're always good. Oh. Ah. I've done this at school. Let's have a look. Oh. There's the boat. Yeah. There's the octopus, and there's all the fish. Very good. And we'll go to the seaside as soon as summer comes. And we'll paddle and build sand castles, but no octopuses. They're horrible things. So, Louise, would you be a good girl? Just run upstairs, love, and get that magazine off my dressing table. I promised it to your mum. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Look, I just want to get one thing clear. All this stuff you've been hinting at about Martin and Gail. What stuff? Saying they're having problems. Sally, I never said any such thing. Well, that's not how I remember it. And as far as I'm concerned, Carmel, they're one of the happiest couples that I know. Sally, I love them both, and I'd never say a word against them. I don't know why you're twisting everything. It's you that's twisting things, Carmel. Martin is Gail's husband. Sharon, do you think I don't know that? What are you saying, that, that I'm in the way? Yeah. I think they'd be better off on their own. Well, I think you're being very cruel. You're just trying to make trouble for me, and I don't know why I've never done anything to you. Come on, little loves. We're going home. Oh, come on. Yeah. 
Did you have to drag half the football pitch in with you? Oh, Mum, we did wash. Oh, yes, a taxi lift into the bath when you get home. Mm. So, it's a good game, was it, Mark? Brilliant. Nicky took this amazing free kick and oh, then... Oh, yeah, well, save the technicalities. All I know about football is that you play it with a round ball. I couldn't wait to tell Carmel about the bend I got in that shot. Would have made Gaza green. Ah, uh, well, sit down. I'll bring you something over, all right? I'm getting just the teeniest bit tired of saying with Carmel. Oh. Not only does she bake better cakes than me, she knows what the Super League's all about. Let's face it, kid. As a human being, you're a failure. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> hey, Tracy! Nicky and me played for our team and we won. B1. Brett. Who's the brat? My dad's girlfriend's kid, if you can work that out. Now, I babysit him sometimes. Right, well done, lads. Sorry you can't run to a silver cup. Yeah. Thanks. What's a turn up? What? Mark with her. Mrs. Fedwick? No, she's Mrs. Baldwin now, and that's the whole point. Honestly, what is? I can't say. Why not? Because I can't, that's why. I'll just shut it. What are you having? All right, then. If you've got secrets now, I'll tell you about Nicola Wilcox and Ian Clough. She's pregnant and they're getting married. I already know. To 18 year olds? <laughs> she doesn't look old enough. Oh, this lady will definitely get my custom. <gasps> no, I mean it. No, I wouldn't mind getting my hands on that gorgeous mop of hair. <laughs> Fancy that myself, running my fingers through your hair. Uh, get off your cheeky arse. Oh, no, no, you're supposed, to be, you're supposed to be dead relaxing. You'll be relaxed when her gym clubs you on. Oh. <laughs> Listen, when are you planning to open up, love? Oh, next Monday, if it ever gets finished. You wouldn't think there'd be so much to fit up in one small shop. Hiya. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Jack. Desmond. Hey, his missus would have been a great customer for you, but she ran away with another fella. Tact were never one of Jack's strong points. Hey, no, I always, I'll just tell the truth. You don't mind, do you, Des? Hey. Just glad you're speaking to me at all. Why should I not? Well... Seeing as your Vera seems to blame me for all the ills that befell your family since the very first Duckworth crawled out the primeval swamp. Still are out the Jacko. <laughs> Call the lot round here. <laughs> so I see. Mm. So, as far as I am concerned, everything happened for the best, you know. I mean, Lisa and little Tommy, they better off in Blackpool, and I said so all along. So I reckon you did them a favour. Yeah, I did, didn't I? <laughs> I was just going to go. Oh, uh, good. Perfect timing. When is that cuddly husband of yours expecting you back? He's not. He's at a council meeting on dustbins or something. Oh, oh happy days. <laughs> good. Because uh, Mike won't be back from Birmingham until God knows when. So V and me can dish the dirt over a bottle of something sparkling. Ooh. Hey, you can come as well, dear, if you like. Then we'll have a real girls' night oh, out. Thanks very much. But uh, Tracy's cooking me something special. Oh. Which reminds me, I didn't much care for your comment to Doug Murray about poor little orphan Deirdre being stuck in on her own all the time. <laughs> I just give things a gentle push. You were about as subtle as a Saracen tank. <laughs> it was really embarrassing. What? What's going off there, anyway? I mean, it looked like there might be something brewing between you two at one time. You're as bad as each other. Uh. Listen, he's all right for a laugh, but I've had my fingers burnt once too often by professional charmers like him. He'd chat up anything a skirt. Uh, you say that about my husband, man, you in his case, it were true. Yeah, no, look at Alma. Now, she managed to catch one and team him. Yeah, I think I preferred him while he was still wild. <laughs> so how he was, with that Denise Watson end today, he was oh. flashing his charisma all over the shop. With who? Oh, the hairdresser that's opening up across the road. She's all right, actually. Although I have my suspicions he's a bit of a flirt. Oh, yeah, well, speaking of somebody who's never batted her eyelashes and a bloke in a knife, of course. The point is, <laughs> Deirdre, there aren't that many single fellas left when you reach 30. So you cannot afford to be picky, eh? Come on, you. Uh, close up for me, will you? Yes. Bye. Bye. Oh, dear. That's brilliant, Nicky. I just wish I'd been there to see you. You can come next time if you want. Can I? I'll even skip a lecture if I have to, sweetheart. Oh, quick, go on up and have your bath. Your mum will have a fit if she sees you still in that state. Uh, oh, Gail just pops over to Ivy's. Hi, hi. Hey. What's wrong? It's nothing. I'm fine. Hey, come on. It's your Uncle Martin you're talking to now. <laughs> what is it? Is it all this Michael business? Eh? No, no, I was right to end it. Well, what's bugging you then, love? I don't, I don't want to talk about it. Ivy wants us to go around for his tea on Sunday. I'm not keen. There's still an atmosphere between. She's upset. She won't let on why. <laughs> it's nothing. She didn't mean anything. It's just me being soft. Who didn't? Sally, <laughs> she said I was causing trouble between you. She thinks I'm in the way. Oh, you know, 
That's ridiculous, Carmel. We asked you to come here. I know, but maybe now you're sorry. Like the way you keep on looking flats out for me. Oh, Carmel, that's only because you wanted somewhere of your own. This was never meant to be permanent. Gail was just trying to help Carmel. We both are. Doesn't mean you're not welcome. Are you sure? Oh, of course we sure. You could stay here until you find somewhere where you'll be happy. <laughs> oh, you're both so good to me. I don't deserve to have friends like I'll you. I'll give over your great soppy Irish thing you'll have us all with it. <laughs> and I, for one, want me tea. <laughs> huh? oh. Well, the potatoes on. I, I've just to put the sausages under the grill. Carmel, I'm sure you must be mistaken. You know, it doesn't sound a bit like Sally. But I'll ask her about it. Oh, no, you mustn't give. I should never have told you. My mummy's always saying my mouth's far too big for my own good. Promise me you won't say anything, please. <laughs> well, if that's the way you want it. It is. I know what friends you two are. I'd never forgive myself if I caused any bother between you. Nikki, Sarah Louise, banners and mash in ten minutes. <laughs> oh, do you think I should hire a strolling violinist? What the heck are you doing at home? Apart from the fact I live here, you mean? Oh, don't be like that, Kelly. Promise. I know, I promise to disappear and I will. I'm picking up Des in five minutes. I just popped home to slip into something more casual. If that's all right with you. Sorry. Mm. It's quite important to you, isn't it, this, uh, Neil? Well, I'm not saying he's the love of my life and that I want to chuck in my career and run off and make babies with him. But, uh, yeah, he's the first bloke I've been seriously attracted to in a long time. Since Des, in fact. And there was no one in between. Oh, don't be like that. You know you mean. Yeah, you don't tell me. I was just an unfortunate blip on the cosmic radar screen of life. I am not getting into this. I'll be here in a minute. Right, I'll do me Invisible Man act. Curly, it's nice to be with someone for a change. Is that so hard to understand? You know what it's like to be lonely. Me? Me? I don't know what you're talking about. I could get used to this, being waited on hand and foot. Yeah, well, don't get too used to the idea. I'm not planning to make a habit of it. I thought you liked cooking. I do, but not if you had to do it all the time. Oh, well, in that case, madam, you'd better find yourself a new man to marry, otherwise you could end up with a problem. Seems to me if you're daft enough to get married, you end up with problems any road, no matter who you pick. Cynical child I've got. Well, it's true. Look at you and me dad. Look at me dad and Maggie if he marries her. Has he said something? No, but it's not so unlikely. They are both single. And if so, what happens over the kid? Well, it mightn't be such a big deal. Oh, grow up, Mum. You of all people know my dad feels about Mike Baldwin. He'll hit the roof when he finds out Mark's is. Oh, I wish I'd never told you now. I even saw Alma talking to him in the cafe today. That was dead weird. But to Mark? He didn't say anything. Oh, of course I did. I stood up on a table and he yelled, Hey, Mrs Baldwin. You see that little lad with the lemonade? Do you know he's your husband's illegitimate child? Honestly. You're impossible. I don't care about any of them. It's me dad. He's going to be dead upset, especially if he finds out I knew all along and never said. Tracy, I told you what I did in the strictest confidence. And it's got to stay that way. But he's got a right to know. It's not our business. It is mine. He's still my dad. And Maggie's Mark's mum. She's only been keeping it secret all these years to protect him, you know. It's not up to us to blow it. I never said anything about telling Mark. You blab to your dad and he'll have it out with Maggie. No doubt Mike will get dragged into it, then Alma. How long do you think they'll be able to keep the lid on it then, eh? Do you know, I don't get you. You're more concerned about the feelings of some kid you've never even met than you are about the man you were once married to. Don't you even care? Tracy! What about this meal you've cooked? Hey, lady boss is going to be dead just, isn't it? This happy house seems to be dragging up on the zinc. Well, yeah, but will it pay off? The only profit on cheap booze is if the stop on us up at normal prices after. Oh, I see, I see what you mean. Yeah? See. Hey, do you really see him and Deirdre together? Um, hmm. no. Well, I'd like to see us settle, especially now Ken's got himself fixed up. I see. They're certainly doing some very heavy courting. <laughs> hey, how do you feel about that? Do you know, I wish him all the luck in the world. Person, I'll be like you settling, seeing as it was your first day. Well, I'll be in tomorrow to see you in action, eh? Don't bother. Oh, it's no bother. I'll enjoy seeing you sat there behind your little white whiskers. <laughs> it was our plague, I'll right. get that, Phyllis. Oh, ta. Right then, what is where we off there? Uh... 
Pictures, ball and alley, disco, pick up a couple of eager, <laughs> ravishing women. I come like you out of here as right arm, I change places with one of you two. What's so wonderful about being me? How would you like to be banished from your own home? I can only wish. <laughs> you don't sound happy camper, mate. Oh, you'd be cheesed off and all. If on top of a, a non-existent love life, he'd wasted an entire afternoon interviewing a bunch of useless Mother Christmases. It's <laughs> certainly different, I'll give you that. You're not still going on without nonsense. Why nonsense? I think it's a lovely idea. Hey, how about you doing it, Mrs B? It sounds like perfect casting to me. Told you, Curly. Well, it's very demanding, you know, Phyllis. She's got more stamina than all three of you put together. If it's got to be a female, it might as well be her. Well, do you think you can tackle it? With Percy's backing, I could tackle Everest. Come on, round again, love. Right. <laughs> that one I see a Percy putting in a good word for her. Nice of me. Look, if you'll keep her out of my ear, I'd vote for her being queen. <laughs> ah! Two lovely, lonely ladies. This must be my lucky day. Well, no, I'm afraid not, Reggie, because we're just going. Yes, we've got two hungry husbands waiting yeah. at home. You know how it is. <laughs> oh, go on, Andrew. Ah! Norman, any progress? Do we have lift off Epifano wise? As a matter of fact, we do. Mm. Mr. Holdsworth, me our Epiphany. Ah. <laughs> should have taken me on while you had the chance, shouldn't you? Hi, I'm Angie. From across the road. We met in the mini market. Come in. A bit previous for a blow dry love, but I can show you around the estate if you want. Take all of five seconds. Actually, I was looking for Neil, the bloke who's working here. I know who Neil is. He left about ten minutes since. Oh, he was due at my place about half an hour ago. Oh, sorry, that's my fault. I kept him working overtime. He'll have gone home to tidy up. It's okay, so long as I know. You two an item, are you? Sort of. It's only fairly recent. He's a nice bloke, Neil. Yeah, I think so. Did you know him before, then? Before what? We came to fit this place. Oh, you could say that. I was married to him. Still am, for that matter. Oh, come on, we'll have a whale of a time. Ah, don't say no. I mean, it's free. It's food and drink laid down and I'll... Oh, there's music and all. A belting evening for two young women, huh? Look, I can't just gate-crash a town hall do. I'm not a counsellor anymore. Why can't Alf go? Off. Oh, Cos he's a tight-fisted old gimmer, isn't he? Do you know, he reckons these freebies cost him a fortune with dry-cleaning, new cufflinks, tax, and... I don't know why he went on the council, I don't, honest. Oh, look, I'll have to go. Oh, let me think about it. Oh, right. Tracy, love, now come on, help your mum choose a new frock. Go on, treat yourself, Deirdre. You don't get out much. Ta da, love. Ta da, Audrey. You off out? It doesn't look as if I've got much choice, does it? Not much choice, but still air choice. Oh, what a day. Thanks for the left. See you later. Bye. You like to jump in there? See you later, then. Hi, Hello, Hello, my darling. How are you? Carol's going to take David and Sarah to see Santa when she's finished college. Oh, Ooh. right. Yeah. I just thought I'd better confirm that with Gail so we don't get any confusion. Mm. Oh, right. Well, now I know. I'll see you later, then. Uh, it might I'll take an early nap because we didn't sleep too well last night. All right, See girl. you later. Thanks see you. Bye, Smile. <laughs> Love you. Bye. Bye. She must be bored to death, stuck in that house all day. What's up? Yeah, it's no wonder she'd rather talk about other people's lives. Poor oh, animal. That's right. All right, Kev. How are you? Not so bad. Listen, Tracy. What you said last night about Mark Redman, I do take your point, but I'm convinced we're just better off keeping out of it. They have a nasty habit of shooting the messenger with news like that. As far as Mark knows, his dad died last year. As far as my dad knows, Maggie's just someone new he's met. And that's really Maggie's business. My dad wouldn't see it that way. No, come on, Mum. I'm not trying to start a row. It's just how I feel. 
If my dad knew that Mark was Mike Baldwin's son, he might not want to get into that situation. Yeah, all right. But maybe Maggie's just waiting for the right moment to tell him. And maybe she's not. I told you that in confidence, Tracy. I know. Is that it, Aya? I think so. What else were you after? We were ready to have a meal last night. I went home to get changed. I came back. Just... There was nobody in. Lost my appetite. Look, have I done something wrong? You, Neil? Are you regretting things? Like what? Well, this is all a bit grudging, isn't it? Hey, if you change your mind, if you, if you, if you weren't in the mood, you should have just said I could have grabbed a cup of coffee at work. At the salon? Yes! You'd have got your wife to make one for you, would you? I told you. Denise did. And she listened. Why don't you tell me it was your wife you were working for? Why don't you tell me it was your wife moving in up the street? Look, I was going to. Your honour. It's not so soon after we... Look, events got in the way, didn't they? Oh, it spared me. Just not so soon after we'd slept together. Bless him for his conscience. Oh, Denise isn't my wife anymore. We're, we're separated. Oh, if it's in a vanity unit, you're separated. Eight hours a day, you're separated. Look, it's... No, you look, mate. You had ample time to clue me up. Now, either you had something to hide or you've deliberately made a mug of me. Either way, beat it. Can I get a second? No! Hey, when I first passed my test, any excuse to get behind the wheel of a motor? Yeah, well, there you are, Fergus. We'll find out a buzz in him, won't we? Mm, very flippant. I what he's after. How's it going? Oh, steady, you know. You can just keep spark plugs feet on the ground, you'll have two successful businesses. Steve, do us a favour, will you? Give over to Bernie, pick us up some more T-shirts. Yeah, no problem. Three gross, same bloke as before. They are, he's expected. Right. Oh, and if you're thinking of taking that demic, what's the clutch in reverse, all right? Could be your birthday again, Sancho. Eh? Here, take mine. Right, OK, yeah. Well, it... And remember, no Nigel Mansells. Using the car phone's a sackable offence and get it valeted before you bring it back, will you? Take it to the boundary garage. Tell Terry to put it on the bill. Right. I've made his day. You are. It, it, it was just a thought. A Christmas no, bonus? I didn't say I was expecting one. Good. No, I, I said what? Well, better buys are having one, cos I'll have here. Do she, you she, want she, to work she, for she, better buys? No, I hang on, hang on. Cos I've no I'm objections, all... Jack. You want to go shelf stacking under Red Jolesworth, be my guest. Folk have been certified for less. No, listen, listen to me. How many all fingers the... am I holding up, Jack? Five. I'm going. Tinner bonus, more like. I like your colour scheme, it's so pretty. Yeah, and it'll all be sectioned off oh, so you'll be totally graphical. Oh, it's lovely. Hey, you were an hairdresser, so I can call on the cavalry in the unlikely event of a stampede. Oh, well, no city and gill, but I could do a decent feather cut. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen now, how are you fixed for an emergency? Only there's a do on. Audrey, come on, look at the best. <laughs> oh, go on then, yeah. I'm sure we could do something for a neighbour. <laughs> Me, you cheeky thing. I've just had this done, honestly. No, I'm asking for Deirdre. Just a sec. Will you be careful with that equipment? You. You had to look me your mouth, didn't you, eh? You don't want a gun. I do. Oh, guns out. Nice. I want one. Um, how about a bike? I don't think so. Well, you write a letter to Father Christmas for a bike and see how you go on. You'll have to go to bed early, you know, and keep your fingers crossed. I know you're not with your beard's coming Oh, on. don't get clever. Here you are. Who's next? I don't know. You must be mad thinking of me. You can't do right for doing it wrong round here. Well, you can't blame Bert for that. I mean, the brewery's coming down on her like the Gestapo's there. Yeah, we had a quiz night that went down like a Led Zeppelin. 
We've got an happy hour that'll make this place look like flaming Mary Celeste. He will. And do we get any thanks for all our effort? Do, do we, Alec? Uh, well, where would you go, Jackal? Hey, hey. I don't, I better places than this part. Oh, cut yourself on. Come on, I thought you was unemployed before you started. Never been, un never been unemployed in my life. I, I, I just paced myself. Oh, I see. Mm. Yes, sir. Was better somewhere. When you're ready, Jack. All right, right, love it. There's somebody with a, look, a thingy. Uh, what do you call it? Oh, yeah. A smile. Oh, yeah! <laughs> hey, don't be deceived. This is shock. I've just dragged 20 or third years around the Science Museum using 10 different versions of... No, don't touch that! Sorry, we're not licensed to sell that. <laughs> oh, right. Well, uh, in that case, I'll have you special in a cup of tea. Thanks. Nice. Oh, hello. You weren't in school? No, no, we've been out on a field trip. Something wrong? No. Are you round at Maggie's tonight? Well, uh really made any plans yet. Oh, well, don't stop in on your own. Come round, I'll cook us a meal. Your mum's going out, you can keep me company. Oh, yes, of course, I'd love to. Brilliant. After seven, casual dress. Do you know what you're doing for Christmas yet, or what? What? Besides praying the bruising fade so I can get crash parties. Uh, I think we'll just go for the traditional, you know, mm. straight Christmas dinner, kids' tantrums. <laughs> you're welcome to wade in if you want. Well, send us the brochure, I'll think about it. Mm. How's your maths? Oh, not brilliant, right? Uh, one ten, please. Cheers. I didn't realise you and Neil. We're not. He was telling the truth. We are separated. It means not to me. Is it? He's very upset that I blew it. Well, why shouldn't you? I'm very grateful it's more than needed. Yeah, well, he's not exactly your upfront guy, is he? Look, you want to talk, so why don't we grab a bottle of something on me? Least I can do, really. He didn't even stop at the junction. Well, calm down. I mean, straight out without any warning. There was no way I could have stopped in time. I mean, look at it, for God's sake. Calm down. You're a very lucky lad. It's not everybody gets two coppers as witnesses, right? He smells a drink. He'll probably register positive, and your boss will come out very nicely on the insurance. Have you got your licence? It's at the garage. You'll have to produce your documents for the report within seven days. Give us a full name. Kevin Webster. You're right. Yeah, you're right. It's up. 100 quid upon last night, which is 80 quid upon the night before. <laughs> Happy hour. Yeah! <laughs> so how come you've got him working at the shop, then? Neil's good at his job. And I couldn't afford anybody else. He's doing it for cost. And you are actually getting divorced? Yeah, we're actually getting divorced. Though I don't know why the paperwork should worry you if I've already said we're separated. Because I don't want to get involved in a trial separation as a home wrecker. I'd go for an MP if I had that much bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Neil couldn't cast the first stone on that score. That's how we got together. You married before? He came to fit the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I left my first husband for him. Younger, more exciting. I did love him. I put myself through a lot of hardship when I fell in love with Neil. Bit of a classic, really, running off with a builder. God, he don't have come across as vulnerable. Is that just a trick of the light, then? No, he is. He genuinely is. So why chuck him away? When I first met him, Neil told me his wife was seeing someone else. Is that true? 
It suits him to believe it. And it suits me to let him. There's that paranoia, isn't there? When you get together through ill-gotten means, it sets a pattern. Neil persuaded me away. He doesn't overrate himself. So he just thinks I'm easily persuaded. Is that a yes or a no? I think Neil was just my ticket out of the last marriage. Think? No, I'm fairly convinced. This is all just between the two of us, isn't it? Frank was older than me. Well, ten years. Very grand, self-made man. That said more about him than he thought it did. <laughs> he couldn't spend a quid without telling somebody. But I lapped it up, swanning around in a Porsche with a bloke who made me look like the Duchess of Ashton. And how old were you then? 25, 26. Packed it in, then? Oh, God, yeah. I used to pride myself on feeling 30 and looking 20. When Neil came to put the cupboards in, he seemed like a bit of a kid at first, shuffling round like he does, buttering me up for another coffee. Oh, yeah, I've seen that one. Then we got talking, and he just came out with it one day. He said, Frank's a nice enough bloke, but you don't seem too happy. God, he floored me, Angie. Didn't I strike a nerve? I didn't know whether to clip him round the ear or book him for therapy. <laughs> Two days later, we were having a mad pash affair, and... I felt like I'd met somebody who really cared about what I wanted. And then you rode off into the sunset in Neil's filthy pickup truck. <clears throat> You're not far wrong there, I'll tell you. So how come from that to this? Once I got far enough away from Frank, Neil just started looking like a bit of a kid again. Like I said, obviously my ticket out. But he's a very nice kid. You two suit each other. Well, thanks, but to be honest, you just talked yourself out of the Crystal Clear Judgment Award. Well, I must be half right. Otherwise, you wouldn't have let me get past the first class. Huh. Well, nice. Is it... Well, what time did he leave your place at? That's two hours ago. Oh, it's all right, Terry. I've... Oh, don't start. Look, I swear it, it wasn't my fault. What the hell have you done to my car? I've got two copies as witnesses. The idiot was drunk. Uh, oh, come on, he was. He was drunk. Nice wax finish there, Mike. Would you get to do your valet? <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. And I mean that. All Cheers, well yeah. done. So, yeah. so, happy hours working. Now, we've got to make sure it stays that way. Suggestions from the shop floor, please. Water the ale down. Behave you. Well, we could stick peanuts and crisps on there. It's not cheap, you know. Well, what about instead of putting them out at opening, lay them out at, say, quarter past six? Yeah, well, that's all some of them come in for. Well, yeah, but we've no problem getting them to come in for happy hour. It's hanging on to them. We've got to create a pattern. Crisps and peanuts. Mm. Oh, what the hell. Sandwiches. Jack, nip to Alf's, get a couple of loaves. All right. I want, I want a dolly, but don't cry. You and Dolly's cry, then? It always wakes me up at night. Oh, I think we can do something about that, <laughs> don't you? But I the dolls. No, no, I have Elves to do that for me. Is that Mrs Bishop? Well, Mrs Bishop's one of them. Now, look, here's something uh, to put under your tree, you see, for being a good girl, eh? And, look, this is it, too. You put that there, and that says, I've seen Father Christmas at Crazy Cuts. No, they're not both mine. Uh, Sarah's is from a previous marriage. <laughs> she's a bit of a handful, but she's very sweet. Uh, no, this little fella just got out of bed the wrong side. Uh, you got to smile for your mummy, uh, are you? We're losing them. Where the hell has she got to? Liz. Oh, come on, sorry. Liz. Go on, go on. I'm going, I'm going. Get them before they go. That's Girls. It. Yeah. Now uh, then. Uh, these are corned beef and salad, uh, and these uh, are ham and turkey. Yeah. yeah. Uh, would you like me to get you a drink while I'm here? Yes. Yeah. 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 Julian. Desmond. Yes. There you are. Ooh, what are the buttons in here of them? Uh, yeah. Just take one and shut yeah. the face, right? Three halves a bit, 
two gin and tonics and two dry cherries. Yeah. So, now you're telling me that uh, the police are going to be your witnesses, no thanks. How many times do you want to The bold one hasn't fired you. Well, they sort it out on the insurance, weren't you? Look, you still don't believe it wasn't my fault, do you? You must admit, you're not exactly behaving as if you've struck at that lucky, you know what I mean? <laughs> Two pints, please, when you're ready, but... Just be a sec, Jim. The tax right. is picking us up from here. <laughs> I'll show Alfie how much a freebie can cost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Of course, you come with me. Oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just Tracy's putting me through the ringer at the moment. Two gin and tonics, spare, please. Uh, quickly. Jack, don't want to the bridge. Jack, don't want to the bridge. Right, right, sorry, excuse me. Well, you do say that mothers and daughters have least in common when they reach mid teens. I mean, if I had my time over again, our girl would have gone to a boarding school. If you would have had your time over again, I'd have asked to go to boarding school. <laughs> Where did you spring? You should be more loyal. Oh, I'm oh, I'm honestly, did you hear that, Beth? Hello, Mr. Sugden. Is Emily not well? I beg your pardon? Would you like to come in? Yes, thank you. Only she's meant to be babysitting. Oh, no, no, she's all right. She's all the way around. Oh. Uh, you look after Mrs. Platt's kiddies, don't you? Gail's, yeah. Why? What have I done wrong now? Oh, no, no. It's something to know, you know. Um, what is? Well, how well do you know this lodger of theirs, Carmel? Yes. I must say, I'm very flattered by all this. Good. You deserve it. Oh. Tracy, uh, can I relax or is all this leading somewhere? Can I think about that one? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course you can. I'd have cooked only have a lot of work on. Ah, uh, well, you won't find me complaining. Me neither. I just, um, <laughs> I'm a bit confused. I've a lousy temper. This is me trying to make up for it, Neil. Yeah, um, what about Denise? You say she's history. I believe you. Well, suddenly, just... She confirmed it. Oh, I see. What else did she say? That you're a decent bloke. Uh... That we make a good pair. And that I've no worries in her direction. Which is sort of what I was hoping to hear. Right, we're off. Bye. See ya. Hey, Deirdre, watch yourself with her. Don't worry. Well, I'll tell you what. Hi, Sally. Possibly can. You want to get back behind the wheel of a car and hit the roads again, so you do? Yeah. Your dad's right. Do it sooner. You'll just freak out. Aye, oh, and this time probably do it in a pedal car, will you? Oh, Model father. No, oh, come on. It was just a joke. I'll get around him. I'll give you the hand anyway. Gail, I've just got a really yeah, weird visit yes, from Carl. You Kelsey. deserve it. When aren't they? He asked me if Carmel had her head screwed on right. You know what? When she took the kids down to the grotto, he heard her saying that David was her child. Sally, you're taking this too far. That's what he said, Gail. I'm not making hey, it calm up. Calm down, will you? What's going on? Look, you're right. I don't like her. I think she's very odd. Oh. And I'm not the only one, Gail. And if you don't believe me, you go and ask Percy for yourself. Gail! Don't worry about it. Um, Come on, Kevin's a right mess. Look, it's not a mess at all. All you've got to do is produce your documents. You're a good driver, it's a one-off. I haven't got any documents. What do you mean? I failed my test, Kevin. Kevin, I don't want to stop here. Can we go somewhere else for a drink? What? I mean, the flaming car's not insured. Kev, Steve, Mike sent these over. Don't lose any sleep over it, all right? Oh, just look at the poor lad. His wife is a sheep. You could lose your job. You could get a ban. Will you tell me what's going on? Kev, just please, mate, say you bail me out. Oh, yeah. And how can I bail you out, eh? When you've already given the police a statement. Because I gave my name as Kevin Webster. I just don't want you to be upset. <laughs> About what? You've been through enough and you don't deserve it. Tracy, you're not in some kind of trouble, are you? Mark Redman. Mark? Well, what about him? What's he done? No, he's... Mark's dad, the one who died, isn't his dad. <laughs> Where did he get this? I was right. I wish I'd never started this now. Tracy! 
Mark's Mike Baldwin's son. <laughs> Mum came to the shop to pick me up. She realised she'd met Maggie before. Don't go! Dad! You know, I've really enjoyed myself, honestly. Oh, so did I, Audrey. <laughs> Thanks for asking me. Night, love. It's morning, actually, Audrey. Oh, yeah. Oh, James, and don't spoil the horses. <laughs> I want to talk to you. Oh, can you find the life? Sally that heard her in the supermarket. Mm. Passing our kids off for her own. Really weird thing to do that. Don't you think? No, Gail. Look, I'm tired. Anyway, it came from Percy the Plunker. <laughs> Neither of us should lose any sleep over it, should we? Don't think you're gonna make that up though. Mm. Do you? What are you trying to do? What's Tracy said? What do you think she said? She said what you wanted her to say. No, I'm What's not the matter idiot. with you? I think you must be really quite disturbed to stir up vicious rumours like that. Not by Ken. Our Tracy. You'd better stop this, or else I'm off back through that door. She'd already figured something was wrong. I told her so she wouldn't start inventing the rest, hoping she'd realise how important it was she kept her mouth shut, which obviously did me a lot of good. Look, I'm sorry, Ken. They're not vicious rumours. Mark Redman is Mike Baldwin's son. Yeah, you would have found out anyway if you and Maggie were as close as you seem. Does that bother you, Deirdre? I mean, you've known all this some time. I wonder if you've savoured the moment. I mean, why now? Why now? Just when Maggie and I are starting to make a go of it. Jealous? Of you and Maggie? Oh, come on. You could have told me quietly. You could have taken me aside and warned me. Listen, Ken, I wouldn't have told you at all because it's got absolutely nothing to do with me. I don't like this any more than you do. But it's the truth, and it has a bad habit of coming out. Oh, yeah, so uh, what else has Tracy heard about Mike Baldwin's adventure? Oh, that's Oh, it. no, no, for a woman so keen on the truth, you've been very economical with it. How many ideas, Ray? Oh, big day. Oh, touch wood. Could go either way, you know. It's odds on they'll have booked for Christmas already. That or I'll get left with all the uh, tight perms and skin complaints. You won't mind me saying, but, um, well, you've set up in the wrong place if you're going for your real salon. I mean, take me, I have to get mine done in town. Not anymore, you don't. I'm a model. Needs looking after. I thought you were a barmaid. Oh, well, I am. I'm between jobs. I see. That puts me somewhere between Vidal Sassoon and Teasy Weezy. Hiya! No, Kev, no! The accident wasn't Steve's fault. So you keep saying. But that's not the point anymore, is it, eh? You lied to us all about failing your test. Accident, fair dues. Anyone can have one. But then you went and lied to the police, given my name. And now you expect me to bail you out where you can get lost. Kev, look, all you have to do is produce your documents for me. I'll make it up to you. 
You know, if I believe one word of that, I would. I'd help you. But you're a born liar. Kevin. Well, he is. There must be something in his brain what stops him thinking twice before he opens his gob. Well, fine if it's only getting you up the creek. Well, this affects me. It affects my life. And you better get it sorted. What are you like? See you later, then. He's more worried about what his dad'll say than getting prosecuted. Well, what if Kevin gave him his driving license? Couldn't Steve present those documents to the police? No, his signature wouldn't match the one on Kev's license. <sighs> Come on, love, or we're going to be late for our appointment. I know Steve's a prat, but they'll really clean him for this one. Fat love, I'm sorry. I can't concentrate. Deirdre, could you take over here, please? I've got this banging headache. Good night, last night, then. I stayed sober. Every second drink she had were mine. I told you to go steady. We've got walks done Wednesday. Oh, you can shove that. You didn't come with me last night, so I'm not doing you any favours. What? Well, I bought the tickets. Yeah, well, we got the tickets for last night. Didn't stop you pulling out, did it? Well, you didn't have to go by yourself. <sighs> Might just as well have done, honestly. Deirdre, we like a dishcloth all night. Come and dance, I said. <sighs> Wish I hadn't bothered. She put the oogie into boogie, I swear that. Them two fellas were so embarrassed. What fellas? Oh, you know. The more she had, the more it were like a flipping dating agency. I didn't know where to put myself. Under the table's the best bet when Audrey starts. I could have just done without it right now. Domestics? Not mine. Never mine. Well, nip round later if you fancy a shoulder. I'm giving myself the afternoon off. Oi. Ah, uh, no bet. I don't think so. To yourself. How's it going, Mike? Oh, I'm doing fine. The Rovers? Never better. Good. See ya. Yeah, pack it up my cigars, please, dearie. Deirdre? These are never edible. Sorry, Percy, what did you say? These puddings. Just feel them, they're dry. They're well past it. The old talks of that. How can puddings be past it, the 60% blooming alcohol? Talking of which, what were you two doing last night? Um, no, I mean it, they're dry. Don't buy them, then. Oh, I won't. Well, I'm not counting the chicken, but we're not doing too badly. Takings are generally up about 100 quid a day. How do you manage that when you're giving booze away? Two for the price of one. Well, you know what they like round here? Free out and they'd start a stampede. We laid butties on. Well, that must cut into your profit, surely. I mean, how long can you keep that up? Well, between me, you and the bread man, about as long as a couple of loaves last. How's it going across road? Lousy. People just aren't spending like they used to. Good. Oh, thank you. Oh, I'm thinking of treating myself. Can you manage an hour or two off? Hey, do you know, I'd give anything for somebody to shampoo my hair for me. Right. Hey, I beg your pardon. Well, you are careful about what you cook, aren't you? Sell by dates and all that. Why? What have you found? Hiya. I'll have large scotch and whatever you want. Oh, thanks. I'll have a week in coffee. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, how's that uh, smart car of yours, mate? Ah, it's a shocker, isn't it? How these uh, high-performance cars dent just like any other. Yeah, I know. Uh, from the side, it looks like a very expensive satellite dish. I mean, I'd be proud if I had one. Season's greetings to you, too. Booked in for some very expensive repairs at a very expensive body repair shop, for your information. Oh, I like that. He's got a garage and he ships it somewhere else. I mean, it looks good for the rest of us, doesn't well, it? Well, you never know. A bit of a wangle. I might get a new stereo fitted on the insurance. Oh. Hey, no wonder our flipping premiums are up. Excuse me. Right. Look, just keep out of his way and don't wind him up by pestering. Look, he won't change his mind. Look, I know him better than you do. I come out of Iceland faster. Get around him. Hiya, uh, Hiya. three pints of lager and half a lager and whatever you're having. Just a week in Corfu. <laughs> oh, I get home. Look, as far as I know, Percy, you can keep Christmas puddings for years. But not for a lifetime. What after that? The rock hard are these. Well, look, they're bound to go off sometime. Well, there you are, then. You want supporting. Hey, I never said that. And what happens if the copper on the desk is the same guy who stopped to me and I get caught? It's not a traffic offence. It's criminal. It's fraud. 
They'll do me for it. You wouldn't put a traffic cop on the desk. What? You on his side as well now, are you? I'm not on anybody's side, Kev. But the police aren't going to ask any questions if you just walk in there with your papers. It's a formality. You fill in the statement, sign the sheet, and you walk out. I don't, because I'm not. Do you know, Kevin, you're getting right up my nose. It wasn't long back you were in exactly the same situation with Mark Casey. Or have you forgotten about that? You at school? Ah, <coughs> oh, cheers, good lad. Ah, oh, cheers. <coughs> Oi, before you take the top off that, whip my car round to Edmunds, will you? There's a courtesy car waiting for me. No, you're right, Mike. I'll do it. Steve's had a drink. No, he hasn't. That's his first. He just walked in. Here, they're expecting you. Well, what the hell's wrong with you? I can't, mate. I haven't got a licence. Look, mate, we're uh, trying to sort this out at the moment. Yeah, give us a key. I'll take it. You lied to me, didn't you, about passing your test? Is that what you're trying to tell me? And you've been driving my vans and my car without a licence? Then you are fired. Get your stuff and clear out of that factory now. Another large scotch, please, Rachel. <laughs> Could you let it get this far, Maggie? Something as important as that? I mean, Mike Baldwin, for God's sake! Does Mark know? What? From Tracy. Has Tracy said anything? Oh, what do I know? Oh, God! You'll have to make them promise, Ken. To be very honest with you, Maggie, I'm in no frame of mind to do you any favours right now. I mean, how could you? We've come this far. How could you? Ken, I'm sorry, but I, I don't actually see that my past's got anything to do with you. I, mean, I haven't interrogated you about Deirdre. I haven't rooted around looking for Wendy Crozier's personal profile. When Mark was born, I was a single parent. Mike offered me a way out. He wanted to marry me with all the comforts. But I said no. I didn't want him, and I didn't trust him. I'd known Harry a long time, and, and he took the pair of us on, and he gave us a decent life. I pushed the name Baldwin to the back, and I... I have pretended that he disappeared. There have been so many times since Harry died when I wanted to tell Mark. But Mike wasn't his father. It was Harry who brought him up. Harry who made him into the kid he is. You have to respect that much effort, Ken. You mustn't tell Mark. Uh, I have no intentions. Thanks. Look, I'm sorry. All the, all the melodrama, bringing you out of work. But you can't imagine how difficult this is for me, Maggie. Mike Baldwin is not just somebody I don't like. <sighs> About ten years ago, he tried to take Deirdre away from me. What? Six years ago, he married my daughter, Susan. Well, I've never believed for one minute he did that because he loved her. He did that because... But I hate him! I wanted to kill him! I'd no idea. I'm, I'm so sorry. But well, the horrible thing about all this is I just don't know where it leaves us. I'm really not sure I can go on, Maggie. Not now. Now, come on, truthfully. Did he tell you that he failed his test? Not until after the accident, no. And only then because he gave my name to the police. He what? He wants me to produce my documents to tie up the police report. <laughs> Well, the sooner he's off our back, the better. Get him out of that factory unit by this afternoon. Let the police deal with it. Yeah, well, that's where you come unstuck, innit? Yeah, how do you mean? No documents. Means the insurance is void. Well, it's not my fault, is it? According to law, it is, yeah. You let someone drive your car, it's up to you to make sure they're covered for it. Well, tell him he's covered by MVB motor policy. You're not any driver. No. Not on a provisional licence. Not unless you've got a qualified driver in the car with you which there wasn't at the time of the accident. Oh, for Christ's sake. Which leaves you standing the cost of the repairs, which is going to be, what, 1,200 quid? You've got to be joking. 
Look, get down to Nick with all those documents, right? Have a word with McDonald and make sure you know everything about that accident in case they ask you. And for God's sake, keep your call. Or we're all in it. Aren't you forgetting something here, mate? What? I could end up in court for this by Monday. Oh, for Christ's sake, what is this? What do you want, a backhander? Just give Steve his job back. On your bike. Look, you're not coming out this smelling of roses. What favours do you owe him? What favours do I owe you? Well, it's a, it's a wedding at St Mary's. Will you ask Sandra to double-check that order? Well, I'm tied up at home and um, I won't be back in this afternoon. Thanks, Katie. She's a good worker, Tracy. I wonder if she knows what she's done. Again, this isn't about us. No, no, of course it isn't. But that doesn't alter things. I barely made a turn in my life and that man hasn't been an obstacle. I thought you were a clean break. I mean, short of moving out of Weatherfield, leaving my family, Short of destroying him, I just feel like he's going to be round every corner. Don't you understand that? Well, Mark's 11. Of course I do. Okay, look, I'm really, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry, but I think we ought to stop now. Just stop before he makes things worse. I just can't stop what we've been doing for the last few months. I can't just switch off. Can you? He's no idea we're even having this conversation about him. He's not that clever. Be realistic, Ken. Mom? <laughs> What's going on? What do you think? Ah, oh, it looks lovely, Carmel. Yeah, yeah, it does. They usually take too much off. What do I owe you, Fiona? Well, it would be eight, but with discount, just call it a fiver. Well, I hope he appreciates it. Sorry? Your boyfriend, the fella you were talking about. Mm. You'd better. You're very lucky, I'm telling you. I expected a steady trickle. Fiona had they got half an hour's lunch break. A little tip. Don't give credit, whatever you do. You wouldn't see Vera Duckworth for dust if she got a permontic. Mm. I learnt that lesson long back. This is ready. Are you? You're the boss. Oh, I warned you. You didn't. I'm just waiting on Mrs Howard's colour. Anything I can do in here? Yeah, get a coffee for bet. Take milk or sugar bet. Just a sick note, I think. Webster. So you're Webster. Yeah, Kevin Webster, 13 Coronation Street. And it's just to produce your documents? Yeah. Next J6, eh? Eight stretch. You're a lucky bloke. It's not mine. That's the gaffers. Uh, registered under Mike Baldwin. Ooh, and he's still your boss? Yeah. Even luckier. Right. Insurance. MVB Motors Traders Insurance. Driving licence. Seems pretty straightforward to me. <sighs> Too many. Whose fault is that? One, two. You ask her. No, you ask her. One, You're the one that's bothered by it. Well, aren't you? Well, to be honest, no, no. Catch. <sighs> Sorry. All right. Carmel. So, I'll take these ones. <laughs> you know when you took the kids to Santa's Grotto? Yeah. Oh, get stuck in. Well, I know this is going to sound off the wall, David, but. Did you say they were your yeah. kids? Yeah. Oh, it was just some nosy woman. If I'd said I was the babysitter, she'd have given me a ten-minute lecture on childcare, you know, the type. So I just said they were mine to shut her up. Why? Oh, no reason. I was just curious. Here we go. Here we go. 
Huh? You should be able to do this by now, you. you well, um, <clears throat> thanks for the compliment. You what? Me hair. I've had a cut and you've said nothing. Oh, yeah, sorry, Carmel. Yeah. Well, looks, looks fab. It's no good saying that now. I've just prompted you. No, yeah, well, honestly, it looks great. Honestly. <laughs> I like it. Oh, Gail, I'll help you with those. about them pudding of yours. They're well out of order. You are? Mm. Yeah, would you like a drink first? I'll have half a bit. Oh. Uh, half a bit, please. I'm a pint, save my legs off. Oh. Fancy sandwich? No, lads, you drink. You see, what it is, the Christmas pudding shelf life is about three years, and that's pushing it. They should be supple, they should be moist. Yeah, listen, first, Andy, you get your half a bit, and I get a lecture, but not both. You can't have your cake and eat it. Hey, listen, I'm not that thirsty, and it's not just me I'm thinking about, you know. No? Listen, those puddings are a bargain already. It's just you who wants to get more off than other people do. That's all, Percy. I beg your pardon. Salmonella, that's what I'm talking about, and I'm not the only one that's worried. Folks have passed remarks. What for? Because I don't want to hear any more about it, all right? Cheers, Kev. No, you owe me two. You've got your job back as well. Are you kidding? No. Cheers, buddy. How did that happen? I want to have a word with you. Come here a minute. You must have more lives than a flaming cat, you. Hey, and get yourself straightened out. Put in for your test again, sharpish. So I uh, shouldn't expect any aggro from the insurance company then. No. I'll just double check the papers and ask me to sign the sheet. Hey, good lad. Rackle, what you can have? Uh, well, the double scotch. Oh. <laughs> I'll have a pint. A uh, pint of large scotch. Here, what have you been saying about my stock? Eh? Environmental health. Because you've got a nerve, you know. If this place was run right, you'd be wearing a hat where it was serving sandwiches. Listen, I haven't said anything. Those puddings have got a legitimate sell-by date. I don't stamp them on myself in the back, you know. Betty, what's going on? Look, Alf, I swear. Look, I haven't said anything. All right, you slag me off, I'll slag you off. You take your chickens from the wholesale on a Tuesday. They don't show up with your men until Friday. Will you shut your gob and tell me what this is all about? All right, all right. It's bad enough here without any slander. I'll eat one of the puddings... With... That's what I'll do. I'll eat one of the puddings myself and you can stand and watch me. Now, how does that suit you? Sorry about love, but I haven't said a word. Yes, well, you ought to be very careful you haven't said a word to in future. Come on, Betty. Well, I don't think it's better than... Cheers. Yeah. You do realise that what you did was above and beyond the call of duty, don't you? What? Well, if I'd have sacked Steve, the law would have taken care of it. Yeah. Instead of that, Kevin Webster jumped to the rescue. You just surprised me a bit, that's all. Being bent. What are you talking about? Well, a couple of months back, you wouldn't even doctor an invoice. Yeah, well, that was different, wasn't it? Too damn right it was. Not so serious, either. I mean, that was just, uh, bending the books, Look, not breaking the law. I did this to save your neck as well as Steve's, you know. Oh, don't apologise, Kevin, mate. I think I prefer you being a bit bent. You're more fun to be with. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Of course it's not your fault. I'm sorry. Electrical impulse transmitted from the affected muscle leaps the synaptic gap in the cerebral cortex. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Must be time for another coffee. Uh, you had one not half an hour ago. Well, I've got a very high caffeine threshold, mate, you know. It's a well-known medical condition. It's not good for you anyway, too yeah. much. All right, sister, can I carry on with your book? You know, we could have had little David here today with us working at home. Oh, yeah. Well, if we had, firstly, we'd have got none of that work done. And second, we'd have put Sally's nose out, wouldn't we? 
I mean, with Christmas coming up and everything, she needs as much cash as she can get. Mmm, Christmas. Well, what about it? I've just been thinking, having to face Michael when I go back home. Well, ignore him. I thought you were going to see your family. It's not that easy. It's very claustrophobic there. In fact, I'm not looking forward to going back at all. Oh, well, that is a shame. No, not really. I suppose it's just part of growing up, coming over here, making new friends, new life. Well, babysitting for our lot. It's all from home for you, isn't it? Ah, I love it. They're great kids. I'm very happy here. Yeah, very good. Well, I don't think I'll be very happy if I don't get this assignment finished today. <laughs> I think I'll be in a fit state tomorrow. Why not? Oh, it's the Porter's Christmas bash, isn't it? In the hospital. <laughs> Is it that bad? Oh, well, no, not really. You can normally sober up by Christmas. New Year, <laughs> the latest, you know. He's eating a whole Christmas pudding. Yeah, in the Rovers this dinner. How busy? I hope so. I've got a fiver on him. I thought it ever for. Because his mouth almighty, isn't he? He probably scoffed a lot in one. I think Mavis meant, what is Alf showing off his gastronomic talents for in public? Well, apparently yesterday, Percy sugged and slagged off one of Alf's puddings or something, said they were past it. So, naturally, Alf's defending his puddings on her. Oh, well, I think that's stupid. Well, it's either that or he gets stuck with the grosser, rotting puddings, doesn't he? Honestly, what some people will do. Well, what would you do, Mavis, if somebody slagged off your next batch of Turkish delight? Well, I certainly wouldn't eat a whole box just to prove them wrong. I would. I love Turkish delight. Hey, I'll buy your box out of my winnings. Oh. <laughs> well, really. Wow. Well, I think it's a pity folk have nothing better to do than go and just go up at other people making fools of themselves. Oh, absolutely. Are you going for your dinner? Yes, I thought I'd just nip over to the Rovers and see what's going down, as they say. Oh, don't sell all them Turkish delight. Plenty more custard. Right, any more bets? Any more bets? Now, five to one, he doesn't eat. Is there a time limit? No, it's not a race. It's as if it's fit for human consumption, and I don't believe it is. Yeah, well, I'll prove it won't, I, Mr. Noel. Right, any more bets? Now, any more bets? <laughs> hey, if there's no time limit, he could take all day. Right, ten to one, he doesn't finish it then. Percy, I'll give you twenty to one. I never bet. No, because you know you'll lose, that's why. Now, pay attention. Oh. Yeah. Never eat it, Dougie, lad. Dougie, you'll never finish that, I'm telling you. Look at the size of it. Is uh, Gail going to this Porsche's party with you? You must be joking. Why? Well, last year we had a stripping policewoman, bedpan drinking competition, Aww. get the idea. It's all right, we use best bits, so don't panic. Give us some credit. Does she not mind you going to places like that on your own? Um, well, she'd sooner I went on my own than with her. She wouldn't be seen dead at that place. She's got no spirit of adventure, as our girl. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's true. Walking down the middle of the road at midnight with a bedpan on her head, singing Delilah at the top of her voice, does night for her, hey? Can you credit that? There's a lot of drunkenness at home. I think it's because people are unhappy. Oh, yeah. Well, not while they're drunk, they're not, are they? Yep, exactly. Mm. It's very sad. Mm. The egg's done yet. I want them starving. Yeah, yeah, they're done now. Here you go. Very nice. Hope it's all right. Yeah, looks great, that. Do credit to Jim's calf. Well, I get a lot of practice at home, don't I? Mm. Do you know, you'll make some lucky kids a wonderful mother one day, Carmel. Oh, I don't think I'll ever get married. You're a bitch. Why not? I'm very choosy. Oh, well, you do, right. There's some very funny fellas about, you know. Watch out for those with bedpans under it. <laughs> Come on, Al! And leave it, Alf, you proved your point. Alf, you're going to make yourself sick. It's a pudding that'll make him sick. <laughs> yes, now, <laughs> fella. <laughs> Thank you. They always have to prove something. Oh, they like little kids, aren't they? What the sweet, though, bless them. Well, Percy, point proved, all right? How do you know it were one of your puddings, any row? Well, it was. I bought it from our shop and I steamed it myself. Yes, yeah, so there's plenty more where that came from, so don't go swanning off down to better by speech and stuff. Support your local right. shop. Uh, well, targets are in our sights normally. One more little push and better by Weatherfield could win the Christmas sales award. I'm surprised we're doing this well with this recession on. Oh, best time of year is this. Folk have to eat and they don't like to stint at Christmas. Oh, yes, food retailing. We've chosen the right profession, Norman. <laughs> Christmas, Christmas. I love it. Remind me of when I was a nipper. Nose pressed up against the lighting shop window. Eyes like gobstoppers. In fact, I think it was then I had the calling, you know, to go into the retailing profession. <laughs> well, when it comes to Christmas, I uh, rather agree with Scrooge. Humbug. Huh? 
why the cynicism, Norman? Hey, cut. Young man like you. Whole future ahead of you. Looking forward to your first Christmas as a homeowner. Yeah, carving a turkey on my own. Oh, I see. Miss Freeman has laid plans of her own, has she? <sighs> yeah, Neil. <laughs> Freeman be named free woman by nature, that one. I mean, I'll executive wife material, is she? So you're well out of that. But I shall be giving you a toast to Norman on Christmas Day. Uh, two absent friends. <laughs> right, where are you going? Well, I shall be laying on the full traditional English fare this year. Mm. I can't decide between a haunch of venison, actually, or... Uh... Uh, uh, who's this for, then? Oh, I'm afraid that information must remain confidential for the time being, Norman. Yes, but suffice to say, I have uh, laid plans. Right, seven more days to go. So one more little push, off you go. And remember, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Soccer video game for Nicker. Uh, huh? A lovely doll for Sarah Louise. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, what's that? Uh, just a little something for me. You've got umpteen handbags already. What do you want another one for? It's not a handbag, Alf. It's a clutch bag. Of course, it won't go with anything I've got, but uh, perhaps I'll find a little something in the sale there. Oh, come on, it's no use you touching. I've saved you from traipsing round the shops, haven't I? You know how much you hate that. Oh, yes, you'll marty yourself for me to go shopping. But you won't go to Christmas do for warts, will you? Yes, well, if you keep pulling a face like that, I certainly won't Yeah, go. well, you said you weren't. Well, I don't know, when I was shopping, I don't know, with all the decorations and that, I thought, well, it is Christmas, a season of goodwill, I should go. Yeah. Even if they are a lot of boring old shocking. Look, I don't want you mithering all night. Do you want me to come or not? Yeah, go on then. Right. <clears throat> you can have your present then. Oh. Ta da! It's a cummerbund. I know what it is. It's a bit garish, isn't it? Oh, come on, Alfie. Live a little. Cut a bit of a dash for once. Well, I could always put it in for auction for charity, can't I? Oh, now. What's this I found? It's a good job I saw this, isn't it, eh? Hmm? Oh, and look. Perfect match for my new little clutch bag. I'm just off out. Please, Tracy, can you wait for five minutes? This is very important. This must be about Maggie Redmond. Well, actually, it's more about Mark, but yes, Maggie's very concerned. Can I sit down? Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, Ken, you can tell Maggie she's got no need to worry because Tracy and I are not going to say anything to anyone, are we? Why? What's the big secret? Well, Mark still believes that Harry Redman was his real father. Well, he wasn't. Mike Baldwin is. Yes, but Maggie doesn't want Mark to know that. Why not? I knew who my real father is. Yeah, because your dad and me decided that you ought to know. And it wasn't an easy decision, believe me. We didn't know how you'd react. It turned out OK. In the end. Yes, but it might not have done, and that's what Maggie's worried about. She doesn't know how Mark will take it. Well, if I was Mark, I'd want to know. I did, didn't I? And that's why you told me, because I kept pestering. Yes, but Mark doesn't suspect anything, Tracy, and that's the difference. In any case, it's up to Maggie how and when she tells him, isn't it? It's her business, not ours. It's also Mike Baldwin's. He might tell Mark. Yeah, well, he's made an arrangement not to, though I wouldn't put anything past that snake. Why do you always go on about Mike Baldwin? What's the oh. matter with him? Look, the point is, Tracy, you are not to say anything to anyone. Please. Your dad's right. It's not our business. I know. I'm not an idiot. All right, so that's agreed then, is it, Tracy? Not a word to anyone. Please. I've said yes, haven't I? Now stop it. It's too tight. Test in, test in. One, two. Stretch fabric. One, two. You've eaten too much, that's all. I mean, I said you should have had the fish. Now, what did I say? <sighs> Don't go on about it. Well, I did say it, didn't I? Look, it's Christmas. You don't come to a do like this and starve. Especially not at these prices. Well, it's for charity, you keep saying. Testing, testing. Uh, one, two, and you're three. not having any pudding, one, two, either. Two, well, I can have a two. bit. Oh, Alf, you've just been complaining that you've eaten too much. I have not. It's this plumbing thing. It's come on, Oh, I'm really? It's too tight. I'm taking it off. Not for Amy. me, oh, Thank you. Oh. Go on, then. Kill yourself, eat yourself to death, see if I can. Thank you. But if you do eat that and you're up all night, don't come whining to me. Will you keep your voice down? Oh, I shouldn't have come. I mean, you're hopeless. Oh, oh. Al. Oh. Alf? Oh. God, oh. Al! Oh. Al, please, he's having oh. a heart attack. Get oh. an ambulance, get an ambulance, oh. please! Oh. Alf, there. Oh. 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 
I've had two. <laughs> so who's counting? Martin's out living it up. Why shouldn't we? I hardly drink at all, really. <laughs> Hello? Ma'am? What is it? What's wrong? Ma'am, slow down. I can't understand you. What? Alf. When? How is he? Yes, yes, of course I will. Look, just stay there, will you? Just stay there, ma'am. I'll be right with you. Oh. Is it your father-in-law? Alf, oh, yeah, he's had a heart attack. Uh, my mum's at the hospital with him, but she's hysterical. I'll have to go to him. Well, of course, that's all right. I, I'm here. I look after the kids. I wonder if Don's in. The car's there. I'm asking to give me a lift. Well, don't worry about anything here. I'll take care of everything. Thanks, Carmel. You're a treasure. No, it's true. Apple and orange, that's all we got in our Christmas stocking when we were kids. Yeah. I know, yeah. You lived in a shoebox in the gutter, didn't you? A shoebox? You were lucky. We had to live in a hole in the ground covered with a sheet of tarpaulin. Are we, we happy? No. no. Go on, scoff. You don't know you're born these days. You what? There'll be nothing filling the stockings in my house this Christmas. Yeah, no, mine. The only bed around will be headless, browned off with its legs stuck at the bottom. Perfect match for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Right. Well, that's me home to bed and my Turkish delight. <laughs> oh, thanks. Too so. sweet to me. <laughs> Not that man that runs a kebab shop in Inkerman Street. Give over. Yeah, well, I've been on my feet all day. Mm -hmm. Still, can't complain. I've made a good start. Touch wood. Touch wood. And nobody said running your own business was easy. No, they didn't. But there's not like being your own boss, is there? No men bossing you around. Oh, they're not all bad. I know I'll miss my Ted. We never had a Christmas together. A blessing, I suppose. Less memories for me to mope over. Come on. Ah, could I have quite a word with you? Well, if it's short. Oh, yes. I'll see you tomorrow, love. Yeah. Night, love. Um, look, I'm mindful of your circumstances. Mm -hmm. And the particular time of year. I was yeah. just wondering, as I'm yeah. planning a rather special, traditional sort of Christmas. Well, I was just wondering if you're doing me the you, great honour. Are you, are you, are you asking me for Christmas dinner? Yes, yes, I am in a nutshell, Rita. Well, that's very, very kind of you, but uh, uh, sorry, no, ta. Oh well, why don't you sleep on it, don't? You? Well, I'm, I'm not sleeping much anyway these days, so the answer's still be no, ta. Yes, but no. Deirdre actually told Tracy in the first place. Not out of malice, if that's what you're thinking. No? No. No, it was a mistake. She thought she was protecting me. She knows how I feel about Borden. Yeah, but what about Tracy? I mean, she's only young. She could blurt it oh, out no. without thinking. No, no. A year ago, maybe. But Tracy's been through a lot these past few years. A breakup, a divorce. It was all very nasty, but she came through it remarkably well. She's grown up a lot more than I give him the credit for. Mark thought the world of his dad, of Harry. Yeah, but I, I knew I'd have to tell him the truth sometime. Mike Baldwin only said he'd stay away until Mark was 18. But I wanted time to prepare him for it, Ken. He took Harry's death very hard, and I'm terrified of him getting another knock so soon. Don't worry. Nobody's going to say anything. There you go. It has your change, kid. Pint, please, Jack. Right, sir. Is Alf in? No, I'm not seeing it tonight. I wanted to buy him a pint out of me winnings. Oh, yeah. The great pudding eating. You can buy me a drink, it's my money. Now, the secret of being a good bookie, Jack, is to make a straight book. Is that right, Des? Oh, absolutely. Alf was odds on favourite in a one-horse race. You don't take bets on that. I only took one ease. <laughs> <laughs> Did he want something, Reg? Yes. I wanted to engineer a quiet word bet, perhaps in the back. Say your piece. Well, I couldn't help noticing that um, something was missing. I just wondered if Alec would be joining you for the Christmas festivities. Is that any of your business? Well, I just thought it was sad. Very, very sad, particularly this time of year. You know, the season of love and goodwill to all men. Not all? No, well, 
Life goes on, doesn't it? Nespa. But uh, get out and enjoy yourself. That's my motto. Tough when you're on a pub. Exactly, exactly. Because on Christmas Day, here you'll be. No time for yourself, hardly any time to cook. And I thought, well, if you just fancied coming round to my little pied de terre, because I'm branching out this year, I thought uh, I could have a little goose, perhaps. I've had enough of them to last me a lifetime. No thanks, Reg. <laughs> oh, it's awful. Come on. It's really terrible. So to think. But when we sat at dinner, he was stuffing himself. I mean, the last thing I said, I mean, the last thing I said was, go on, kill yourself. You didn't mean it, love. No, but it was the last thing I you said. You didn't mean it enough. No, you didn't But it was the last it. thing he heard. No, come on now. You're being soft. Anything happens to him, it won't. I'll never forgive myself. It's gonna be all right, Mum. Oh, because I love him. Of course I love him. I know you do. And Alf knows you do. No, I'm horrible to him. Now you're just being soft. No, now. I am. I'm horrible. I mean, I'm always moaning and being sarcastic and spending his money. But, oh dear, I don't know what I'll do with that. Mrs. Roberts. Where's Alf? I want to see him. He's sleeping. He's stable now and in no pain. The best thing that you can do is to go home. No. And get some rest. Was it a heart attack? No, no, I don't think so. Yes, of course it was. I was there. Mum. But as he's had one before, we want to keep him in for some tests tomorrow. We'll know more then. He was so poorly. I mean, he was dying. Uh, there's something you're not telling me. No, no, I promise you. Yes, there is. There's something wrong. I know there is. Please, go home. Get some rest. Thank you, Doctor. Oh, just look after him, will you, please? Sit down. Oh, sit down. I'll go and ring for a taxi. Don't leave me, girl. Please, don't leave me. I'm just ringing for a taxi. Love you. Would you stay with me just tonight? Don't leave me on my own, just in case anything happens to him in the night. I won't leave you. I'll ring Martin from your house. Do you know if anything happens to him? Well, I'd better go before my car turns into a pumpkin. <laughs> oh, roll on Christmas. The end of term is always mayhem. What are you doing for Christmas? No plans. You're not spending it with Deirdre and Tracy? No, no, that's long gone. Really? Yeah. It took a long time. And I didn't really know I'd accepted it until I realised how I felt about you. Um, I know it doesn't sound very exciting, but would you like to spend Christmas with us? Oh, that's the most exciting offer I've had in <laughs> years. <laughs> but what will Mark say? Oh, Mark will be all right. He'll be around his friends. He always is. Oh, it uh, gets more exciting by the minute. Behave. You're my son's school teacher, respectable pillar of society. Well, you could try bribing me to give him better marks. <laughs> you out. <laughs> um, how about dinner tomorrow night? Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, Mark's staying overnight at Friends. Right. I'll cook my flat. Oh, in Coronation Street. It's all right. There's nothing to worry about. Everything's sorted. It's all right, Gil. I'd only just gone to bed. Is Martin? Oh, no, no. He's not back yet. Oh, how's your father-in-law? Out of danger, please. Good. But they're keeping him in overnight. Oh, well, they will in case he has a relapse. Anyway, I'm staying with my mum tonight. At your mum's? Yeah, she's very upset. Oh, well, she will be. Poor woman. It must be terrible for her. Uh, will I leave a note for Martin, then? Please. I'll be back tomorrow morning. Right, I'll do that. And don't worry about anything here. It's fine. All little angels are fast asleep. <laughs> Ah, it's no trouble. Just you look after your mammy. Thanks. Bye now. Bye. 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 <laughs> 
See you, mate. So, uh, uh, What's going on? Shh. Hang on a minute. Where's Gail? It's just Sarah Louise wants her breakfast. It's all right. I'll see to her. Hey! How you flaming that woman? Keep me fucking stuff. Where's Gail? Come on, where's Gail? I'll tell you later. You just get back into bed and I'll bring you up a cup of coffee. Yeah, you get over there. Hey, puppy. OK, you go and watch TV and I'll make you breakfast in a minute, OK? Yes, Mama. Um, well, I'll tell you when I come down. All right. Come on, come here. Where's Gail, eh? It's all very simple. Alf was taken poorly, so she spent the night with her mother. <laughs> now, why don't you get back into bed and let me see to the children? Thanks, Lobby. Thanks for stopping with me. Oh, it's what daughters are for. How do you feel? Oh, I thought we'd lost him. I thought that were it. Oh, God knows what I'd have done. Are you sure you're OK? Yeah, I'll be all right after I've had someone to eat. i better tell Deirdre. It's OK. I'll tell her. You get off her. Oh, will you? Listen, I'll tell her I'll pop into the shop on my way back to the hospital, all right? OK. Oh. Thanks, Lovely. Bye. Bye. Oh, how is he? Well, 
much as serious as it was last time. Is it is hard? No, no, not this time. No, they've done some more tests. I reckon it might be acute indigestion. We're not sure. It couldn't be connected with that daft stunt he pulled yesterday, could it? What stunt's that? Well, he ate one of those puddings all in one go in the Rovers. What? Whatever for? <laughs> it's a long story. Doesn't Audrey know? Uh, no, I don't think he mentioned that. Mm. Any news of Councillor Roberts? Well, he's better than he was, but they're keeping him in. You know, I haven't slept a wink. Well, he's out of danger. And uh, Mrs Roberts? She's gone home for a couple of hours and she said to say she'll be in later. Well, I won't take up any more of your time. I didn't think he'd be so concerned. Not exactly bosom buddies, are they? It was Percy Golden Alf that made him eat the pudding. I don't think I want to hear this story, no. Anyway, I've not got time. I better get home and see what's going on there. Oh, Martin will have everything under control. Martin, you're joking. He was out boozing last night. No, no, it was Carmel that got landed. Uh, which reminds me, um, I'll have a small box of those chocolates. Oh. Vicky, you come and get your breakfast. I'm watching telly. We'll switch it off and come and get it. I'm watching something. Look! What do you do, as I tell you, hey? Breath's horrible, it stinks. Come on, get your breakfast. Good morning, everyone. How are we all? Did you have a good time last night, Martin? He's got a hangover. He's gross. Did you ever see a face on him like that? Old Mr. Grumpy Guts, what is he? Old Mr. Grumpy Guts. Now then, who's for coffee? I think Martin will be having his black, don't you? Come on. Just what do you think they're up to, hey? I hope you're not always going to be like this in the morning. Hello! Hi, Hello, 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 darling! Hi, everybody! Hi, Hello. Hello, sweetheart! Oh, oh, How's you Alf? Oh, oh, it's a lot better. Oh. I'm sorry about last night. I don't know what I've done without you. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's very kind. There's no need, really. And what sort of a state was he in last night? Oh, well, I was in bed when he got in, wasn't I? <laughs> Well, you two get off to college. I'll see to the kids. Coming, Martin? Uh, no, no, I'll be in later. What shall I say? I'll just tell him I'll be in later, OK? Oh, take a notice of him. He's always like that when he's had too much to drink. <laughs> That's all right. I'm thick-skinned. I'll see you later, Martin. Oh. Bye, everyone. Oh. All right, did you miss me? Oh, God. Think you better go back to bed. Well, I know you'll think I'm daft, as if I Oh, go on. I know you will. Try me. Well, I bought Harry a little stocking to hang up in his cage. <laughs> you puddle. You see, I knew you'd say that. Well, what's Santa going to put in his stocking? I'm not going to tell you. You'll only put four. Oh, now, come on, Mavis. Give us a smile. Well, it wouldn't do for us all to be alike. No. Say that again. A flaming disaster. Yes, Emily. You've not seen Mr. Sugden, have you? We're supposed to be icing the cake this morning. I daren't start without him. Everything has to be done his way. Well, no, I haven't. Mavis, have you seen Percy this morning? No, I haven't. Oh, has the knack of making me feel redundant in my own kitchen. <laughs> oh, Derek does that. I can't go near him when he's doing his biryani. Well, not until the washing up. Oh, Mr. Sugden's an expert on washing up as well. Apparently, I've been doing it wrong all my life. Oh, <laughs> so I take it you won't be making the gravy on Christmas Day. By the way, you're welcome to come for dinner. That is if you're not booked up. Oh, that's very kind of you, Emily, but my diary's full up. Oh, well, you know you're welcome. You won't even have to wash up. Oh, thanks, <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, Emily. So we're not that daft that you don't mind sharing our table. Oh, to tell the truth, Mavis, I haven't made up my mind. I'm still hoping Jenny might get in touch. Look, Kit, if it's inconvenient, shut the shop for an hour and go home for your dinner. Serve him right if he loses a bit of crust. Listen, don't worry. You get off to the hospital. Well, hurt yourself to some balm cakes, biscuits, anything. I mean, open a bottle of sherry if you like. I don't mind. Did you get any sleep? Oh, but I had Percy sucked him round, didn't I? You'll never guess where he was telling me. Ah, uh, I think I will. Do you know, I think I forgot him a few bar me. No, I don't think so. <sighs> oh, well, this is. Oh, it's ill live. Oh, is that then? The puddings? Mm. Well, I'm not buying one. It's hardly good advert, is <laughs> it? <laughs> Mind you have to watch me wait, I dare say, to just be a low fat yogurt and a fresh apple. Oh, well. Anyway, tell him we're all asking after him. <laughs> don't worry. I will. Ta da! Where's she going with that pudding? I shudder to think.
Have you had somewhere to eat? It's just a glass of milk. They're looking after you, the nurses. Oh, my. The wonderful. What's happened to him? <gasps> oh, that reminds me. I brought you some. Oh, you shouldn't have bothered on. What you got there? Look, give it here. Look, there's folk watching. I had a visit from Percy Sugden. Look, put it away. Hide it. He said you like these. In fact, he said you could eat these all in one go. Is that right? I'm sorry, yes, I did something very stupid. I know that. Mm. Well, I thought I'd bring it and show it to that doctor, the one that's doing all those tests on you to find out what's wrong. Happens when he sees this, he'll get a better idea. Don't you dare. Look, give it here. <laughs> anyway, I can't stop long because there are only five and a half shopping days to Christmas and it looks like I've got to do it all on my own. Off! What are you doing, your wallet? Look, all my credit cards are in there. Why no? Well, you're not going to need it in here, are you? Listen, I've still got a lot of shopping to do. The decorations, even more presents. What presents? Well, I've got to get something for Mike and Alma. You're not buying a present for Mike Baldwin. Now, Al, Alma is my best mate. She'd be very upset if I didn't get her from her. Well, we don't need no more trimmings. Oh, yes, and I shall have to stack up on crackers. Come on, Audrey, there's still some box from last Christmas. Yeah, not the sort of crackers that you pull out, Phil, of. No, I mean cream crackers. Because that's the only thing you're going to eat over Christmas, I can promise you that. Now we've completed our study of the movement of fluid between the tissues, and I'd like you to complete your workbooks and hand them in on Friday. Thank you. You're hurting me arm. Everyone's watching. Look, this needs sorting out. All right? Come on. What went on last night? Let go of me arm. Just don't know your own spot. Well, come on. You're right, we've got to talk. So, start talking, Carmel. What happened last night? You can't pretend it wasn't wonderful for you as well. Come on now. Don't start me. playing silly games with me, Carmel. It's too serious for that. I mean it. It was the most wonderful night of my life. You're mad. Do you know that? No, I'm not mad. I'm just madly in love. <laughs> Look, I've got to go. I'm late already. I'll see you later. You should be happy. Do you think I'm a fool? This is going to stop you, Carmen. It can't happen now. Not after last night. Oh, forget last night! Nothing happened between me and you, nothing! It did. We lay together for six whole hours, you and me side by side, and you say that's nothing. God, Martin, it's a night I'll never forget. I don't think I went to sleep. Right, that's it. I want you out of the house, OK? You can't turn me out. <laughs> look, look, I promise it won't happen again. I never do anything to hurt you. You are Gail. So please don't be angry with you me. You are bad. Do you know that? You are completely twisted. No, don't, don't say that, please. I mean, you don't want to upset me, or Gail. You're doing the best to break up our marriage, Carmel. Come on, Martin, it's not just one way. Oh, no. Be honest with yourself. I'm not that naive. You have feelings for me as well, I know that. Oh, yes, so where do you get this idea from? You've hardly kept it a secret. Who was it encouraged me to break it up? with Michael. It was you told me to. That wasn't the reason. You must have known for ages how I felt about you. Uh, no. Just face up your feelings. Carmel, that's it. I've got no feelings for you. All right. Martin, you're a married man. Yes. He asked me to live in your house oh. so that we could be together to help look after your children. What did you expect me to think? You've imagined all this, Carmel. <laughs> I mean, I just don't know what to say. No. No, no, it's you. It's you who haven't come to terms with us. Oh. Don't worry. It'll take time. It's Gail I feel sorry for. What's she going to do now? What do you mean? What's Gail going to do? Anyway, I'm going home for Christmas, so you'll have time to decide what to tell her. So what? Eee, you look a bit jaded. You may be able to do you a favour. Doubt it. Still nothing on the horizon, Christmas wise. Well, nothing specific. Oh, dear. All on your own, your share, what? Possibly. Then again, hey. on the other... 
pan. Mm. Take a shift at this. Arrived this morning. Latest message from Executive Singles International. Corner copy of benefits. Cut price commodities for the upwardly mobile single male. <sighs> Dispatched to any part of the country. Great discretion, plain cover. Anything from a monogram dressing gown to a uh, athletic support. <laughs> Daughter, mini Norman. Oh, look at that there. Santa's special singles. Oh, breaks. Mm, all inclusive. Why spend Christmas all on your own? Why indeed, Norman? Mm. Luxurious. What's that? Bedroom on suite. Bedroom on suite. Basement disco. What do you think? What do you think? I had something planned. I'd book it there like a shot me. So you're not going? No, I've got something planned a bit more, uh, well, a bit more complex, not less frivolous. <clears throat> well, uh, yeah, I'll have a look through. Um, yeah, thanks, Reg. Mm. Well, you won't be disappointed in that, because it will be jingle bells from supper time to breakfast. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Reg. Is ever so bossy as Wayne's manager. He tries to blame him every time they lose. I told him, I said, it's not my Wayne's fault no one passes the ball to him. Don't keep picking on him. Is he coming here for Christmas? Oh, well, that's another thing. The manager says he's got to watch his intake over the festive seasons, not to overindulge himself. You see, he's got an away game on Boxing Day, and his manager says that he wants my way and fit as a bunch of dogs, so... <laughs> he's going to his Auntie Frieda's in Skipton. <laughs> She's vegetarian. He's going to his Auntie Frieda's? Well, what's funny about that? And you believe him? Yeah, of course I do. Why shouldn't I? Oh, playing away, is he? I've just said he is on Boxing Day. Oh, you're just jealous because you've got no one in your life and you're going to have a miserable Christmas on your own. True, very true. Mm. Not necessarily. Here, have a deck of this. <laughs> right. When you have a minute, love. A vodka and tonic and a pineapple oh, juice. Oh, nice. it's Thank all true. Oh, a uh, gin and tonic as well, love, please. Yes. All right. Getting the drinks. So then, what news? How is he tonight? Well, feeling very sorry for himself as well, he might. Oh, dear. Was it really that pudding? Oh, of course it was. It must have been. Do you know, if the nurses knew what he'd been eating, they wouldn't be so flipping sympathetic. Are they looking after you? Better than I could. <laughs> oh, here we are, girls. Oh, oh, now then. Thank you. Get that down, you. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, love. Mm. Do you know, when I go to that hospital, I feel so ashamed. There are folks there with broken bones, slip discs, a lot. And there's my husband taking up a bed. All because he's just a silly, stubborn, stupid old man who would prefer to take more notice of Percy Sugden than he does of his own wife. Oh, well, maybe he's learned his lesson this time, love. He's learned his lesson, all right. I've seen to that. Come on, girls, drink up. Huh? We shall have another on our Oh, <laughs> So, what do you reckon? <clears throat> Your comfort and joy will be guaranteed at Santa's Disco. No, oh, I don't fancy Blackpool, nor at Christmas. I'd rather be at home. Oh, I wouldn't. No, me neither. So what do you think, then? Well, festive fun and frolics and all meals provided. I'll stuck on your Todd in Coronation Street. No contest. I'll give him a ring. Could you put these away for the kids? Yeah. And this one's for you oh, and Martin. Oh, come! You shouldn't. You'll be skinned. Sure, and it's nothing much. You've been so good to me, honestly. <laughs> well, you have a lovely Christmas. <laughs> and you. Oh, I wish I was staying. I really do. Oh, come on, you must be pleased to see your family. Well, I can't wait to see the brothers and sisters, but I've got mixed feelings. In some ways, I'd rather be here. Oh, what ways? Michael can't accept that we've broken up. I have a terrible feeling he's going to make trouble. And what about you? Have you accepted it? Oh, Michael's history, as far as I'm concerned. I don't ever want to see him again. <laughs> oh, sponge back. to ourselves. Just got that taxi to ease up. <laughs> we all fully. I mean, I don't know what we'd have done without these past few weeks. Mm. Still, I think we'll manage, don't you? Mm. I think we might. Thank you. Mm. Get that. Mm. Yeah, that's me ready. Um, have a good Christmas, both of you. <laughs> well, that'll be the taxi. Oh, I'll get it. Uh, you get the bags, I'll get the kids. Right, OK. Come on, kids. Say goodbye to Carmel. Hi, Martin. Wish you were coming with me. You'll not be out of my thoughts. Yeah, well, hurry up. Oh, you'll miss your train. I mean it, Martin. Everything I said. Yep, so good. It'll be about ten minutes. Delayed. Come on, kids. Say goodbye. Bye. Don't be sick on the boat. 
Have a nice time. Yeah, stop jumping up and down and say goodbye properly. See ya. See ya. Bye. Ready for bed? We're all gonna have an early night. Us and all, eh? Yeah, you bet we are. <laughs> so, uh, I'm gonna fix some meal with you, sir. Oh, I'll let you have Christmas Day off. And Boxing Day? Mm, yeah, you can have that as well. But that's a Saturday. Yeah, then there's Sunday, that's three days on the trot. Oh, cushy. So what do you get a day off in Lou? Day in Lou? Day in... Who's been telling you about days in Lou? You're a communist or something. Days in Lou have to be earned. And as of this date, you owe me. You think about that. So you want me on a Monday? Of course. Tell you what, do half a day. Place hasn't been cleaned since you started. Half a day. I must be going soft in my old age. <laughs> Mrs. Sullivan, on a moment, por favor. Is this important? I'm in company. Extremely. And I won't detain you for more than two minutes, starting now. A minute, girls. Yes, Ray. Right. This is about Christmas. Apropos you and me. For heaven's sake, I've already said no. Yes, but I do realise I was being a bit forward. I'll say you were. So, plan B. Four-star Lakeland Hotel, noted for its French cuisine. No. No, now hear me out. Separate rooms and no filling about. And it's my treat. The answer's still no. Look, Reg, what do I have to say to you? I can't go gallivanting off like that, even if I wanted to. Oh, but it's separate rooms, Rita, and it's in the middle of the middle of the words of country. Reg, if you were taking me to the moon on separate rocket, the answer would still be no. Sorry about that. No. <sighs> ah, Norman. Um, you know that brochure I lent you? Have you still got it? Um, Des Barnes has got it. All oh, right. Well, when you see him, could you ask him for it back? Only I've decided that maybe Blackpool can have the, uh, well, the benefit of my Yuletide company, after all. I thought you said you had the plans. Yes, well, I've reconsidered. Um, was it of interest at all, Santa's special? Well, yeah, it was, as a matter of fact. Des is ringing the hotel now. We're, we're both going. Oh, wonderful. That's changed my mind, of that? Oh, we'll make a right threesome, won't we? <laughs> Perhaps he'll have a field day when they see me in my costume, high heels, um, Hawaiian shirt, hula, 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 hot pants, Ian Botham glasses. I have a right scream. Oh, it'll be a fantastic Christmas for all this. Hey, Kelly. <laughs> Look at your phone when I did. Why? I've got the last two places. Hi, Rich, didn't see you there. What you haven't met? You what? All this holiday, me and Kelly are going on book solid. It can't be. Well, have you heard about it? Heard about it? This is my brochure. I was coming with you. Oh, it's a right signal, is that Desmond? Sorry, Rich. <sighs> oh. Well done, mate. You played a blinder there. That's what I thought. <laughs> oh, Golden Day 88, thank you very much. Well, come on in. Welcome to Shea Barlow. As you can see, it's lucky I haven't got a cat to swing. It's very nice, Ken. But it's Coronation Street. Divorces aren't cheap, I'm afraid. It's all I can afford. Yes, but why here? Oh, don't tell me. To be near Tracy? Correct. Well, I hope I'd have been the same. Right, well... Can I get you a drink? Food will be about another half an hour. In a minute. It's a long time since I was in this street. Been a few changes. Didn't a man whose name we won't mention once have a factory over there? Where the new houses are. Oh, so uh, you've got no connection with the street anymore, then? This creature who shall remain unnamed. Well, do you really want to know? Yes. Tell me. He has that factory unit and a garage behind the shop. He's everywhere. It just seems like that. <sighs> anyway, come and sit down. He's not here. I wouldn't be surprised. He could be under the sofa. Behind the cushion. <laughs> Who cares, anyway? He can't harm us now. I pick him up by the scruff of his neck and toss him out of the window. No more skeletons. I was afraid I'd lost you. You weren't there. I was terrified.
man who's in hospital for overeating. He can't take grapes, can he? Well, can you? You're the expert. You won't forget we're taking David to his party this afternoon, will you? Are you listening? What the party? No, not forgotten. Don't begin to think there's something wrong with you. You've been miles away all weekend. Yeah, well, something on my mind a bit, that's all. Anything I can help with? No, not really. Problem shared is problem hard. Nothing I've done, is it? No, it's nothing like that. Yeah, I suppose you'd tell me if it was anything serious. Now, where has Sarah Louise put my scarf? <laughs> Look, Gail, there is something, actually. She's been hiding things, little monkey. Oh, leave me, Mother. What kept you? Oh, don't start. It what it is, all the dressing oh, gown and his shaving kit. I know what portrait must feel like now. How are you? Hello, are you coming with us and all, sweetheart? No old pair to leave him with now. Oh, of course. Well, it looks like Martin's feeling the effects already. Come on, he'll be wondering where we've got to. Oh, Come on, my Philip. <sighs> right, oh, two soups and a double onion chips for this. Hey, steady on. I'm going as fast as I can. Yeah, and there's a cashew pie and a treacle tart still waiting. I'll be glad to get back to my grotto to take weight up with me. Nope, oh, that's not my cottage pie going cold. Quarter of an hour I've been waiting here. I'm going to be late for work if you don't get on with it. Yes, yeah, shut up and get it there, will you? She'd jolly well think so, and all place goes to peace when Mrs. Platt's not here. Where is she? She is visiting Alf Roberts in hospital. Something come. Next time you go, sick men, to have something they don't want, you'll have to pay. I still think you can find somebody quicker to do your job. Anyway, you've got a job already. You ought to be ashamed of yourself doing two when there's young people out of work. I need all the money I can get. Stuff for our bottom drawer doesn't come cheap, you know. Hi, sweetheart. Just popped in for a cup of tea. I've got a fresh one, mine, not one that's been brewing for half an hour. Oh, yeah, well, hang on. I've got my best china. I'm going bother crack. Mine will be all right. I'm in a bit of a hurry. Look, I'm not in the mood. If you want something, I'll take your china and help yourself. I do not do calf work. Well, I do, so if you don't want to pay the baked beans down your front, either give Phyllis a hand a belt up. Well, that's nice, isn't it? I try and bring a bit of business to ward off inflation. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. I brew up at the garage. The back end of an escort may not look as pretty, but at least it won't bite my head off. See you later. I'll be through in a minute. Huh? I'm just putting my face on. It's all right, we're not busy. Do you know, it's funny stuff, lipstick, when you think about it, isn't it? I wonder what it's made out of. The summer up? No. Well, in a way, that was Vicky on the phone, ringing to say she'll be at Alex for Christmas. Oh. Were you looking forward to her coming here? Not really. He's a relative after all. Anyway, I'll be too busy running this place to have had much time with her. Well, it would be nice of her to ring and tell you, though. I mean, she must be fond of she wouldn't have bothered. Yeah, I suppose she must. Well, at least you won't be on your own on Christmas Day. No? Well, no, you'll have me. <laughs> and we're never much good at cooking, but... Uh... I'll have a go at dinner, if you like. That's very kind. Well, I saw a recipe in a magazine the other day that looked nice. Stuff goose's neck, it's called. You get a goose's neck and you stuff it with sausage meat and offal and then roast it in Stilton cheese. <laughs> or were it Stilton for the next course? <laughs> it were very exotic anyway. I could give that a try, if you like. Let's see what Friday brings, shall we? Yeah, I've had it years, apparently. And they never knew the times they've had you in here. Well, they'd told me, wouldn't they? Well, that's right, is that, Audrey? I've done it in college. Kind of majors are not now. Well, do you know, it serves you right, the rubbish you've been shoveling down lately, right? It's lettuce leaves and carrot juice from now on. That's a thing of the past, love. You can eat what you like now, as long as you don't go daft. Well, you're daft already, so you can forget that. Do you know, if you eat any more rich food, they'll be pickling your insides in one of them glass jars that them students gaze on. I mean, is there anything you haven't got? Have they said when they're letting you out? Oh, I tried to ring you, but uh, you'd gone. No, I'm, uh, I'm coming out this afternoon. Uh, I bought all this stuff up here for nothing. Well, they only told me 20 minutes ago. Well, that's good news. Oh, well, uh, at least I'll be just cooking Christmas dinner for one. Oh, give up. Uh, Martin, 
Why don't we ask Alf and my mum over to us oh, on Christmas Day? Don't oh, come, Bath. We were only joking. Uh, no, actually. Yeah, that'll be a good idea. Yeah. Well, that's assuming you want to go, of course. Be lovely. Hey, Martin, now you're not usually that keen to have your in-laws over. What's that? Yeah. Missing having a full house now, Carmel's gone. Isn't that right, Martin? See, Wayne was in action on Saturday. What does it say on paper? Luke scored a goal and all. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah, final. Does that mean he scored? That's it. Well, he will be pleased. I wonder why it's not Tom. He usually rings me if he's had a good game. Oh, well, he's, uh, he's modest, you see. Well, it's true. He's not of these that lets fame go to his head. <laughs> and what's this here after his name? Og. That's OG. Short for own goal. And what's that? Yeah. Means he did it all by himself. No one else can take the credit for it. Oh, I see. That's probably why he hasn't rung. I mean, there's no need to brag when you score, and then score sheet speaks for itself. Well, thanks for telling me. It's made me day. Oh, God. Ooh. Oh. You don't fancy doing a bit of charity work on Christmas Day, do you? Why? What's happening? Stuff goose neck if I'm not careful. You are? It's Raquel's idea of Christmas dinner with a difference. I mean, I don't know how you fix, but if you could come round and help me talk her out of it, it'd be in a very good cause. Well, if you can offer me something less exotic, I'd be delighted. Stop. What, really? Gooseneck with sausage meat. An awful. Cooped in Stilton, she thinks. I was going to ask you anyway, kid. Oh, well, I'm glad you did. I mean, I've been dodging Derek and May. It's no offence, but... You'd rather let your hair down a bit, I know. Well, you've come to the right person. If anybody deserves a bit of fun after the year we've had, it's us two, eh, kid? Well, you're looking very pleased with yourself today, Raquel. Well, I'm a very proud woman today. Oh, why's that? Wayne scored a goal on Saturday. But, but that's grand. Mind you, it's about time you started earning some of that money, the pair, mate. Oh, well, he can't help it if he's been injured. No, I suppose not. It were a very special goal as well, Dad says. Oh, why why's that, then? It were an own goal. Oh. Well, lads, great news, so it is. It's not very often a striker gets one of them, so let me no. tell you. So you see he's bounced back with a vengeance? He certainly has. Mind you, I did hear the last two one, you know. Oh, yeah, but that's not his fault. I mean, if he hadn't scored, they'd have lost by even more, wouldn't they? <laughs> Well, will you look what the cat's dragged in? All right. Yeah. What about your son here? Have you been to a funeral or what? Yeah, very funny. Tell you what, let's give us an elastic band and I'll put his hair in a ponytail for him. Yeah. How are you, love? I'm great. Just got back? Yep, about half an hour ago. Well, you better get on my paint, love. It looks like you're doing some cheering up. Oh, take the notice, Andy. I think you look dead sexy and black. Well, oh, you don't know what it means to me this Christmas, Tom. Being together with you. There was a time when I thought it was never going to happen. But anyway. We'll have a right nice quiet day next Friday. Just talk. Oh, well, I, I was wondering if I could spend a day with Gail and Martin, cos, uh, well, it'd be a shame to miss kids' faces when they open the presents. And it'll be the first time young David's been knowing what it's all about, so you won't want to miss that. Hey, hang on, this is birthday as well. This is it. Yeah, but, Dom, I wouldn't want them to think we were imposing love. No, they'll probably welcome an extra pair of hands. Could be nice, that, eh? Now then, you blowing hot or cold at the moment? Now, just don't push me again in the rush hour, or you'll know about it. Oh, she's calmed down there, eh? you're back. You shouldn't leave her alone, you know. She gets very nasty. Oh, to leave her sometimes. Anyway, some people only come in when she's like that, you know. Uh, it's the aggro. They pay a lot of money to be given a hard time. Well, to show there's no hard feelings, I popped in to see if you want anything. I'm going into town. Oh, no, you have got me that new Mercedes, haven't you? Jaguar, Jaguar. We buy British here. Oh, sorry, sorry. So is there anything? Can I have them drinks we ordered, please? Oh, sorry, Nicky. What was it? Two Cokes? Well, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. What a way to run a business. Still, it's good practice. Won't be the last time a woman to keep you waiting. Gives them that feeling of power. Yeah, would you just listen to it? Well, he's got to learn about these things. They complain if you take time getting ready, but they moan even more if you don't get a million dollars. It's all right, Nicky. I'll bring these across. Give them to me, love. Your, your image can take this. <laughs> Have I asked him to do that? There you go. Who's the other one for you, mate? Terry. Mark? Oh, Mark, is it? He's a new waiter. Now I'm just showing the girls how it's done. They're useless women, aren't they? So tell me, uh, what's Father Christmas going to bring in it, eh? Nah, I don't 
can't believe no, that rubbish. Oh, no. You kids these days. All right, then, uh, your mum and dad. Cross for a computer, me. Don't know if I get one, though. Useful things, eh? What's you making? He's already got one. He's moved quite well off. Oh, what's you do? Run an oil well? Flower shop. Oh. Well, with his mum and dad both working, I mean, he should be well off for presents, eh? Hasn't got so that. Oh? He's dead. Oh, poor kid. When did this happen, do you know? Last year, I think. Why? What do you want to know all this for? Oh, no reason. Here, have those on me. It's Christmas. Thanks. Yeah, he's got his birthday outfit yeah. on today, oh. haven't you, Paul? Yeah. Are you going to a party? Yeah, we're just going for a card, Auntie Mavis. Oh. <laughs> I like a man in a bow tie, don't you? Something debonair about it, isn't there? Yes. Takes you back to the days of Noel Coward, <laughs> ballrooms in Barton Square, <laughs> nightingales singing. Yes. That's it. Mm. This is the 1930s we're talking about, when half of Britain were unemployed. Even the TV panel games in the 1950s had a certain something, didn't they? <gasps> Gentlemen in dinner jackets, ladies in gowns. <laughs> they had a sophistication that, well, we've lost. Mm. A packet of my cigars, please, ladies. Yeah, right. Have your Thunderbirds one, or should we have the Thomas the Tank engine? Hey? Hey? Oh, lovely picture of father and son, aren't they? Something I wouldn't know very much about, Mavis. Did I say something? Oh, Mr. Wilson, could I have a word? I wonder if I might ask you a favour. Of course. I don't like to bother you, but uh, there's no one else I feel I can turn to. Uh, far away. <laughs> it's about the school gerbil. I was wondering if you might look after him over the holidays. Well, um... Yes. Yes, of course. Oh, I'd be ever so grateful. I mean, Mr. Potts ought to look after him by rights, but he is so uncooperative when it comes to these things. Ah, well, I understand. <laughs> No, you can depend on me. Oh, splendid. I wonder, would you mind taking him home tonight? With the painters starting work tomorrow, we don't want him upset by the fumes, do we? No. Leave it to me. Thanks a lot. Oh, Mrs. Jeffers. What, uh, what's his name? Jerry. Jerry. How are you doing? All right. That's it, bad. How's yourself? Oh, fine. I don't know anyone that wants a few kids for a couple of weeks, do you? Ah, you don't mean that. Get up. I'm on a bet. I'm going to change that to a couple of months. So, what can I do for you? Well, it's about Christmas. Me and Harvey was wondering, uh, look, surf it's inconvenient, but I was wondering if we could spend the day with you. Yeah, well, why not? Well, uh, but if you want to think about it. No, no, that'll be fine. Oh. All right, well, we'll help out, of course, anywhere we can. Look, if you want to talk to Gail first. No, Gail won't mind. Come over here. We might ask Ivy to do a few bits and pieces. Yeah, of course. And uh, Alf and Audrey are coming over if you don't mind that. Oh, look, hey, if, it, if it's any trouble. No, look, don't, it's no trouble. Look, I've said come over. The more the merrier. Right. Well, I'll bring a bottle of sherry and some cans over. And Ivy wanted to know, does Gail still like them chocolates she used to eat? Uh, white, was it, with truffles? It? Does that mean out to you? I'm sorry, the one was there. Gail! What kind of chocolates does she like? She likes any sort of chocolates. As long as there's no poles in the helicopter delivery. You're all right, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Just a bit tired, that's all. You know what it's like with these kids. So how's you then, Don? You know, how's business and that? It's fine. Good. It's all up, isn't it? Well, yeah, as it happens. It's all up, don't you? Oh, Evening, yeah. ladies. Oh, you're oh, very chirpy for a man who's been toiling all day. Well, two weeks of school without children to look forward to and a holiday in the middle. I feel like a free man again. What have you been buying? <laughs> well, it can't be out for you, otherwise it won't be flown to me. Not strictly true, Rita. Oh, what is it, Derek? Well, we've got company for Christmas, Mavis. 
Very privileged we are to have it too. Allow me to present Jerry the Gerbil. <laughs> Saved from the clutches of Harry Potts, this. Jerry has been entrusted to me by the headmistress herself. Well, I hope you're not thinking of bringing that into the house. Well, I thought you liked animals. Oh, I do, but not gerbils. What's wrong with gerbils? Well, the rodents, Derek, and you know how I hate rodents. And you're sure that not happened? I'm as sure as I can be, yeah. I mean, you know what it's like when you've had a skin for it. I mean, I don't even fancy it. So what was she doing in your bed? You tell me, Don. You must have given her some encouragement for her to go that far. Well, that's what's freaking me out. I've given her nothing. I mean, I don't mind if we'd had a bit of electricity between us. But we're good mates, and that's all. Well, that's not the way she sees it, obviously. Hey, she set out to get. Not yet, no. Wouldn't she? Well, that's the $64,000 question. <sighs> well, I suppose if you didn't do out, you've got no to feel guilty about. Except you do, though, don't you? Especially when I didn't tell her straight away. I mean, it looks like there is something to hide now, doesn't it? And if I do tell her, what am I going to say, eh? Oh, I'm sorry, girl, I uh, slept with Carmo the other night, but don't worry, I was paralytic, nothing happened. Or at least, <laughs> I don't think anything happened. What am I going to do, Don, eh? Well, as long as you are, keep quiet. Don't show to girl now. Wait till Carmel gets back and then get shot up as quick as you can. Hope it all blows over. Well, at least you've got a breathing space while she's in Ireland. She might think better of it. But... Hello, girl. Hi, love. You all right? Hiya. <laughs> Ooh, look at you two. Look as thieves. What have you been plotting? Uh, Christmas surprise. Don was asking if they could come over for Christmas. So I said, yeah. Right. that a surprise? <laughs> no, no, no. I was asking Martin what he wanted for Christmas. Oh, hope he said something expensive. <laughs> Have you thought any more about Christmas, Rita? Well, yes, I have, Mavis. Bet asked me today to spend it with her, and that's what I'm going to do. Oh, I see. Well, thanks all the same for asking. Well, I thought you were just putting it off in case you heard from Jenny. Well, I was. But uh, when I realised Bet's going to be on her own, I mean, it's her first Christmas without Alec. And Vicky's not going to be here either. So I thought she was going to be in need of a bit of moral support, so that's what I decided. Well, don't worry, Rita, we understand. Oh, Very noble of you. Good news, Hello. everybody. Alf is out of hospital. Oh, hey, good. Oh. So I'm just popping in for a quick one before going home. Oh, and how is he? He's all right, but they've discovered he's got an ulcer. Oh, no. Dear, on a serious one. No, thank goodness, but it's going to change his ways so he doesn't get any worse, so there's no more stupid bets with Percy Sugden for oh, a start. Oh, no. well, out just in time for Christmas. Yes, do you know, Mark? Martin and Gail have asked us over there for Christmas Day. This morning I was really dreading Christmas, <clears> but I'm quite looking forward to it now. The difference a bit of good news can make, eh? Mm. <laughs> we haven't sorted out what we're doing on Friday yet. Hey, what? Well, are we going on? Or are we stopping in? I don't mind. We do whatever you like. Why, well, it'd be a change for me if we went out. I mean, I cook every day of the week. I suppose you want to do it. All right, we go out then. I knew we might not find anywhere nice now, because it'd be all booked up, wouldn't they? Oh, make your mind up. What's the matter with you tonight? Have I got a civil word out of you? Oh, I'm sorry, love. It's just I've got something on my mind. Look, uh, do you mind if we go home? I don't feel like socialising tonight. Oh, I think I'd rather stop here if you're going to be like this. I'll cheer up, I promise. Yeah, listen, I'll tell you what. When we get in, I'll phone up Romano's and see if he can squeeze us in for Christmas lunch. How's that suit you? Hmm? Well, as long as you're not doing it because you feel guilty. If I was, would it matter? No. Come on, then. Oh, no, Audrey. I've just oh. heard good news. Oh, well, I've told him to take it easy from now on, right? I think he'll be all right. Any more plum puddings and I shall box his ears. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, that's good news as well, love. I mean, Martin told me he got out of hospital. What good news were you talking about? Then? Christmas Day. Me and Donna coming round to Martin and girls for a day. Didn't you know? Well, yes, we'll be spending it together. Oh, nice. Love a boy on the phone for you. When? I'll do this. Thanks. Wayne? Oh, I'm fine. It's nice to hear you. How have you been? Great. No, listen, I can't talk long. I'm at work. But I've heard all about your goal. The one you scored on Saturday, your own goal. I've been telling everyone about it. 
I'm not being funny. But Despan said it was really special. Well, I didn't know that. No, I thought... Yeah. Hello. Wayne. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, roll on next school term. Yeah. Mm. Looks like we'll be feeding the 5,000 on Friday. No, I think we'll manage. Everyone will have to chip in, won't they? Mm. Looking forward to it. Mm. Big family get-together. Mm. And Don's present. <laughs> well, I won't get too worked up about that if I were you. I mean, he was only asking what type of chocolates you liked. As long as they're handmade. Oh, oh I, yeah. Audrey and Nicky will love scuffing them while your back's turned. <laughs> and how's your problem? Eh? The one you had this morning. Ah. Oh. So I sorted out now. Good. Glad it was nothing serious. <laughs> You'd tell me if it was, wouldn't you? Of course I would, love, yeah. Oh, here they come. Lock up your daughters. It's the Blackpool Rockers. <laughs> oh, that's a bit cruel. <laughs> that's all right, Neil. I'm well used to the jibes a single man can expect on his quest for affection. Well, I'll drink to that. You get jip if you play around, jip if you don't. I'll give you jip, Des Barnes. See what I mean? I've hardly opened my mouth. You know what I'm talking about. Own goal. Oh, that. Well, that was a bit of fun. Oh, fun, my eye. You made me look a right fool. And Wayne's furious. Well, I wouldn't hang around here if you see him coming, cos there might not be so much left of you, but time is finished. Well, I wouldn't hang around yourself if he's going to take a swing at me. Could be you that ends up on the floor the way he's been on target. <laughs> Oh, that's right. Make fun of him behind his back. Well, you're just jealous cos you've been dumped by every single woman you've ever had. That's why you've got to go and see the holidays to Blackpool. Well, any normal man your age would be with his wife and his family come Christmas, so think on. What's going on, Mike? I mean, for goodness sake. Nothing. I'm fine. Well, is it because I was cross with you at dinner time? Nah, don't be silly. What, is it anything to do with work? I mean, you're not in any kind of trouble, are you? No, I'm not in any trouble. It's nothing like that. Well, what then? I mean, you can't go on pretending it's nothing. No, I suppose not. It's that young lad that was in the cafe this afternoon. What, Nicky? No, 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 not him, no, the, the other one. Mark. Well, what about him? He's my son, Alma. You may not know it, but he's my son. Should have come to bed. What for sleep? You must be joking. He, he means everything to me. Do you know how that feels? Someone means everything to you, and I've never heard of him. I mean, what kind of marriage is this? Alma. It was 11 years ago. His mother wanted nothing to do with me. It's past. Now, can you get that into your head? It's past. Right, just get that into your thick head, Alma. I've got a son. He is the most important thing in my life, but it's past. I'm talking about his mother. It's past. No! Yes, Maggie, it's past. And I, I said nothing about thick head. That was you. I mean, why do I have to live like this? I mean, why does every other woman I know have some kind of marriage? 
Why is it only me that can't trust that come the end of the year I shall still have a husband? Oh, Alma. You're going to leave me, aren't you? <sighs> it's Christmas and you're going to leave me just like you do every Christmas. You'll take up with Maggie and you'll move in with her and Mark and I will move back to the cafe just like I do every Christmas. But this time, it'll be the end. Because you can't do that to me again. I just can't take it. I'd rather kill myself. You're hysterical. Yes, I am. I am bloody hysterical. Christ. Because you've got a son. You're a father. You've got a son. And it is just round the corner. And his mother lives just round the corner. And you have always wanted a family. This is ludicrous. And I haven't got a family. I'm not even sure if I've still got a husband. And I'll never have a son. Ever. Ever. Will I? Alma. Well, will I? Look, now, look. No, Alma, you will never have a son. Or a daughter come to that because you're too old. <laughs> Hey, I'll pick you up at six. I'll pick you up. We'll go in mine. No, I need me car. I've got to go work tomorrow. Tomorrow you'll be in no state to drive. I can't. I've got a day's work to do. Well, get the train. Well, I can't go mad tonight. I don't start my holidays till tomorrow. Kelly, we'll be in Blackpool. What are you going to do? Read your prayer book? Well, no, I just thought I'd take it easy. You know, look round Blackpool, breathe in that air, smell the sea. I'll go... pick you up at six. Drive to Blackpool. Then it's bar, food, club, women in that order. And I promise you, by 12 o'clock, you won't ever think of work again. See you later. You've got to clear that every packet of biscuits, every box cake, anything sweet or fatty so we wouldn't be tempted. You'll never guess what I found him scoffing. Green gauge jelly cubes. Straight out of the packet. <laughs> He's traced his soulmate. Oh, but you, he must have scoured the back of the cupboard because they must have been there at least five years. Oh. Anyway. It's carrot juice and grapes for him from now on. By the time I've done with him, he's going to look like a flipping grape. Well, there can't be much wrong with his stomach if he's eating like that. Deirdre, love, he hasn't got a stomach. He's got a big black hole there. Oh, <laughs> Why can't he be like Ken? I mean, look at that muesli, fresh fruit, skim milk. Yeah, look at me. Can hardly lift the basket. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very festive, this lot, Ken. No, this is for the flat. Festive happens elsewhere. Ah, I'm with you. We'll have a nice time, Ken. I mean it. Thanks. Appreciate that. You too. Just the two of you. Yeah, it? just me and Tracy. Oh, well, that's a shame. Oh, no. We'll have a riot. I dare say we'll see something of Emily and Percy as oh. well. Well, riot's the word, then. I should cover my chairs with newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now, listen to you while I remember this afternoon. I have to go and pick up Alfie's Prezi, so uh, I may be gone an hour or two, all right? Mm, yeah, of course. I paid for it weeks ago, actually, but the, uh, the shop kept it because it's so big. He'd just nose around and he'd find it. Well, go on, then. Tell us. Oh, no, Ken. It's a secret. But I will tell you this, it'll put the colour back in his cheeks. Oh, Swedish au pair. Didn't know you went about marriage, Audrey. <laughs> <laughs> How are you feeling? Oh, fine, hunky-dory. How do you think? What are you sitting there for? I was thinking. What about? Well, what's the next thing? I mean, there's always the next thing with you. I mean, what's the next thing that's going to destroy us? I always thought it was going to be another woman, not a child. <laughs> I want you here for Christmas. Well, of course I'm going to be here for Christmas. Of course. Well, where else? Well, with your son and his mother. I mean, they're your family, aren't they? Well, that's what Christmas is all about, family. Oh, Alma, will you listen? His mother can't stand the sight of me, and Mark doesn't even know I exist. Now, how the hell can I spend Christmas with them? You want to, though, don't you? No, I don't. I want to be here with you. And that's where I'm going to be. Why didn't you tell me before, Mike? Well, because of this. Precisely because of this. And this doesn't give me any joy, believe you me. When Maggie's husband was alive, there didn't seem much point. I was sworn off. Mark was being taken care of. For all I know, he still thinks that's his real father. But now you're going to step into the breach. Or is it into dead men's shoes? No, I wouldn't talk like that anymore if I was you and I mean it. If I can do anything to help the lad, I will, and you won't stop me, but... <laughs> I mean, 
I can't just turn up and say, Hi, I'm your father, I'm staying for Christmas. You mean you're not going to have any contact with him? Well, um, I did think of buying him a present. No. Well, it's just a present. I mean, no, what's the harm? No, no. You'll start with a present, and the next thing you'll have your feet on the table. Just promise me. No presents. Nothing. Yeah, all well, right. I promise. <gasps> Hello. 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 Is Rita about? Yeah, she's just threw in the back. Shall I? No, no. Um, it's just, um, well, I don't like to prompt Rita, but perhaps you could tell me. And please don't worry, I won't be offended. Has Rita made up her mind to go to you for Christmas dinner? Oh, no. Well, yes, yeah, she has made her mind up, but she's not coming to us. Oh. So there'll just be the four of us, I'm afraid. Four? Yeah, myself and Derek. Harry and Jerry. Still, oh. it's quite a little house, of course. <laughs> I think it'll be very pleasant in a way. Well, calming, because when you think of the stressful situations people get into over Christmas, well, I feel very privileged to be spending mine with a, a gerbil, a budget, and Derek. Well, you've changed your tune. Yesterday, Jerry were a rodent. You were all for sending for pest control people. Oh, really? You do exaggerate. Anyway, I've got to know him overnight, and he's a cheery little fellow. A couple of years ago, he said that about Derek. <laughs> Compliment of the season, Emily. Oh, and to you. Hope things are really busy for you. Well, they could be better. We always say that, though, mm. don't we? Not at tea time, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> now then, Rita, Mavis tells me you're not going there, so I take it you'll be joining Mr Sugden and me at number three for Christmas dinner. Well, we're really looking forward to it, I promise you. Oh, Emily, I didn't tell you, did I? I'm fixed up. What do you mean? Well, Bet's asked me. I'm sorry. Oh, this is terrible. I should have said, shouldn't I? But I'll be going to Bet's. Well, it, it's a sort of all girls together sort of thing, really. But I'm ever so touchy thought about me. Really, I am. I see. And I'm sure you two will have a lovely time. Quite sad I won't be there, really. Yes, yes, I'm sure you are. Well, have a good time, won't you? Thanks, Emily. You too. Oh, you must feel free to pop into us, Emily. Like I say, it'll all be very relaxed. Well, happy Christmas, Emily. to ask. It'll be two tomorrow, eh? <laughs> it was a little wonder. <laughs> yeah, two years since I was stuck in that taxi. Yeah, you were stuck in a taxi. I felt like a taxi. <laughs> <laughs> Would you go back? To hospital? No, to them. Well, I'd rather be there than here. I don't blame you. Alma seems a bit funny today. She's taking it out on me because I was late. Not got a leg to stand on. She was late as well. Christmas. Don't you just love it? I love it. Roll on June. Emma, <laughs> you were late as well. Do we have to have this standoff? What? I mean, if you're mad at me, wait until tonight and take it out on me when we're not busy. I'm not mad at you. Is that what you think? Well, you won't talk to me. Of course I'll talk to you. I want to talk to you. He's got a son. What? He's got a son. Oh. Mike. That lad, Nicky's friend. That is Mike's son. I don't understand that. I don't understand what he did to deserve it. Do you mean that lad Mark? It's Mike's son. It's his son. That is my husband's son. And the first time I knew about it was last night. He's 11 years of age. I didn't even know he existed. Who's the mother? Oh, her name's Maggie. I don't know. You don't mean that Mike's seen her now? Well, he says not, but... Oh, girl, how do I know? Well, how did you find out now? Well, he told me. Uh, apparently the stepfather died and Mike just learnt 
The boys didn't know anything about it. You don't mean that Mike wants him to know. <laughs> oh. Can you believe it? He was going to take him around a Christmas present by way of introducing himself. Oh. So he swans around with a Christmas present. I mean, does he know what that's going to do to you? Well, yeah, finally, when I spelled it out to him. Oh, man, he's stupid and selfish. I hate him sometimes for what he does to you. You deserve better, Alma. Oh, Hey, <coughs> see you, Vera. Christmas starts here, eh? Ho, ho, ho! Some... Oh, come on, Vera. Cheer up. We've only got one more day at work and then we're all free. Yeah, well, I know some do isn't. Oh, yeah, sorry. Look, if you see Terry, give him my best, will you? Are you going with him? Des, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where do you put your friends, eh? Oh, come on, he's all right. Old's wife is a chasing this time, eh? Vera, he's OK. Yeah, well, tell our Terry that. Where are you going with him, anyway? Well, we're just going to a hotel in... Kelly, come on, hurry up! I'm sorry, I'm sorry I'm coming. Uh, look, Vera, uh, all the best and, uh, well, I'll see you tomorrow, won't I? Have a great time, love. And don't do everything he tells you, either, cos you're a lovely, warm human being, you. Not like him. Animal! Yeah, mate. Soon like she's got, she calls me an animal. Yeah, well, don't let it upset you. You're joking, aren't you? She'd have to be twice her size to upset me. Come on, Kelly, give us a song. Song? What song? Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. All I've is to ride along, all so for sight. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. All I've is to ride along, all so for sight. Nice. What is it, roast pork? Oh, couldn't fool you, could Alfred. <laughs> not when it comes to meat. <laughs> come on, come on, let's settle you down. Well, it's not a problem, you know. No. <sighs> Just a bit sore, that's all. But I shall survive. You will, Alf, you will, right now. How's that? Oh, champion. Oh. You know, when you come up against the big un, you get a sense of perspective. The big un? I mean, death. Oh, I thought you meant that pudding. Well, how can a pudding give you a sense of perspective? Well, I wasn't there, but I heard it was a big one. A very big one indeed, no, I was no. talking. I'm talking about higher things. Oh, of course. You see, some people go to church and they do good works and such like. But when you've looked death in the face, you start to think to yourself, what have I done with my life? Well, over the last couple of days, Audrey, I've had a chance to think. And what have you thought, Al? Shall I tell you? Oh, only if you want to. <laughs> well, I've not done bad. Is that it? It is just about. Oh, very well worth dicing with death for. No, no, be serious for a minute. Good Lord, Audrey. Oh, dear, what? You're out of control now. I mean, what is that? How much did that cost? What is it? I'm not telling you. I bet you're not the size of it. Who's it for, anyway? One, one of the little ones? Cos you might as well give them a, a cardboard box and a stick to beat it with. They're just as happy. It's for you, actually. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> oh, well, that's different, I suppose. I've not got out for you, though, you know. I've not had a chance. Oh, it's all right. You will, though, won't you, love, eh? Aye. Now, what was on about? A higher plane. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't think I've done bad, you see. Shopkeeper. Well, that's serving mankind, isn't it? Counselor. <laughs> Good grief. Where's the reward in that? And look at the way I look after you. That don't come cheap, you know. No, all in all, Audrey, I think I can hold my head up. Oh, good. You see, when you've been through what I've been through, you see things as they are. It was terrible indigestion, Alf. The doctor said it was. An ulcer? Oh, yes. Well, you've got an ulcer as well, haven't you? 
Well, hang on, that, uh, that pork smells wonderful. My anniversary tea. Anniversary? It's our anniversary, Alf. Look, Gail sent us this card. Oh. Huh? And there's yours from me. Oh, I'll be jiggered. Time flies. Oh, it does, it does. Oh, now, that, that is lovely, that. <laughs> oh. Oh, thank you, love. Mm. Well, I better see to that meat. I don't want it to burn. Hey, don't you dare. I don't want burnt meat on my anniversary. Oh, don't worry, Alf. It's not for you. It's what? The meat. It's my anniversary tea. I've got these for you. Look. Now, I've set a place for you here, but I think you'll do just as well with this bowl on your knee there. Yeah. Hey, there you are. Tuck in. Ooh. Give us another light ale, Jack. Give us a smile and a will. Mm, I don't feel like right. Oh, come on, things are not that bad, Vera. What? Well, I've lost both my grandkiddies. My daughter-in-law's up to and gone. My son's in prison. What have I got to smile about? We've got each other, Vera. Ah, oh, flaming terrible, isn't it? I've got somebody on my conscience. Oh, Phyllis. What's she doing for Christmas? I don't know. She's one of them you think are sorted. Right, well, she is now. <laughs> Two pies, please, Raquel. Two? Oh, yeah. With that airy chested girlfriend of yours. And what are you on a snowball? Uh, hey, no, no, don't come here to get insulted. Most do, love. Make the best of it. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. And drink. No, thanks. I'll be at the office. Shattered. Get me a white wine, would you bet? One white wine. This one's not quite cold. You mind? As long as it's wet. Probably a daft question, but there's me, Rita, Raquel and Phyllis for Christmas dinner. I was wondering how you were fixed. Thanks, mate, but I'm organised. Oh, uh, I thought you might be. Somewhere nice. Someone nice, as a matter of fact. It could change for you, that. It will, yeah. Christmas with someone nice. Been years since I've had that. <laughs> Enjoy it. You don't exactly choose your moment, do you? I realise that. And me, the soul of tact. Sorry, Denise, I must be going adult. Why did I say that? Anyone would think I cared what he thought. Seems like he cares what you think. Don't tell me. He's kissing her? Yes, but he's looking at you. Is that offer <laughs> still on? Christmas dinner? You bet, love. I'd love it. I'd really love it. Raquel, set another place for dinner on Friday. Oh, you're coming too? Won't be half fun there. Eh? And unless Santa drops in, there won't be a man in sight. Oh. Wonderful. Well, I could see if Gordon Blinkhorn's busy. What are you doing? Why all this kissing? Oh, it's passion. You mean your ex-wife's got you excited? Oh, no, don't be daft. It's you. Gratified, but it's not the time or the place, Neil. Yeah, what's that? Devil may care. You two don't give a stuff about hygiene, do you? Hey, people look. Yeah. Well, you know, else to look it round here, is there? Mind if we go, you know what? If you have to. I just thought you might want some conversation, but I'll go if you want to stick your tongue back down there. Stay, it's all right. Oh, thanks very much. Well, I don't fancy my chances in here much tonight. Unless they ever go to sex anywhere, hairdresser, what do you reckon? Give it a try. I've heard it's pretty easy. Sharpen. Of course not. What's your name then? It's Sharon with two R's. What? It's Sharon, but it's got two R's. What R's? Her name's Sharon. It's spelled with two R's and not one. So she's not just an ordinary Sharon. All right, got you. What's your name then? Tina. You got two P's. What? It was a joke. Good matter. Forget it. Uh, are we having a drink then? Oh, you'd never ask. Hi, mate. Kelly. I'm Des. Oh, hi, hi. Hi, hi. So what are we having then? Uh, Labour and blackcurrant, please. Same, please. Hi. No half. I was talking to him. Sorry. Yeah, I'll have a pint, yeah. Um, we'll get the drinks then. Which one do you fancy then? Neither. Hey, they're both all right, you know. Oh, you're a man of limited taste, Curly. Do you know what's just occurred to me? What? 
Well, Lisa Duckworth, she lives in Blackpool, doesn't she? Does she? Yeah. I'm sure of it. Hey, it would be weird if you turned round and there she was dancing next to us. No chance. Hey, you'd have to watch your kneecaps then, wouldn't you, Desi? Oi! I, I thought you were supposed to be buying the drinks. I am. I am. Then there's a tenner here. Listen, I'm shattered. I've got to get to bed. All right, love, off you go. Do you want me to get you a drink of anything? Oh, no, I'll be dead as soon as my head touches a pillow. Yeah, come here. It's all over. <clears throat> Forget it happened. Forget I ever had a son. It's a bad dream, that's what it was. And I love you. Always. OK. That's my girl. <laughs> oh, I've got to get some sleep. All right, darling, off you go. Sleep well. <laughs> Well, it's not for me, is it? It's a secret from me. But it's not for me. Forget you ever had a son. Like hell. Booze? No, no. Ice. Ice. Oh. Oh. Open this for us, will you? It was all right, breakfast, you know. Oh, you're paying for it. Mm. Well, breakfast, I mean. Yeah. You know, I didn't know whether to have the sausage and bacon and all that, or just have the kippers. Well, I have both at the end because no one says nothing, do they? <sighs> Leave it out, will you? You know I'm rough. Oh, you didn't have to put some away, Curly boy. Uh, what's your secret, anyway? Why are you so chirpy? Well, because once you got going, you started drinking mine and all. And this big bloke from Leeds started drinking his. Just about persuaded him not to kill you. You should have let him. <sighs> oh. No. I don't remember if you drank Tina's or not, but I do remember you eating the little umbrella out of it. There's no wood you're bad. Tina? Des? Did I, uh, Did I have a good time? Well, you obviously fancied her, and she didn't seem to mind, so I suppose you did. Oh, good. Are you going to be fit for this Christmas dinner of yours, then? Turkey and sprouts and all that. Uh -huh. You paid for it. Hey, you fancy walking the seafront? No, no, you go, you go. Leave me here, leave me here. All right. I'll see you later then. If you live. Have a nice walk. I will.
Hello, I'm, um... You don't have to tell me. Come on in, lad. I knew you were in the neighbourhood. I've got my spies, you know. We've been expecting you. Come on in. Oh, ta very much. They're all inside. Now, you won't recognise this, lad. Guess who it is? Hello? Hello. And you won't know these two. Auntie Sissy and Uncle Arthur. It's lovely to meet you. Hello there. I know it's a bit early, but seeing as it's Christmas, will you take a drop of sherry? Well, has been known, yeah. Thanks very much. He has a look at the Tlegons, hasn't he? He looks like one of the cannies. It's Charlie and Marge Rimmers, lad. Remember? He lived opposite, emigrated. You haven't uh, picked up the accent, have you? You don't sound Australian. No, I, uh, I think you might have the wrong fella. My name's Des. I didn't remember there being a Des. But didn't you have a sister? Now, what were her name? Um, well, uh, actually, I'm, I'm not from Australia. I'm a friend of uh, Lisa's from Manchester. Oh, are you? I'm sorry, you're obviously expecting someone. You're not a friend of the husband's, are you? Uh, no, no. Well, at least that's something. I am. Um, I never really had the opportunity to get to know him. There's many who wish they could say the same. I uh, lived over the road from her when she was in Weatherfield, and uh, you know, I just happened to be in Blackpool, so. You're not the fellow who lived over the road with the garden. Yeah, that's me. Oh, she said. She were very glad of that garden. She's walking Tommy if you want to see her. They'll be down by the front. I'm just giving the boy a present, that's all. That is not what you're doing. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, my. And what's that supposed to mean, eh, old Mike? Well, it's not just a present, is it? I mean, it's a great big paddle, and it's your paddle, and you're sticking it in. Because that's what you want, isn't it? I mean, you want to be in the picture. Here's my son. Well, what are you going to say? Hello, son. Here's your prezzy. I'm your dad. No. I mean, just forget about your other daddy because, well, he was nobody in particular. That is very insulting. Well, then what are you saying? Well, I'm going to say, uh, I've got a package to deliver. That's all. I'm the delivery man. Oh, well, I mean, you look just like the man from the Parcel Express, don't you? I mean, everybody knows they come round in a great big jag. The boy's got no father looking out for him. I can't sit there knowing that. He may not know that he's still got a father. I do. Hiya. Merry Christmas. I hope you don't mind. I was uh, I was just passing. Oh. No. No. Excuse me, please. Excuse me. Thanks for the present. I hope it's what you wanted. Oh, it said everything. It's a thought that counts. Here. Nothing. Same as I gave her. Does anyone over the age of five actually like Christmas? Here, Don. <laughs> What's up, then? Well, it's the season of goodwill to all men, isn't it? That includes you and me. So anyway, yeah. Uh, Merry Christmas. All right. Yeah, all right. Then go on. Merry Christmas. How are you getting on with the dribbling kit? Yes, yeah, sure, yeah. Here, yeah, listen, I'm glad I bumped into you. You can do me a great favour. Oh, yeah. You know that uh, cap you wear for the posh jobs? Can I borrow it for an hour or so, eh? Thank you. Yeah. So did you make it up with Terry at the end? No. I just stopped kidding myself. Have you ever thought that sometimes you fall for people and you sort of make them up. You think? Well, you see them, but 
you put together a picture that's different to what they're really like. Because you want them to be brilliant. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I woke up. I can see what he is now. It's a tough look on you. Took that to make me see it. Well, I don't mind getting a thumping if that's what it takes. You know, you see him visiting the other women, and it took him so long to realise that, that that's their life. And you know something? You always think that they're really looking forward to him coming out, but... I had a chat to this woman on the bus the other day, and she said to me, well, what's he going to do that's any different? She's dreading it. She hates him being in prison. But, like she says, she's learned to manage. She manages better when he's in. You know, he gets put in prison for beating people up. And what does he do? He has you done over. It's like he's saying to me, that's you. That woman on the bus. In 30 years' time, that'll be you. With the bad legs and living off social security. Well, it's not gonna be. Anyway, so you came up with Curla? Yeah. Well, we just thought we'd do something different, and uh, then I thought, well, as I'm here anyway, I, uh, I've got a present with me. Um, I might find someone to uh, give it to. Oh, Des. Thanks. Well, go on, then. Open it. Don't you want to see what it is? I already know. It's the best Christmas present I've ever had. Come on, Jack, time! Uh, it's not time. Look at that, we're five minutes yet. Has your watch been appointed by the brewery or what? Set by Greenwich, Luke. Well, then I suggest you go and sup in Greenwich, cos round here it's time when I say it's time. Right, lads and lasses, come on now, let's be having you. Eh, uh, are you dining with the other ladies, are you? Oh, I. Robert's return, Lonely Arts Club it is. Yeah, well, I should be a fully paid-up member of that society. Do you, uh, think I'm eligible, do you? I shouldn't think. Would you have go for a bit of turkey, do you think? No, I shouldn't think so. Oh, it's like a rat in it, gerbil. Really anything, oh, you? I don't like to think it's any kind of a rat. Oh, it is. Hey, isn't that right, a gerbil? It's a rat in it. Well, as far as I know, isn't that what they call a desert rat? Hey, Percy, did you hear that? He just got you a gerbil, he has. I beg your pardon. What a gerbil? It's a desert rat. Is he taking us like a different species of rodent altogether? <laughs> you can't see Rommel being flung back by Monty and his gerbils, can you? <laughs> <laughs> so what you need is a Toastmaster. Sorry, love. Master of the Revels. What you need for your dinner is uh, more than merely a token man. Somebody who has more than two bottles of Spanish champagne in the fridge. That's the way, love. Not to mention peaches in brandy. Blah, 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 blah. And a box of chocolate liqueurs you couldn't get red rum over. Just give me the word. Time. Come on, you lot, get up home. The Queen's waiting for you. Sorry, Reg, what were you saying? I could bring it over. Yes, well, let's get Christmas out of the way first and talk to me then. Yeah. Can we have your glasses, please? Right, come on, Jack. Drop that door open, get a draft going. It normally shifts up. By the way. Hey, uh, was that Reg Oldsworth trying to catch an invite? Yes. Yeah, he was with me. What'd you do? Made out I didn't twig. I just cracked on our daft. Oh, clever. I can never think of things like that, me. Time! Merry Christmas. I have a parcel for a master. Why are you wearing that stupid hat? And why are you wearing it here? Who is it? Oh, nothing. Somebody's just knocked at the wrong door.
Was that... My ball in. I'm not sure he didn't have a present for somebody. But all the same, I suggested he wasn't welcome. Thank you. That was absolutely right. Who was that? Who was that man? Nobody. Nobody. Carve this fella, Alf. No, no, I'll leave it to the ex All yours, kid. Uh, I know, just show him the gentleman if they can carve. Oh, here we go. You then. don't think that I could carve a turkey that Ivy could carve? Oh, well, come on, love, it's all yours. Do you think I'm a mug or what? I spent enough time stuffing it and cooking it. <laughs> I think she's trying to lumber you, Audrey. Oh, no, Tom. I'll all right, well, no complaining then, because I don't so much carve as demolish. Eh? I am to turkeys what Fred Dibner is to her factory chimneys. <laughs> but here we go. Absolute friends. Cheers. 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 Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Mm. He's lovely. Hey, there were always some old biddy, weren't there, on Christmas Day? Sniffing in her anky and saying, well, we're still here. <laughs> I, think, I think it's got round to me and you, Rita. Oh, no, no, no one can call you two a couple of old biddies. Well, not to our faces they couldn't, love. They've been eating splints. Oh. <laughs> they can say what they like about me. I'm glad of my life. I've been very lucky. Oh. Good health and fond memories. Memories. Oh, ignore us too. Right. I'll go and carve that turkey. Hey, I'll give you a hand. Here. Enjoy that, love, while you're young. Any more turkey, anybody? There's plenty. Right. I wouldn't say no. Look. Oh, oh have come on. Now you've been warned. You know you have. There's no fat on it. It's the finest thing you can have, is that? You've overtaxed your stomach already. Oh, yes, on half a bald in the bag kipper. That's what she served <laughs> up for breakfast. Hey, do you know, it's good for your heart, that is a kipper. Thank you, so. Ivy. But do you know, I've bought him an exercise bag, so here's me trying to keep him going. <laughs> yes, I've a choice between starvation and exhaustion. Oh. <laughs> is that the door? Nicky. I won't see if that's the door, though, yeah? Well, don't give him any gravy, girl, because he gets it down too easy with gravy, and then he gets all bloated. Do you know, if she can bar my pleasure, she's oh. happy. <laughs> it's only me. I'm going to oh, 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 the gold job first. Oh, I didn't realise you'd all be here. So many of you... You know, it's OK. Oh, it's a long story. But one way or another, the boat went without me. Oh, you little love. Well, anyway, come on in, love. Have we got another chair? Oh, don't, don't go to any trouble for me. No, oh, don't be silly. Come on. There's a stool in the kitchen. Oh, and I didn't use it. Well, look who it is. I'm, uh, sorry, mate. I might have known. Look, blame me. Well, it was her mum, really. She made me stop for dinner. You had a decent nosh, did you? Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Look, I said I'm sorry. I had a little table on my own in the corner. Fine. But then this woman spots me and takes pity on me. Look at that young man. Hasn't he got anybody? Let's get him over here to join us. So the waiter comes over and I say, no, 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 it's all right, it's all right. I'm fine. And then she comes over and she says, you can't have Christmas dinner. Not on your own. And the next thing, there's, there's waiters moving chairs and there's people utching up. And then there's a waitress setting a, a new place. Result, total public humiliation. I hate people with hearts of gold. Look, I've said I'm sorry, mate. I had to pull my cracker and wear my Christmas hat on my own in the company of total strangers who found me an object of pity. Look, honest, Kelly, mate, I'll make it up to you. But um, I went to see Lisa and, you know, just one thing and another. That's why we came to Blackpool, isn't it? 
Come on. No, no. Well. Oh, Kelly. Hey, we'll have a really good night out, eh? Lots of ale. You won't have to put your hand in your pocket, mate. So where did you come back last night? Well, Christmas Eve, at that hour. How would you ever? Oh, I suppose. Anyway, I didn't decide to come back. I just decided I wasn't going. Hang on, you decided you weren't going. But I, yeah, oh, I rang home to tell him the ferry would be late sailing. And the first thing my mother says is, Michael's here. And I just knew, I knew what that was all about. Mm, that's the boyfriend. Oh, he's the blue-eyed boy. And he'll come with a present. And my mother's saying, ah, isn't that lovely? And you're a fool if you let him go. And him with his prospects and everything. <laughs> And my dad's saying, well, you do as you like. But he'll be going to the door and it'll be, come in, Michael, and would you like a slice of the fatted calf the whole time? So I sat in Hollyhead and I watched the boat go. It's a bell. Three words, first word. Spider! Oh, uh, panic! Uh, uh, no. Drowning! Two, 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 second word, uh, one first bit. Word. Luke! Uh, <laughs> Luke! <laughs> Search. Search. Searching. Peering. Look, look, hey, look, looking. 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 Hi. Sounds like. It's. Oh, oh my God. Oh. 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 Um, Second bit. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh. Royal. Royal. <laughs> Royal. <laughs> Queen. Oh. Queen. Oh. oh. <laughs> seeking. Seeking. Desperately seeking Susan. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what they want. Well, it's a oh, thingy, wasn't it? Madonna! Oh, I love Madonna. When she brought corsets back, it made my day. <laughs> Phyllis, don't tell me you're going to start wearing a month outside. Hey, the world's not better to me yet with that. Hey, but I will do it if you'll give me some more of this. Oh, oh, oh. Do you know, it's funny, because they always say, police, we sniff their dogs. Hey. <laughs> No, see King Helicopters. Raquel mm. Love. Ooh, what are you on about? <laughs> well, you know, when anybody's lost around, they always say, <laughs> police, we sniff their dogs and see King Helicopters. <laughs> they never say sniffing dogs <laughs> <laughs> and sneak. <laughs> Still, but they could. Oh, Raquel Love. Thank you. What <laughs> for? For being down. <laughs> Oh, you've made my Christmas, <laughs> and I honestly didn't think I were going to enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> <Can you drink? laughs> Some shot. Oh, oh thanks so very much. You weren't watching it. We should have gone away, you know. We should. We wouldn't have had all this. Had all what? Look, if you thought better about giving him that present, you did the right thing. So stop thinking about it. Did you know she was going out with that Barlow? Well, when did you find that out? Well, when I knocked on the door. Oh, you knocked on the door, did you? Yeah, and there you are. He opened it. Well, that was news to me. Yeah, news to me too. Oh. Now I see what it's all about. Well, he's bought my son a present, hasn't he? So it's all right for Barlow to buy my son a present, but not me, is that it? Look, you're making too much of it. Too much of it? What, with Barlow moving in? Oh, for pity's sake, he's not moving in. He just called in at Christmas. Don't be ridiculous. He knew I was there, you know. He could have knocked me sideways when he opened that door. But not him. Well, you don't know how he felt. Do you really care about that little lad, Mark? Or is it all about you? He is my son. I don't want Barlow having anything to do with him. That I care about. Well, why do you think he'd want to? Well, why do you think he was here, eh? Because he knows that Mark's my son. Oh, that is ridiculous. Don't you ever, ever call me ridiculous. Ever. You are reading too much into it. It is ridiculous. Don't call me ridiculous. Merry Christmas. Oh, it's yeah, I don't want it's to. Gone. Carl, it's not on. I mean, we've, we've had this, haven't we? Don't I know we have this? Well, you know, what's all this business about, eh? I can't understand this, Lord. 
isn't easy for anybody. Do you think I don't understand? What do you mean it's not easy? Feel well, off my car's come off and you won't go back on. Yeah, all right, in a minute, Nikki. Just go and see your mother or something. Didn't I miss you? Did you miss me? You can wear your nice new jumpers that your Granny Ivy gave you. Goody. I'm not coming. Suit yourself. It's his own fault if he wants to miss out on a treat, isn't it, Sir Louise? Yeah. Where are we going, anyway? It's a secret. It's a magical mystery tour. Will there be any grub? Would there be a bouncy castle? All right, all right, I'll give you a clue. Uh, this isn't for you, Nikki. You're too big. It has something to do with T-O-Y-S. Time. Yes, yeah, so that's all you're getting to know for now. So, do we have the honour of your company, Master Nicholas? All right. Does Martin know where we're going? Of course he does. Who do you think's taking us? Nobody. I don't know why you want to open on a bank holiday. The sales are on. There'll be plenty of people about. Oh, can't resist the lure of the old chip fryer, right? Eh? Well, funny enough, I enjoy my job most days of the week. You're all the same. Why don't you make a New Year's resolution to jack the whole thing in? I mean, it's not as if we need it. Well, I need it. Oh, yeah, I forgot. That clammy little joint represents your independence. You know, you're right patronise a little sod when you want to be, aren't you, Baldwin? Now, I may have a bit of a hangover, darling, but am I missing something here? I mean, why are we arguing? Correction, why are you arguing? I'm going to be late. Didn't I bust a gut to make this an extra special Christmas for you? No, you did not. All I kept hearing was, I wish my son were here. Now, when did I say that? Eh? Well, you didn't have to, did you? It was written all over your face. You know, I begged you not to go round to Maggie's place. I knew it'd stir up trouble. Only because that swine Barlow was there. Yes, well, it took you long enough to tell me about it, didn't it? Look, knocking on the door and having him open it wasn't exactly one of the highlights of my life. And why was he there in the first place, anyway? Look, just leave it alone, Mike. Leave them alone. It's all in the past. Oh, for God's sake! He's my flesh and blood. Don't you understand anything? Oh, more than you think. And you wonder why I value the comparative sanity of making chip butties. <laughs> <laughs> so how was it for you, ladies? Tons of naughtiness underneath the mistletoe? Well, I can't speak for what went on at Chez Wilton, but round at my place it was just us gals. Uh, by choice. We did have a man panting for our company if we'd have wanted one. One of Raquel's muscle-bound admirers trying to gate crash. One of Rita's, actually. Mm -hmm. Game over. Reg holes with them fancy in orangutan if it wore a miniskirt and lipstick. Hey, don't <laughs> tell me he left poor old Reg to eat the turkey on his own. Shame on you. Oh, talk about the pot calling the flaming kettle. What about you and your lanky pal swanning off without him? We got the last two bookings, my eye. <laughs> yeah, rotten of us, that, wasn't it? We were both guilt-stricken, but you... Well, you try not to let it spoil things. You mean you manage to enjoy yourself in spite of your conscience? Fantastic, I'm ashamed to say. You're not. You're right, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I've always fancied one of those inclusive breaks myself. You know, everybody being jolly over the mulled wine sort of thing, but... Derek's not a group person. Whereas I am, I'm more gregarious. Were you in a group? Only a very intimate one. See you, ladies. ta -ra. There goes a fella who looks like he found something more than an orange in his Christmas stocking. <laughs> ah! I wish you could come with us, Gail. <laughs> <laughs> I know you'd worry about um, leaving Amber on Oh, own. hey, it's the customers I'm worried about. Mike's probably thrown that much booze down her. She won't know her uh, fried onions from her cream buns. <laughs> well, I don't know why you're even discussing it. I've told you. I'm not going. Hey, I don't mind, honest. And the kids are looking forward to it, aren't you? Yay! Yay! Well, you've no business promising to take them anywhere, Carmel, without asking me first. Yeah, you're yeah, right. I just got carried away with wanting to give them a treat. What with you all giving me such a lovely Christmas when I landed on you the way I did? I'm sorry, Gail, I didn't mean any harm. No, it's all right, Carmel. Take the notice of him. He's just in one of his moods. I don't know why you're making such a fuss about. Anyway, you can't disappoint him now. Thanks very much, love. Thanks, Thanks much. Set out. Well. 
You're on your own? Ah, uh, yeah. Audrey said she'd be in later. She doesn't like leaving Alf on his own too long at the moment. He's still not 100%. I'm not surprised that Lamp of Lard has trouble with his stomach the way he guzzles. Festivities haven't changed you from your normal, sympathetic, caring self, has he? Is there any truth in the rumour that your ex has found himself a new lady friend? Even if I knew, it's hardly any business of yours. Fine, I'll ask Tracy. She'll tell me. She hasn't got your paranoia. Don't you dare ask Tracy. And I've got every reason to be paranoid where you and Ken are concerned. Simple question wasn't exactly breaching the Official Secrets Act. That's not the point. Ken's private life is his own affair. Not if he's going out with the mother of my son, it's not. Uh huh. He is seeing Maggie then. I believe they know each other. And don't give me that he's just Mark's teacher rubbish. If he's sleeping with her, we both know why, don't we? You're disgusting. Morning. I hope you both had a nice Christmas. Oh, uh, yeah, very pleasant, thanks. Mm. Well, ours was quite nice. Though I must admit, I didn't quite fancy it at first, with it just been all girls together. But we had a good laugh in the end. Though it's not something I care to make a habit of. I like a man around the place, me. Makes companies more natural, isn't it? Else, why would God have made Adam and Eve? He'd have just have made two Eves. Well, two Adams. <laughs> oh, I bet you had a smashing time, didn't you, Mr Baldwin? Do you know, it must be ever so romantic, your first Christmas as a married couple. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. It was your average family Christmas. Kids arguing. I mean, Don about as cosy as a pair of porcupines. Yeah. Alf moaning because Audrey had only a lime half portions. Oh, yeah. In the middle of it all, Ireland's answer to Mary Poppins walked back in. Apart from that, it was more. Hey, I thought Carmel was still in Ireland. So did we. Go on, then. Make me totally jealous. Show me all the jewels he's festooned you with. Oh, no, not this Christmas. Oh, Alma, it's not too bad, is it? Oh, you know what? You did be so special after the lousy Christmas I had last year. Mike broke his word. Well, he never really gave it. I mean, he's too canny for that. He had made his mind up he was going to take that kid a present and nothing was going to stop him. Even knowing how you felt about it. Well, he might know it, but he doesn't understand it. I no longer believe my husband understands what I feel. Well, maybe now he's taking it, that'll be an end to it. Oh, no, no. He didn't get the chance. Ken Barlow opened the door and told him to get lost. Ken Barlow? Mm. What was he doing there? Well, who knows? I mean, she probably asked a few people round for drinks. I mean, here's Mark's teacher. Sounds reasonable. Hey, you don't believe that any more than I do. Do you know, I knew he was going out with somebody. Didn't take mastermind to work out, too. Well, there's one good thing. Go on, cheer me up. Mm -hmm. Maybe Mike won't be so keen to go around there now that he knows Ken Barlow might be in residence. Do you know, kiddo, you're more of an optimist than I am. How are you today? Oh, I can't wait to see her in you. this. I told my mum she was dead extravagant, but you know she is about <coughs> grandchild. Yeah, her only grandchild. Yeah, she can yeah. never say that without saying a word only. She's took a degree in every inch in your mother. Thank Don't be nasty. You can't blame the wanting more when the first one's as gorgeous as this. Yeah, if we had any more, it'd turn out a right little order. Take you. after its mother. Hey, any more of that and we're not taking him with us, are we? <laughs> Why? Where are we going? Well, I don't know. The park, the sales, the precinct. Anywhere where I can show Madam off in this new posh outfit. Yep, yep. <laughs> Shall we try it on, Rosie? Yeah. Why? Well, that makes it. Come on in. Okay. Hiya. Hi, Martin. Listen, uh, <clears throat> we're going to the big toy sale in town, so I just wondered if you lot fancy joining us. Oh, I thought girls said they were opening up the cafe today. Oh, well, they are, yeah. It's just uh, me and Carmel you know, and the kids. No, thanks, Martin. We've made other arrangements. Come on. Cool. All right. Martin, come on, we're waiting. Yeah, all right, I'm coming. Well, have a nice day then. Yeah, see you, Martin. Bye. See you. Later. What was all that about? Made other arrangements. We've got nothing planned. He said Carmel was going. So? Well, I want no more to do with that girl than I have to. And I certainly don't want to spend a whole day with her. What time are we going out? Just as soon as you put a decent pair of shoes on. Oh, Mum! Never mind our mum. You're not going out with us in those filthy old trainers. No one's going to see you because it'll be dark in the pants hole and I'll have my feet under the table at the restaurant. Don't argue with me. Just go. <sighs> Why are kids so determined to look scruffy all the time? Maggie, have you decided what to do about Baldwin? I don't have to do anything about him. I've got it in writing that he'll stay away from Mark till he's 18. After that, well, it'll be up to Mark. No, well, that says it all. Any man who signs away the right to see his own son doesn't deserve to have children. Well, to be honest, he wasn't very happy about it. But he had no choice, and he still doesn't. Then why did he come round on Friday? Oh, I expect he'd heard that Harry died, and he thinks things will be different. And will they? 
Look, as far as Mark's concerned, Harry was his father. That's the way it's going to stay. <sighs> I feel a proud where we need. said anything to Madame Duckworth? Only that while we were in Blackpool, you spent most of your time canoodling with her daughter in law, leaving me to spend Christmas with a load of drunken nutters. Apart from that, no, nothing. You'll just keep it button watch, that's all. I don't need any more aggro from that direction. I thought you didn't care what Vera thinks. I don't. But Lisa does. Still a mother in law, unfortunately. I thought you were pleased the girl was staying there. Oh, well, I was at first. I mean, she's a lodger, but she's perfectly willing to help out. And, I mean, Gail's got enough on her plate with three kiddies on a full-time oh, job. But now she's got herself installed. She's not pulling her weight, eh? That's an old story. I once had no pair like that. Oh, get her old pair. <laughs> there had to be some perks being a rich man's plaything. <laughs> this Birgitta couldn't do enough for the first few weeks. Then she found her feet and the local wine bar. And believe you me, it was an old different ball game. Oh, no. Well, if anything, Carmel does too much. I mean, if a stranger knocked at that door, they'd think it was her house. Aha! Uh -huh. really? Veritable uh -huh. garland of lovely ladies. Might I have the honour of buying you a seasonal beverage? Uh, not for me. I've supped enough to last me through to New Year. Oh. Ta. Not for me either, thanks. I've got to get back to work. Well, I thought your saloon was closed today. I'm doing an old client a favour, Poppet. She's going away tomorrow and you can't go cruising to Madeira with black roots. Can you, girls? <laughs> <laughs> By the echo, what mind swapping places with her hot water bottle one four winters mate? Dream on, Jacko. Yeah, now, come on, don't be telling me you'd chuck out your double bed in order, mate. Oh, I dare say she could persuade me. It's a dirty card's right. Aye, if I was an happily married man... Well, a married man, you would have no chance of coming. Do you reckon so? I know so, because that filly is choosy. That's why she's all her tortious. It couldn't possibly be, because there's nobody worth fancying round here. Oh, don't fellas delude themselves. Uh... You won't. I bet every time Jacko looks in the mirror, he sees a Chippendale. She's very tasty. Uh, a verde vin rouge, pour moi, Jackie, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> you won't. A glass of red wine. Did you not do French at school? No, as I was saying, did they go for the men of experience, you see? No, Jacko here reckons he could pull our new resident hairstylist if he didn't have handicap. Oh, his age is Vera. Well, as a matter of fact, I have made a couple of overtures to the lady myself, which I flatter myself for not falling entirely on uh, stony ground. Well, I'll tell you what Doug fancies chances. I'll make a boot. Both have a crack at it, see who's fast past the post. <laughs> did you hear that? <laughs> the betting on a body now. I shall give them a piece of my mind. Don't do that, Petal. For one thing, you can't spare it. For another, I've got a much better idea. Ah, don't they look a picture? Oh, do you think it'd be all right if I took a photo of the kids with that? Oh, I'm sure they would. Why don't you go with them? George will take it for you. Oh, that's very oh, kind. It'd be Thank a pleasure. You. It's just there. Oh. Right. Thanks. Come on, Matt. Uh, no, leave me out of this. Just take the kids, eh? Oh, no. You must have Daddy in. Go on. Come on. OK. Now, I don't know all set. Cheese! Cheese! <laughs> there we Thank are. You. Thank you very much. Uh.
Oh, you've a lovely family. You and your husband must be very proud of them. We are. <laughs> now, they've got some very nice things here. I hope you have a lovely day. You certainly will. Right, come on. Let's go and choose what you want. One thing each. Anything up to five pounds. <laughs> come on. You can't afford that. Do you know, you sound like they've got more than enough already. It's to thank them for being so lovely to me at Christmas. Oh. Everybody has. Especially you. Uh, Nicky, will you take David to play with them aeroplanes over there, them he likes, and uh, will you take Sarah uh, Louise with you? And don't break anything. All right. See you in five minutes. Look, Carla, I think it's about time we put an end to this fantasy of yours once and for all. You're not being fair to Gail, you know. You are. You've not told her about the other night, have you? Of course I've played with not. I realise it's painful, Martin, but she'll have to know about her sooner or later. For the last time, Carla. There is no us, right? I'm not your husband. They aren't your kids. There's nothing going on. How do you get that into your head? These things are never easy. But the quicker you get it over with, the better for everybody. What do you mean, everybody. these things? There are no things. You know, are you completely bar me or what? Only about you. Oh. You're the kindest, most decent man I've ever known. When I first came here, not knowing a single soul, I used to cry myself to sleep every night. But then I met you and everything changed. Come on being friendly, so, you know, people can be nice to other people, you know, without it meaning they're madly in love with them. I know that. Oh, good. But there was a spark lit the moment we set eyes on each other, and you know that too in your heart. Martin, when you come in... I'll be with you in a minute, Nicky, OK. <clears throat> go on. Uh, what have you done with David? Do you share? Well, I thought I told you to look after him. Oh. Well, go on. Go on. <sighs> look, come on. I'll give you one last chance, OK? Right? If you move out of the house first thing tomorrow, well, I'm going to go to that course tutor and I'm going to tell her what's going on. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to write to your mum and dad and tell them if needs be. No, there's no need for that. And there's every need, Carmel, if you don't stop this flaming nonsense. Hey, come on, we're off. Aww. Oh, no buts. Come on, we're off. Oh, cool. What? Tomorrow. All right? Be fair to yourself, Gail. How long have you been moaning on about that little Irish cuckoo in the nest? Too long. She goes in the next couple of days or I put my foot down. Yes, which you are more than capable of doing with the utmost firmness, and I've got the scars to prove it. Mm. Mm. Not so easy with someone like her. Mm, count yourself lucky. Unwanted lodges are a sight easier to get rid of than long-lost sons. Ah, oh, come on, you don't mean that. Nah, I don't wish the boy any harm. I'm beginning to cope with the idea now that Mike's got a son. What worries me is his flaming obsession with Ken Barlow. I mean, of all the women in the world. Why did Ken have to walk into Maggie, whatever her name's, <laughs> gin joint? I won't ask to share the joke, don't you two? It must be dirty. Cup of tea? No, thanks. I just popped in to say, don't bother waiting for me for supper tonight. I could be late. Hey, listen. I'm sorry I was in such a bad mood this morning. I uh, told Gail all about Mark, obviously. Yeah, obviously. Hey, but listen, love, I mean, his mum's made it clear that she doesn't want any contact, and, well, I prefer it that way, so will you just promise me something? Leave it alone for now, OK? Yeah, OK, point taken. See you later. Ciao, girl. Well, that's all right, then. You know, it's a terrible thing to say about your own husband, but why is it? I just don't believe him. Go, darling. Cheers. Reggie, buy you a drink. I'm otherwise engaged. Thank you, Norman. Sorry about this, but there's only so many excuses in a girl's repertoire. Thank you, Reg. That's Cheers, very kind Reg. of you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, he told you where you could shove your olive branch. What, with him giving me the cold shoulder at work and Angie's handyman practically moving in at home? You know, I wish we'd stayed away. Oh, I. Oh, did you two see anything of Lisa while you were in that? <laughs> down, Mega Mouth. I beg your pardon. Oh. There's no call to be insulting, and for your information, Wayne thinks I've got a lovely mouth. He says I've got a perfect Cupid's bow. In fact, he thinks I've got a perfect everything. 
I think you need a second opinion. Mind you, I'll have to do a bit of in-depth research. Research? On what? On what keeps a woman happy, my little stocking top. Yeah, well, I'll describe it to you. I've got to remember what it looked like. I think she means your wage packet, Jack. Right, Vera? Yeah, right. It's got no else that'd bring a smile to my face. Hiya. Hiya. I thought you might like to know, Flower. Three so-called gentlemen of our acquaintance are running a book on who will be first to be invited into your boudoir. Reg Holdsworth and who else? Jack and Duff. Flaming chic. Give young Raquel a due. She was all in favour of sorting him out. But I told her. I reckon Denise here is the sort of girl who can handle him. Oh, yes. I think I can be relied upon to give them all a moment they'll never forget. You're working tomorrow, and the young man here is ready for bed, I think. I'm tired. Oh, your head was practically falling in the chocolate mousse. <laughs> but we've had a lovely day. We've both enjoyed it. Yeah, it was brilliant. Thanks, Ken. My pleasure. You go on in, Mark. I'll be in a little tick. I meant it. It's been a wonderful day, and we've had a wonderful Christmas, thanks to you. Well, I should be thanking you. I was pretty traumatised when we met, and, well, you brought me to life. But you exaggerate. Only a bit. <laughs> Night, Ken. I'll call you tomorrow. Bye. Tell me I left my brolly in your... What the hell do you want? That's not very friendly, Maggie. You're wasting your time. I thought that was made perfectly clear to you the other day. Yeah, but I wanted to talk to the organ grinder, not the monkey. Well, it would have been exactly the same if Ken hadn't been here. We've nothing to say to each other. I told you that a long time ago. A lot of things have happened since then, sweetheart. Harry's kicked the bucket for a start. As sensitive as ever, I see. And don't call me sweetheart. Look. I'm tired. I really don't no, need this. No, listen a minute, just a minute. There's still the boy, our son. My son? You've no claim on him. You agreed that when he was born. I never gave up any claim on him. I just promised to keep out the way till he was 18, that's all. Fine, you've got another seven years to wait. Yeah, exactly my point. He's 11 years old. They had that age needs a father, like me. You are the last person Mark needs. Well, if you've got any thoughts of Barlow filling that role, let me tell you something, sweetheart. There's only one reason that slimy toad's hanging around, and it's nothing to do with your pretty face. It's me he's trying to get at. If you weren't my child's mother, he wouldn't look at you twice. Do you know she wouldn't even talk to me? Slap me round the face, would you believe that? All I wanted to say was there's no need for the boy to grow out there the father, because I'm here. I'm the father. Why didn't you tell me you were going round there? Tell you? Oh, well, it was a spur-of-the-moment thing. Anyway, never mind about that. You tell me something. What is wrong with that woman, eh? Oh, there's something wrong with her, is there? Yeah. Why? Because she didn't want you forcing your way back into her life after 11 years. Forcing? I'm not interested in her. It's my son that I care about. Oh, yeah, why? Why? Yeah, why? Why now, all of a sudden? I mean, it couldn't be because his mum's going out with Ken Barlow, could it? Well, what's that got to do with it? Oh, Mike. It's got nothing to do with it. I'm interested in my son. And I'll tell you another thing. I seem to be the only one round here that is. Oh, yes, you <laughs> are interested in him. I would say that you are more than interested in him. I'd say that you were obsessed. Obsessed? Well, you've already made a fool of yourself twice by going round there. I mean, when are you going to get it into your thick head that they don't want you? Oh, you prefer I didn't care, eh? You prefer oh. I said, well, who the hell is this kid anyway? I mean, why should I care what sort of life he leads, eh? Oh, I don't know what I prefer. Look, I've got to go. I'm going to be late. Hey, just a minute. Hang on. I mean, if I can't say these sort of things to you, who can I say them to? 
You are my wife. Oh, I'm your wife. Oh, you remember that, do you? Well, it's a pity I'm not the mother of your son, because that way you might find time to think about me and what I want, instead of worrying about them all the time. Oh. Uh, this is just to keep us going, so I can see get out to do a proper shop. Okay. I'll come here with that, as long as somebody does. Right, come on, see you. Bye. 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 And remember, there's um, um, a pile of washing in the machine. What's putting into the drop? It will. Mm. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 And so I am. I, it's all right, Martin. I know we can't carry on as well. So what are you going to do then? You're going to go back to London. Oh, listen, do you know what happened this morning? Sarah Louise wakes up and she says, I was dreaming I was a nurse like you and Martin. And we all went to do an operation on Nippy, but he screamed and screamed and wouldn't lie still. Till in the end we said, I'll go on with you. We'll operate in someone so else. So what's going to be, Carmel? The bed sits up or the nurse is on. Ooh. Which do you think is best? I don't know. You tell me. Well, the nurse's home. I mean, everybody knows your business. You've got no privacy. So it's the bedsitter then, right? OK. W where are you going? Just wait there. <laughs> That's £4.20 then, please. There Thanks. You go. And I won't get to read a single one of them. Oh, are these for your customers then, aren't they? Yeah, for them to take home if I'm not careful. No. You wouldn't believe how many slip them into their bags. Then if I mention it, they say, oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't thinking. <laughs> well, it's easily done, isn't it? <laughs> Only with a lot of practice. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, well, the field gives it, please. Uh, well, uh, it's last week's. Didn't we deliver you Yeah, one? you deliver one. It's just that oh, it got... It, it doesn't matter, I love it. All Thanks. All right, bye. So, uh, you're keeping busy then, I love. Today's steady, but tomorrow... Oh, well, it is New Year's Eve, isn't it? Yeah, and they'll all want the roots doing for that. Mm -hmm. And then I probably won't see a soul for a week. Ah, oh, well, that's when you catch up with your reading. <laughs> ta <-ra. laughs> See you, ta -ra. Uh, and be sure and brush your teeth, a pair of you, and wash your hands as well, right? Right, here we go. Sit down. I was just going to see you to David. It's all right, I'll see you, David. Oh, where are we? Ah, here we go. Rent and accommodation, yeah? Yeah. Right, well, there you go. Must be about 20 there, Carmel. So what I'll do is I'll leave you that. The phone's over there. I'll see you the kids and I'll take them out so you'll have no distractions and you can concentrate on finding yourself a bedsitter, OK? Yeah. Good. Uh, I'm putting you to a lot of trouble, aren't I? Oh, no, 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 Carmel. You find yourself somewhere to live and we'll get you moved in and then... Well, then there'll be no more trouble for anybody, will there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Got a minute? Uh, yeah. Let's sit down, shall we? How's it going? Ah, that's bad, yeah. Right, tell up. Hey, do I think we've forgotten Nicky's birthday? In fact, we were thinking of popping over tonight, if that's OK. Yeah, of course it is. I think she's still wet to him, then, eh? Yeah, that's tired. I've been thinking about what you said. Oh, I wish you wouldn't. You know, I wish I'd never opened my mouth. You're right, I am obsessed, but not with Bonnet. Well, if you say so. I'll say something else as well when I'm at it, but it's definitely not with Maggie. No? Yeah. Whatever you think, you mustn't think that. No, I don't. I don't, honestly. It's just that, uh, well, I don't know, I feel responsible for the lad. It's not a crime, is it? No, it's not a crime, but... But what? Well, Maggie is his mother. So, I mean, she has got a right to decide what he's told and what he's not told. I mean, she wants him to go on thinking the man that she was married to was his father. Well, you just got to accept that. Yeah, but why does she want that? You see, that's what I don't understand. Well, I don't know. I mean, I've never even spoken to the woman. But I suppose she thinks he's had enough upset in his life and she doesn't want some stranger wandering up to him saying, Hello, son, I'm your dad. <laughs> I wouldn't say it like that. No, knowing you, you'd probably offer him your business card. Hey, listen, I've got to go. Yeah, just a minute. Listen, uh, what I came to say was we're not going to fall out over all this again, are we? No, I do. Oh, not to hate you when we do. I just want to curl up and hide. Because you're right, you know, I am obsessed. Do you know who I'm obsessed with? Don't you? Is she about uh, five feet tall and dark hair? And big brown eyes. No, no, I can't think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I hope I haven't stopped you doing anything. No, no. Delighted when you're right. Good. Come on in. Sit down. Only, you know when you dropped us off here last night? Well, guess who was sitting outside in his big car waiting for his chance?
Baldwin. Mr. Baldwin. Oh, hi, hi, Mark. Oh, it's just sandwiches and crisps for lunch. I'll bring some through in a minute, OK? Yeah, OK. So, what happened? Well, he, he caught me up on the doorstep and he, he started on about how he was Mark's rightful father. Oh, with Mark there? No, no, I, I got Mark inside, thank God. And then, me and Mike, we exchanged a few words and... I ended up slapping him across the face. Oh, <laughs> well done. Oh, I'm not so sure about that. Oh, yes, anything that removes that self-satisfied smirk has to be a good thing. But, um, anyway, what, uh, what exactly did he come to say? Look, I better get Mark that sandwich. You'll have something, won't you? Yeah. yeah come on through. Thanks, Will. Hey, these fellas that were fancying the chances, any of them made a move yet? No. I'm a bit disappointed, tell you the truth. I think you'd be even more disappointed if it ever did come to out. <laughs> hey, oh. Hey, get him to bring me change over. Only if you I keep me fully informed. I will, I will. Uh, two pints, please, when you're ready. Two pints? Yes. No, basically what it is, right, I, I'm allowed money to live on, but I can't get credit, I can't open a business under my own name, and that is all sorts I can't do. Yes, but you can still stand your round, though, can't oh, you, eh? Hey, no, I definitely can't do that. You know, I might declare myself bankrupt. Sounds a right good dude, doesn't it? Excuse me, gents. Denise over there forgot to change. You couldn't one of you give it to her, could yeah, you? Yeah, I, I will, yeah. Wanting to burn some folk. Not even bother putting the change up. Oh, thanks. Do you know, that's typical. I shouldn't be allowed out without a labour arm and neck giving me a dress and phone number. Hey, that'd be useful, yeah. That I'd know where to find you. I didn't know you were looking. I've seen you around. And I've seen you. Look, say no if you want to, but tomorrow, New Year's Eve, uh, I wonder if we might not see the new year in together, yeah? No. Ah. Oh, only because I'll be totally exhausted by then. I won't be able to stand. Well? As well as the fact, well, this year it's been such a disaster in terms of relationships. I'd sooner see it dead and gone before I'm embarked on another. Mind you, if you were to ask me again January 1st. Yeah. Do you think you could wait that long? Yeah, yeah. So what? Friday then, yeah? Friday. See you then. You will. What? There's your pint. Cheers. Hey, never mind about being bankrupt. What's money, eh? Who needs it? <laughs> I said, well, if Mark does need a father, then it's certainly not going to be you. And he said, oh, it's going to be Barlow, is it? And then he said, did I realise that you were only interested in me because, oh, what with Mark being his son, it gave you a way of getting back at him. Crazy. Oh, yes. I mean, you know that's nonsense, don't you? For one thing, when I met you, I didn't know that Mark was your son. I know, I know, Ken. I'm just telling you what he said. It's revealing, though, isn't it? It just shows how his little mind works. Because he's scheming and devious. He assumes that everybody else is. We've all got to have ulterior motives. I mean, he's married now, didn't you say? Yeah. Well, then why doesn't he just leave me alone? <laughs> he will. We'll make sure he does. I had a dream last night. I dreamt he'd stolen Mark, kidnapped him. Oh, no. I woke up and I had to go into his room, make sure he was still there. Oh. Look, I'll go and see Baldwin. Oh, no, no, Ken, I I'm not asking no, you. No, I know you're not asking. It's not fair. It's got nothing to do with you. No, but it has. Just think about it. Until we got together, Baldwin didn't turn up, did he? I mean, it's the last thing I dreamt of, the last thing I want. No. I'm the one who dragged him back into your life. The least I can do now is to make sure he gets the hell out of it. <laughs> on the phone and I found only one out of the whole list of them that was still vacant. So I said, will you hold it for me if I come round and see it straight away? Hi, Don. Hello. Oh, hello. And she said, yes, so I hop on a bus because it was the other side of town. And when I get there, she opens the door and she says, oh, I'm sorry, but it's gone. There's somebody else been and taken it since you phoned. Oh, it's a bit of a cheek. So I had to get another bus back again and all for nothing. Was this a flat you're after? <laughs> yes, it was. I wasn't after it fast enough. Right, that's uh, 6.43, please, oh, love. Great. 
Uh, and the space for your t uh, nurses on, then? I know nothing. I burnt my boats there. <laughs> well, shouldn't think Gail will throw you out on the street. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> Especially not when you're doing a shopping for her. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, love. Thank you. Thanks. No, just the same resolution I try and make every new year. Well, to try and be a nicer person. More patient with people. With me, you mean? No, not just you, with everybody. No, oh, I couldn't do that. Lose a bit of weight, that's all I'm aiming uh -huh. at. Let's ask Des. Ask Des what? What resolutions are you making for New Year? Oh, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. 25, maybe, yeah? Mm, thank you. Uh, Taking a vow of chastity. Is that going to be it? Be no point. I wouldn't be giving out up. Oh, oh come on. No, this is, this is going to be the year. Huh? Going to be the year when I finally get round to sorting out my back garden. See ya. Well, now, we know. <laughs> See you, lady. See ya, draw. Yes. Uh, sorting out his garden. <laughs> I believe that when I see it. Yes, now, come on, get all that badness out of your system, because, you know, after Friday, you won't be able to say things like that. Mama! I'm in here! Oh, good, gotcha. What? Get your penny up, we're eating out. Oh? Anywhere you like, as long as that's all right with you. Well, what's all this in here, then? Well, nothing. I just thought it'd be good for us, you know, a nice romantic evening. And I promise you, not another word about, well, you know what. Oh, listen, there is just one thing I want to mention that I thought of after you'd gone this morning. Well, you don't know that Ken knows that Mark is your son. I mean, she may not have told him. Why should she? Oh, I'll be very surprised if she hasn't. Yes, but you don't know that, do you? I mean, well, it is a possibility. Mm, so it's now in August. Now he knows why. That's why he's there, don't you see? That's what makes Maggie attractive. That's his way of getting back at me. Oh, OK, look, look, we don't like you, so we just won't mention it. Yeah, and he teaches that boy, so I know all about him before he knew about her. Don't, oh, you, don't you see that? please, Mike. Well, you're the one that said you wanted to talk about it. Yes, well, look, I don't know. So am I going to get all dolled up? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you said anywhere I like? Anywhere you like, on one condition. What? It's expensive. See, oh, stumble. Yeah. I'll get that. Please, the water done. Oh, hi, Ken. Hi, hi. Uh, uh, sorry if I'm disturbing you. Oh, of course not. Come in. Thank you, Ken. Take care. Did you, uh... Have a good Christmas? Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, for me, yeah, I'm not very good at Christmases. What about you? Well, it was quiet, yeah. Good, good. I suppose Rosie's a bit young to appreciate it. Oh, you? she hasn't got a clue. You could have told her it were bonfire night and she wouldn't have known the difference. Yes. Drink, Ken? Uh, no, no, I won't. Thanks oh, so go on. We don't see you in here that often. Yeah, have a whiskey. Go on. Uh, oh, all right, go on then. Just a tiny, yeah, minuscule yeah. even. <laughs> I think I'll have one with you. Just to be sociable, mind you. <laughs> okay. uh, no, while I was calling, uh, I wonder if you could let me have the address of your employer. Can we go the stairs? Can I go up the stairs? Not yet. Not yet. She's unavailable, Martin. You heard what she said. I heard it, yeah. <coughs> you surely don't think she's lying. Why I'm would she do that? I'm not saying she is lying. Stop looking so miserable about it, then. We don't want Carmel thinking what we do. Uh-oh. Here comes Grandma. Carmel get her a bed or something. <laughs> Maybe in the house of Hebrides or something. Yeah. Hi, Don. Hi, hi. Hi, Martin. Yeah, all right, Don. How's yourself? Ah, uh, no uh, complaints, mate. We just called to uh, say hello and wish you a birthday. Oh, uh, by the way, Carmel, you know you said you were having no joy looking for a flat. Oh, my bad, sir. That's all I was asking. Yeah, that's yeah. Only, he's a mate of mine on cabs and he's got a couple, so I rang him and, uh, well, there's one going begging if you want it. Oh, thanks. Right, look, that's the address and the telephone number. Right. Uh, actually, there'll be somebody there now if you want to try. Oh. Thanks very much. Uh, do you mind if I use the phone? Hey, Carmel, help yourself. Tell him it was me, give you a number. Don Brennan. <laughs> well, I heard it. I had a morning in shop. I thought the only way is you can't find anyone is it's because you're not looking. What you need, lady, is a gentle kick up the backside. Hey, I know you want to Yeah? Yeah? Great! Oh, Come on, then. Let's get you up to the Oh, oh, oh it's a good sign. Good boy. Oh, good night, Daddy. Good night. Is he going, then? Hello. No, I don't know. Listen, Gail, can I go with you? It's a long time since I've seen him in bed. And it's going to be your bedtime as well in a minute, young lady. Can I have a story? Well, yes, you can. In fact, hey, I tell you what, wait for your grand to come down. She'll read you one. Yeah, go on. You, you go choose her one. That's a good idea. Hey, uh... You didn't say how to girl, did you? But, you know, what you're talking about. Well, not really, no. I mean, I'm not saying she wouldn't believe me, though. There's no point risking it. No, no. No, no, there isn't. Not if you don't have to. Well, with any luck, Cam will get this bedsitter and that'll be the last you'll see of her. Uh, to get through, love? Yeah, I'm going round to see it on Friday. They promised they'd keep it for me till then. Well, if they promise they will, love, you've got no worries on that score. Well, uh, thanks for all your help. Ah, it's a pleasure, love. So, beer done? All right. What's going to happen when you get to Friday? I haven't decided yet. 
but something that they'll all three remember. Three? Reg, Doug? And Jack. According to you, he had as much to say as the other two. Oh, I always has. That's his wife over there, you know. You'll not get much out of him while she's around. We'll see, shall we? Hey, up. Oh. Rambo's here. Would you like me to subtly let him know where you are? Oh, I wouldn't be too subtle, otherwise he might miss it. And then, I tell you what. Quite a bit of Jack. Good evening, ladies. Good evening. Good evening. Keeping well, are we? Keeping well out of your way. Ah. Hey, that would a good one. Eh? Raquel, can you get me a white wine and soda for Denise, please, love? Oh, right, Denise, yeah. Denise, where is she? Oh, yes, yes. I'll get that, Jack. Can't have a lady buying her own drinks, can we? Oh, what a gent. Yeah, didn't have to buy us one, though, did they? Well, that's because we're not ladies, Vera. At least we're not available ladies, which is what I really mean. Right, right. Right. That's 257 altogether. Personally, I think you're wasting your time because it's uh, it's going to cost you a lot more than a white wine and soda to get what you're after, pal. Well, of course it is. It's going to require charm and a certain animal magnetism. <laughs> Jack, which I will now demonstrate. What to learn? Uh. Who's he making a nuisance of himself with now, then? It's Denise. Do you know, I think he's more hormones than anybody else, you know. <laughs> never stops, even at work. And you'll have a word with him, see where he gets his energy from. See if you can get out the same tablets. There's no time need to ask him about it. Oh, you're joking. Do you know, when we were caught in, he used to plead with me, beg me to have his evil way with me. <laughs> and now he locks himself in the bathroom, so I can't get out the same. Do you mind, Vera? Is he no private? There's not worth keeping private about you. Not anymore. No, I was, um, I was wondering if we couldn't see the New Year in together. Your place or my place or uh, any old place, really. Oh, the trouble is, everything I've touched this year has been such a disaster. I'd sooner wait until we're in the New Year before I touched anything else. Touched anything else? So if you could just wait a few more hours? Wait till, loud. Uh, New Year's Day. Well, unless you've something else on. No, no, I've nothing on. Oh, <laughs> listen to me. Nothing on. That's a naughty thought, isn't it? Well, I know I won't have anything on then either. <laughs> <laughs> well, she said give her two minutes. Why? What's going on? Oh, just toying with men, raising the hopes, leaving them all frustrated and disappointed. You know, the way that you do. Jacko? Yes, boss? Tell Denise there's somebody on the phone for her, will you? It's not wrong. Doesn't matter. Just tell her. Oh, right. So, Denise, somebody on the phone for you, love. Thanks. Excuse me, Reg. May we, Denise? I'm sorry, love. There's nobody on the phone, but it was no, bad, I she know. said. No, I I just needed an excuse to get away. Has he been trying his on, has he? He wants me to go out with him on Friday. Yeah. I've had to say I'm going out with somebody else. Goodness knows who. Well, I'm always here, you know. <gasps> Do you mean that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that'd be lovely. But, but, we've got to make sure word doesn't get about, you know. It'll be our little secret. <laughs> See you Friday, then. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Reg. Got to go. Oh. But Friday. Oh, yes. Friday. We'll have all the time in the world. Oh, yes, we will. All the time in the universe. Well, whichever's more, we'll have it. Uh, Bye. 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 <laughs> all right, Reslad. Not bad, Jack. Not bad. Oh. <laughs> you feel sorry for them, don't you? No, love, no. You feel a sense of deep satisfaction. I nicked myself shaving. Oh. I think it's all right now. Oh, that'll be the taxi. Uh, tell them we'll be out in a minute. Okay. I'd like a word with your husband. A word? What word? You were around at Maggie's last night. None of your business. Yeah, well, I think it is. I think because I'm seeing her that you've taken a sudden interest. <laughs> Don't flatter yourself. Well, anyway, she doesn't want you there. Doesn't want you anywhere near that house or anywhere near her son. Her son? Yeah, yours as well, I know. Oh, you know about that? Yeah, I thought you did. Didn't mind me taking an interest. The question is, why are you? I didn't know about Mark when I met Maggie. Ha! All right, you believe what you want. I will. The point is, 
I'm very fond of Maggie and I don't want you pestering her. I'll do what I like. Oh, no. No, you won't. How are you going to stop me? How are you going to stop me seeing my son? I'm going to stop you making that woman's life a misery. Oh, yeah, and how are you going to do that, then, eh? Oh, look, please, please, both of you. Well, he's the one coming round here making threats. I am, yeah. No, will you go, please? Can you say what you wanted to say? Will you just please go? Yeah, go on, while you can. Just stay away. I'll do what I like. But you stay away. You stay away from my son. Now, you heard him. Coming round here, telling me that I can't see my own son. Of which you will take no notice. No, I won't, no. You're going round again. And then what? <laughs> then what? It's like I said, you are obsessed, aren't you? <laughs>